I drove more than 3,000 miles to buy 900 pounds of untested Xbox 360, Wii, and PS3 consoles from Goodwill. And in this video, we're gonna go through every single console that I've tested, explored, and fixed over the last three months. Guys, welcome to the full compilation of the Texas Load. I'm driving from North Carolina to Texas to pick up a 900 pound lot of untested video game consoles from Goodwill. And on the way, I'm stopping at as many retro video game stores as possible. And our challenge for today is to pick up the coolest PlayStation collection possible in the few stops we have. Guys, welcome to episode one of the Texas Load. We're here in Huntersville, North Carolina, about to go in Video Game World, see if they got anything cool here, so let's go. All right guys, so we picked up this uh, complete in box LCD screen for the PS1, 200 bucks, looked it up on eBay, and it's actually a pretty solid price. Um, so our goal for the rest of the day is to try to find a PS1 console, hopefully in box, and maybe some, some good games, and we'll see what we find. All right, so we're at this Goodwill in Charlotte that supposedly sells video games. I uh, don't know if they're tested, untested, or what, but we're about to find out, so let's go. So I picked some stuff up from Goodwill, this uh, the grid powered by Goodwill, a very odd place. It seems that everything there is for the most part tested and working and it has like a, a 30 day warranty. We even have this little receipt here that says, you know, you got seven day warranties on computers, seven days, seven day, 14, 14. Uh, computer systems and TVs are, are 30 days. Uh, I bought, I picked up one of these Wi-Fi adapters for the 360 because it was 10 bucks is a, a nice price for it. They go for 25 on eBay. Also picked up Tarzan for the PS1. This is one of the, you know, it just looked interesting and it has, it appears to have no cracks and just some scratching and stuff. So we got a PS1 game now, which is good. So we have our, our PS1 LCD screen, PS1 game. Uh, next up, I need to pick up an actual system and uh, some accessories. All right, guys, we're here at Upstate A&M Games, I think it's called, uh, somewhere in South Carolina. Honestly, I have no idea where I'm at, but let's go in and check it out. Picked up a few more things for the PS1 collection here. Got Twisted Metal, the long box, and got 100 bucks for a trade-in. I traded in a complete box Assassin's Creed Special Edition Xbox One. I uh, also got a loose PS1, um, and of course all the accessories to go with it for the PS1 LCD screen. So we're ready to go now. Let's go ahead and check out the next game store and see what we find. So the fourth store we went to today was called One Up Video Games in Greenville, South Carolina, and it wasn't bad, but the video game selection was really small and like nothing really to write home about. It seemed like they focused more on board games and that sort of thing, so all I picked up was this $5 PlayStation demo disc, and yeah, that was it. All right guys, so we hit four game stores today. I was actually planning on seven, so we only hit about half the game stores. You now we got a late start, and we were sitting at the, the game stores for a little bit too long, and uh, we were sitting at Dave's Taught Chicken for too long. I only had two workers, and I was you know, eating my chicken tenders for about half an hour. Yeah, but the game stores we hit were pretty cool. Uh, the last one was kind of mid, and the Goodwill was like weird, but uh, the other two were awesome, like saw tons of stuff. And uh, yeah, overall, a pretty good day. One step closer to this, this stupid Texas lot that I paid way too much money for. Probably gonna have a bunch of Red Ring 360s, but let's, let's keep it moving, guys. All right, guys, so we made it through uh, day one of our trip to Texas, and we picked up some cool stuff, kind of created our own little uh, PS1 collection here. Uh, let me just show you what we got. All right, so in this bag, I got a few things, but the main thing I have in this bag, we picked up the PS1 LCD screen, which the first one I saw this, I just like, I really wanted to pick it up. 200 bucks, which I looked at eBay, and that's, you know, pretty normal price. You can even see <laughs> here in the front of the box, it went for 130 originally, I guess, back in the... Uh, what would that have been late late 90s right and yeah pretty cool i mean the box is in nice condition as you can see uh, you had a few dings here and there but um nothing too crazy for a you know accessory from the early 2000s late 90s whenever it came out and then if you open it up it's got most of the stuff in here it's not it doesn't have the, like the original bag and stuff for the uh, ps1 lcd screen but i mean like we got the the manual here lcd screen for ps1 manual 
um, all sealed up in here. You can even see the seal there, so that's pretty sweet. Um, Manos are bent a little bit, doesn't, who cares, doesn't really matter. And down here, if you look inside of this box, we got, you know, all the cardboard inserts and whatever. Okay, so we just got the LCD screen. Looking at the back of this thing, it originally came with the LCD screen, the printed materials, and an AC adapter. We don't have an AC adapter in here, which I just realized, and that should be okay, because I think we can just use the AC adapter that came with the PS1, right? I would, I would think so. This thing's pretty sweet. You've never seen this. This is an OEM product for the PS1. As you can see, like the slim version PS1 literally spilled out. And this thing's awesome. Like, it's just cool, and it fits the aesthetic of the PS1. So very cool to see. That's the first first thing we picked up. Second thing we picked up was from the Goodwill, the Grid Goodwill. We got a, <laughs> a Tarzan game for the PS1. I just, this caught my eye. Cool, cool little Disney game. And uh, Goodwill sealed it. Yeah, they did. That's the funny part about all these games at Goodwill. They seal them with these the, the labels, which is cool, I guess, for them, but kind of crappy for me because now I got to peel it off. Actually, never mind. It peels off pretty easily. And man, that place is weird. Like they, uh, the employee was eyeing us down, like <laughs> pretty sketchy and stuff. But um, yeah, Tarzan right here, you can see. And I uh, got our manual, and yeah, this looks good on the front. Hey, even on the back. Like, look at that. Yeah, hopefully, you guys can see that. But like, there's. Uh, very minimal scratching, which is good to see. All right, so the third place we went to was pretty cool. Like this, this shop was awesome. It had tons of stuff, tons of rare stuff, expensive stuff, don't know how, but they did. And it was in the middle of nowhere in South Carolina. Like it was, it was weird, I don't know why. But um, one thing I noticed there is they actually had the exact same PS1 LCD screen in box, which is funny because I haven't seen very many of these things in my lifetime, but all of a sudden I see two in one day complete in box. But you can see I paid 50 bucks for the PS1, the, you know, the controller and AV cords, power adapter, all that good stuff, which I'll show in a minute, which is a pretty good price and uh, looks good. I mean, you got some yellowing here on the bottom of the feet, but that's pretty normal for one of these PS1s. You got some blue marker or something. I don't know, but everything else looks very solid. And it looks like they at least wiped it down and cleaned it here. These are not these are not refurbished consoles, so I don't expect them to be opened up and cleaned. And um, but of course we expect them to be like at least wiped down on the outside and kind of blown out and cleaned. But just looking at the inside of this thing, it looks it looks pretty clean in there. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot going on there other than your your uh, your laser. But I think that looks pretty good. And the other thing I picked up from this place was Twisted Metal, the long box, the long boy. And this thing's in pretty nice condition. I mean, look at that thing. It's pretty sweet. It's like half plastic half cardboard pretty sweet here in the back of course you got your twisted metal art and then of course you got your manual in here very cool oh back behind there you got some other accessories they advertise mouse with pad memory card controller link cable or if you adapter cool stuff and the manual is in very nice condition we even have the uh this little <laughs> thing you can mail into them i guess what is that yeah you mail that to them this is in real nice condition i don't see any like resurfacing marks or anything so that looks like it was just that nice from whoever originally owned it. Uh, I paid 65 bucks for this. I honestly have no idea if that's a good price or not. I did not look it up on eBay. Fourth place, actually, hold on. Let's take a look at the controller and stuff they gave me. All right, so AV cable, power adapter, normal stuff, right? We also have our controller. This is like the original one that came with the PS1 Slim, as I'm gonna call it. Now this thing looks pretty clean. There is some dirt in the cracks here and there, but overall, it looks in pretty nice condition. Now let's go ahead and, uh, oh, fourth. I went to one more shop and found this PS1 demo disc. I uh, figured I'd pick it up for five bucks. It's got, what does it have on it? Uh, 989 Sports NFL Game Day 2002, Disney Atlantis, Monsters, oh, Monsters Inc. Sweet. We got Harry Potter, Sorcerer's Stone, Barbie Explorer. Nice. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and boot this thing up and hopefully it works. Now, of course, we have to, first, I don't even need a TV. I just plug in this LCD screen, which is awesome. And uh, if you want to take a look here, all you got to do is take this piece and it should just slide in here like so. Oh, that clicks in nice. This is actually the first time I've ever assembled one of these things and it fits in there very nice and snug. All right, so I got that thing in there, tightened down the little uh, screws there. Should just need to plug in our power in here and make sure that works. Now let me see if I can find a spot in this hotel room. Again, yeah, if you haven't noticed, we are in a hotel room on our way to Texas, <laughs> trying to pick up this giant Goodwill lot that's very suspicious. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, gosh. All right, guys, so we're almost ready. Got to plug this in and hopefully it works. I think we're good to go. All right, three, two, one. Does it work? All right, the PS1 is turning on. Yes, let's go. Is that just me or does that look, look like crap? Maybe, can I change the contrast here? What is I that? feel like that's just the way it is. Maybe that's just how it is, yeah. This is like 2000 era <laughs> LCD technology. <laughs> I'm just used to my 4K OLED. I guess this is how it goes, but that's actually, that's like not bad. That's pretty solid. It warmed now, up. <laughs> yeah. And I turned the brightness all the way up. Now let's try to put Tarzan and see if, see if that works. Oh, oh, oh no. no. Is that uh, okay? Maybe I'm not. Am I not screwed in all the way or something? Like, oh wait, maybe that was. Maybe that Ooh. was it. 
Okay, maybe, guys, maybe I just wasn't plugged in all the way. Let me try to screw this down some more. <laughs> all right, guys, so hopefully we fixed it. I apparently was not screwed in all the way, which may have been the problem. Let's try to boot it up now and see if we get the reds and all the colors here. I really hope so. Please. Oh, there we go. That looks so much better. That's what I was expecting. Nice. Okay, okay. All right, now we're going to boot up some Tarzan here. Oh, yeah, baby. That looks good. That is a solid screen there. You can adjust your... Your brightness here, I'm assuming this is the contrast here. Oh wait, this is, this is the volume, what am I talking about? Yeah, I'm just stupid, this is volume. Yonicom Developments Limited Entertainment Software Game. Electronic fun, but <laughs> This thing is actually even more cool than I thought it would be. Got this little, t what is, like how big is this? Let's just like three and a half inches maybe? So apparently it's a five inch screen, I just didn't bother to look at the front. Hey yeah, guys, so you can see that uh, clearly Tarzan is working. I mean, <laughs> this Goodwill must be where they're sending all the good stuff. <laughs> they send all the crap to me when I buy it on, on Shop Goodwill. <laughs> the funny thing is this place like had lower prices than Shop Goodwill, to be honest. Um, yeah, my controller works. All right, so let's go ahead and reset this game. I'm gonna trigger some people with this right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The manual stop. Now let's try out Twisted Metal. Make sure this game works, this is my my big boy, 65 bucks here, so hopefully this does work. So here we are, guys, on Twisted Metal. One player contest, two player duel. Yep, yep, looks just like I remember it. Hold up, triangle is how you <laughs> look at this, guys. I gotta use triangle to accelerate. All right, that's enough of that game. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it with the $65 game. I'm gonna leave it alone. But, uh, <laughs> no. All right, next, okay, yeah, that's long enough doing it. <laughs> next up, last but not least, we got our demo disc. We're just gonna make sure this works. And I didn't even chart, check it out earlier. Oh, that one's a little bit beat up, but it, that should be okay. Now, the one thing I unfortunately forgot, as you can see, I don't have a memory card. I was gonna pick up, pick one up at the last place we went to, but unfortunately, all they had were old school memory cards, which you guys know how I feel about old school, so I could not pick those up. We're just running without a memory card right now. Movie tra- <laughs> Do they have the movie trailer of Atlantis on this game? That's an awesome, that's an instant pickup, worth the five bucks right there. Don't play it, we're gonna get copyright struck. <laughs> Honestly, probably so, but guys, I, I guess this is it. The game works, all the games work, all the, the, the console works, the LCD screen works. This thing is honestly a pretty sweet pickup. Now, of course, tomorrow we're gonna have another challenge. Not sure what it's gonna be yet, but you'll find out tomorrow. So make sure to tune in tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Eastern for the next video of this series. And then of course, on Friday, we got the big boy, the 900 pound console lot from Goodwill. So make sure to stick around, check these out every day, share them with your friends, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm driving from North Carolina to Texas to pick up a 900 pound lot of untested video game consoles from Goodwill and on the way I'm stopping at as many retro video game stores as possible and today I'm going to see if I can build the coolest little 3DS collection possible in the few stops we have. So guys, welcome to episode 2 of the Texas Load. We're here at Game Exchange in Mobile, Alabama. Let's go check out what they got. All right guys, so I picked up Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for the 3DS, 15 bucks loose. I think that's a decent price. None of the prices in there were like crazy high or crazy low, we're just about average. And I uh, saw a ton of stuff in there. It took a while to figure out what I wanted. I ended up going to the 3DS, so we're gonna try to collect some 3DS stuff today, get some cool consoles, uh, cool accessories, that sort of thing. And there wasn't a whole lot of stuff in there. There was a Pikachu uh, 3DS for 420, but I decided I wanted to hold it out and see if I could find a complete unbox system somewhere. So we'll start out with a 3DS game and then we'll go from there. Second store of the day is a game exchange in Mississippi. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right guys, so we just stopped in a uh, game exchange in Mississippi, found some interesting stuff. Weird store, like the, uh, let me just show you what I got first and we'll talk about the store. But I got a, uh, a Captain Falcon Amiibo, sealed. Uh, 20 bucks, decent price. It probably went for like 15 when it was brand new. Um, got a 3DS docking station as well. Haven't got a 3DS console yet, but we at least got a docking station. Of course, this will only work on a uh, original 3DS, so uh, I don't know. It was two bucks, kind of cool. And then the real interesting find was the uh, 3DS NFC Amiibo Reader, 35 bucks. Uh, I looked it up and it looked seemed about the about the right price. So the game exchange we just went into is really weird. You can see the outline of the old GameStop behind the game exchange sign. Like, so it used to be a GameStop. It looks like a GameStop inside. It smells like a GameStop. It's the size of a GameStop. The employees are like GameStop employees, AKA they just don't care and they're just, it, it was like, just not a great experience. The, the selection there was pretty poor. Um, overall, don't recommend that store. All right, so we're here at the Game Exchange in Baton Rouge. Uh, don't have much hope, but we're gonna check it out real quick anyway. All 
All right, guys, so we just stopped at the Baton Rouge uh, Game Exchange, got New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS. Kinda, honestly, I picked it up because it has this Game Exchange case here, and then the side here says New Super Ma. Uh, they just didn't write the rest of it, so I thought that was kind of funny. All right, one more thing I just figured out. Uh, the outside of the case is 18 bucks, which is what I paid, and the game cartridge they got from the back says 13 bucks. so I guess they... Actually, you can see the date on it. This is from March 1st. This old day is from October, so they went up five bucks in the last year. And uh, it was a really cool store. It was actually about twice the size of the other ones I've been to. The employees were nice. Uh, definitely recommend the Bad Rouge Game Exchange. So um, yeah, let's go to the next one. Our fourth store of the day is Gameware in Bad Rouge, Louisiana. Let's go check it out. So unfortunately, our original camera footage here got messed up, so I'm doing another segment now. And uh, yeah, so we picked up this $500 complete in box, uh, 3DS XL, very cool find. We'll, we'll show that in depth later. Now, uh, just talking about the store, it was a very cool store, store, had a nice selection, had some really cool employees. I met the owner and like four other employees, and we just talked to them for like an hour about game store stuff and, and you know, just other gaming topics. And uh, very cool place, I uh, really enjoyed my time there. And we even met the technician there who works on the consoles in the back and uh, does some other stuff. And, and he actually watches the channel and uh, was talking about the, you know, the whole DK Audio situation. And then he even did a delit of a PS3 he has for, for sale in the store. And these guys actually have an online store, so go ahead and check out the link down below. I'll leave it in the description uh, if you want to support a cool local game shop. All right, we're here to play and trade in Louisiana. I can't name the city because I don't know how to pronounce it, so well, let's check it out see what's inside. I got nine gallons of black paint, I had nine gallons of blue paint, and then I told everyone to bring their own weapon. We had about 40 people show up. So we have a full video of that, That's like awesome. it's so freaking cool. We just did a couple play and trades in Louisiana. Method owner Jeff, pretty cool guy. Uh, I picked up Madagascar 2 for the DS, just a random game. I had Madagascar back in the, the PS2 days, so I just picked this one up from one of the stores, and uh, yeah, cool find. I just wanted to take a second here to talk about how wild Louisiana was as a state. I um, mean, you can see in the dash cam footage here, we had this guy that was like, it was like he was trying to run me over. He was in my lane coming straight towards me, and I almost had to swerve over and hit another car. That was a little weird. Um, the other parts we didn't have dash cam footage for, but I swear we saw some police cars getting stolen. Like, we saw two, like, it looks like teenagers, probably 20 years old or less driving off with, with police cars that had no license plate uh, also in Louisiana that was a little suspicious and then we just saw some other stuff I can't even talk about but it was just a, a wild place all right guys so we're in our second hotel picked up some cool 3ds stuff today let's go ahead and go through it all uh, with the console games accessories and just take a look at everything test it out uh, see how it runs, that sort of thing. So we'll start with our first pickups of the day. So we started out a few game exchanges. We hit three game exchanges to start the day, which were all like, yeah, they were kind of mid, but we got some stuff there. So let's check that stuff out. All right, let's so take it all out of the first bag. I believe our first pickup of the day was Luigi's Mansion. So we wandered around this game exchange for quite a while, uh, trying to figure out what to buy. But we got Luigi's Dark Mansion here. But our next stop, we found some, some cool stuff as well, but uh, we picked up a few things from there. Let's see, we got, First of all, this 3DS docking station that's not even going to be useful today because I didn't buy a regular 3DS, but it was two bucks, so no big deal. Um, and ultimately, it's pretty basic. You just stick your 3DS in it, you plug in the charger in the back, and it charges up, so kind of cool. But next up, we got this uh, 3DS NFC Amiibo Reader, which I honestly forgot even existed, but it's pretty sweet. I mean, it's exactly how, you, how it sounds. It's an Amiibo Reader for your 3DS, and it's wireless, actually, which is nice. It doesn't plug into anything. You just got to have some batteries here. Uh, we'll test that out in a minute and see if it works. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't, but I mean, the contacts look good. I don't see like any um, any corrosion on the contacts, so that's good to see. And then of course, we also picked up an Amiibo for it. We got Captain Falcon. Our next GameStop was another game exchange, and this game exchange was actually really solid, pretty large. They had like 50 Wiis, a few Wii Mini. It was really weird. They had a ton of just random consoles, or Wii and 360 consoles. And then I picked up New Super Mario Bros. 2, because why not? And then next up, we got our fourth store, which is Gameware in uh, Baton Rouge, and that was an awesome store. We got very cool 3ds console which we'll take a look at here in a second also got our charger which was nice i mean this this console actually did not come with a charger originally but they bundled one in one in which was cool uh, this console was 500 dollars, so very steep uh, kind of funny because these things were brand new a few years ago for like 
200 I think, re retail, which is crazy how expensive these are going. This is just not even a brand new console, it's just open box, um, or uh, not even open box, it's used. All right, so we got the black 3DS XL. I'm not even gonna pretend to try to pronounce these names. I'm not familiar with Pokemon at all, uh, but I do think the design is really cool, the whole black and the, the white like outlines here. Uh, it is a new 3DS XL. Flipping over to the back, pretty standard, but overall this like the box condition, I'd say is a nine out of 10. Like the outer, outer box is in very nice condition, which is cool to see. Of course, let's go ahead and dump this out. And we even have everything inside. Like we got the cardboard, you know, cardboard insert there. We've got our AR cards and our manual, which are still in the packaging. I don't even know if they've ever been taken out. Like the AR cards look brand new there, which is pretty cool to see. And then of course, last but not least, we've got our console here still in the little plastic wrap, whatever you want to call this, foam wrap, and oh yeah, there it is. And you can see, I'd call the condition of this console probably a seven or eight out of 10. Like it does have really the main scratches right there, uh, kind of a big ding, you got one over here. Other than that, it's a bunch of like little micro mini scratches all over it, which is actually, it's really not bad. I've seen a lot of 3DS Excels that were in really bad condition. Uh, the back again, same kind of deal. We got some micro scratches, but it's really not too bad. I call it like a seven or eight out of 10, like I said. And then actually on the inside, I'd call it a nine out of 10. Like the screens look really good. There's a few maybe like minor scratches here in the bottom. I don't see any scratches in the top, but, and then all the buttons and the, you know, the joystick here and everything looks good. But let's go ahead and turn this console on and hopefully it, uh, hopefully it works. Oh, and of course we need to charge. All right, so while this console is charging, we're actually gonna take a look at one more thing I bought, which was Madagascar Card 2 for the Nintendo DS. I got this from the last play and trade I went to. Cool, cool store. I got uh, Jeff was the owner there. We talked to him for a while and I picked up Madagascar 2 because I wanted to pick something up. Um, and it's a DS game, it works on the 3DS. All right, one more thing before I boot it up. I forgot I can open this uh, Captain Falcon Amiibo up as well, so let's go ahead and do that. It always feels a little weird opening brand new packages, even if it's not a rare thing, but it's, just, it's like satisfying and weird at the same time, you know what I mean? But let's go ahead and take this out and see what it looks like. All right, so here it is, and very cool. My only problem with things like this is that it has like the one support here and the leg sticking out, so like this is very easy to get damaged. Uh, let's go ahead and boot this 3DS back up and see if it works. All right, so back to the 3DS, and we do notice that we do have Fantasy Lab already downloaded, so it looked like this wasn't reset or anything. Let me go ahead and check out uh, kind of our settings. All right, so we're gonna go down to the activity log since it's not reset, we can see how much play time this has from the last user. At least we should be able to. All right, yeah, so it looks like it was played Paper Mario and System Settings. Honestly, this is probably what they used to test it uh, because it's either either that or the guy that had this played one game for one minute, which makes no sense. Um, but my guess is that this is the, the profile they created, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and test out these games here. We got Luigi's Mansion, of course, first, and a little bit annoying. It's still got a sticker on it, but it, uh, yeah, it fits in there. It'll work fine. And there it is, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Let's go ahead and boot it up, make sure it works. All right, cool. So Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is working. We'll go ahead and go back to the main menu. I'm not gonna do it. We're not gonna go too in depth here. We're just gonna make sure they boot up. And of course, we'll test out Madagascar 2 and New Super Mario Bros. 2 as well. Make sure those work. Wait, hold on. Oh, so I'm booting it up and it says, extra data used by Spot Pass has not been created on the SD card and extra data will be created now. So does that mean, is that telling me there is an SD card in here? Got a free SD card? Yeah, that's kind of nice. Not that it costs that much to get a four gigabyte SD card, but it's a nice little add on there. We'll go ahead and close this game because it is working. We'll click it here, go with Madagascar 2 as well. Just make sure this one shows up on the home page. And there it is. <laughs> I love the icon there. Madagascar 2 with the, what was the zebra's name? I forgot, but um, very cool to see. All right, so we're in the camera now. Clearly the camera works. I wanna check the photos there and see if there's anything saved in the SD card, nope. All right, one other thing we need to test is obviously this, this Amoeba reader right here. So it's got a power button right there. Press power on, we've got a blue light. Had to use the hotel batteries from the remote because we forgot AA batteries. But uh, I'm not sure how this thing works now, but we're gonna, just gonna sit it there, put the Amoeba on it and see what it does. I don't know if it just automatically recognizes it or if I have to download an app or something, but it's not doing anything yet. All right, guys, so we have a few potential problems. First of all, I think we might need a game to do anything, but the main issue is that the new, we figured out the new 3DS XL actually already has support for Amiibos without this stupid thing, so nice. I, to be fair, I bought this before I bought the new 3DS XL, but we found this little Amiibo settings here. All right, yeah, so to register this, apparently all you do is hold it in the touch screen right here, but I'm gonna actually see if it lets us use the external one, like just cause. So we get the external one back there, and let's see if it does anything. I'm assuming probably not. Yeah, I don't, it's not doing anything. But if we move Captain Falcon here to the front, touch screen, <laughs> there it goes. But anyways, this $35 Amiibo reader was a waste because I don't need it with a new 3DS XL. But anyway, it's good to have in case I have another 3DS that needs one. Um, and it's a cool little accessory. I don't know, it looks, it looks kind of cool. It's like a hockey puck. But yeah, guys, overall, console is in 
pretty nice condition. Like I said, outside is like a seven or eight out of 10. Inside it says a nine out of 10. $500 is probably a little bit steep for a complete in-box console, but again, it's in, the box is in great condition. Excited to see it. Let me know down below what you guys think about this collection, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm driving from North Carolina to Texas to pick up a 900 pound lot of untested video game consoles from Goodwill and on the way I'm stopping in as many retro video game stores as possible and our challenge today is going to be a little bit of a mystery as you'll see here in just a second but guys welcome to episode 3 of the Texas Load. Alright guys, so we're going to do things a little bit different today. We're going to spin a wheel to decide what we game hunt for. So we've got six options. We've got Nintendo Switch, PS2, GameCube, 360, PS3 and Wii. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel and uh, see what happens. And we got, the, we got the classic, Nintendo Wii. This is, should honestly be pretty easy to game hunt for. And it even helps that I'm throwing in another wrinkle here. We're gonna only do trade-ins today and use that money to fund our game hunt. So I got a bunch of trade-ins in the back of my truck. Uh, we're gonna use all that stuff and hopefully we have enough money to get a decent collection. All right, guys, we're here at Game Bros in Houston, Texas. We're gonna go inside, see if we can find some Wii stuff and get the day started. Found our first Wii Grail, guys. We got Mario Kart Wii created. All right, the other trick here is that we could, could get GameCube games for the Wii, because technically Wii plays GameCube games, so it might get a little bit tricky here. Alright, so my predicament here is I want to get this sealed GameCube controller, but that's going to really eat, it, eat into my budget because I only have so much stuff to trade in, uh, but I really think I want to get it. Alright guys, I'm going to try to trade in Star Ocean, the second story, for the PS1, Shining Force 2, which is complete in box, and a 3DS XL. Hopefully that'll get me to the 200 mark, pretty close to it. Uh, let's go see what they say. 207 in store credit, or 152 cash. Okay, so I could use that store credit and get the, that sealed GameCube controller, I think it was 199. Alright, thank you very much. Have a good one. All right, guys, I just picked up the sealed GameCube controller from Game Bros in Houston. Uh, pretty cool find. We'll go over it later. But um, my experience there was good for the first 30 minutes. The last 30 minutes was a little iffy. I did a trade-in for a few items, and uh, I got about the value I would expect. You know, you get about 50% of the, the total market value for your items. But it took half an hour to do the trade-in for three items. Maybe that's normal with trade-ins. I don't do trade-ins very often, but um, let's go on to the next store. Alright guys, we're here at Game Over Video Games, one of the locations here in Houston. We're gonna go check it out, see if we can get some Wii stuff real quick, because we're on a we're on a time crunch right here and we're we're nixing the whole trade-in thing, taking too long. So let's let's go inside and see what we find. We have a Wii. <laughs> no video. That sounds awful. So now I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna buy the Wii Wheel, this complete in box, or if I'm gonna buy this uh, this Tony Hawk Ride. I really wanted to pick up the Tony Hawk Ride, but just looking closer at it, it looks like the little receiver is just like mutilated, like the cable is all wrapped in electrical tape. So I'm, I'm a bit worried I'm gonna get it home and it's not gonna work at all. Uh, but it would've been fun to play in a hotel, but we'll probably go with the Wii Wheel here. So I picked up this Wii Wheel for 30 bucks, completed a box, pretty cool find, but I'm kind of setting myself up for failure because now I gotta find a copy of Mario Kart and I gotta still find a Wii console. Yeah, so it's gonna be a, a tough going for the next two shops. So our third stop of the day is Replay Games in Houston. We had to drive through like an hour of traffic just to get here, uh, but we are here now, it's very hot outside. Let's go ahead and head inside, uh, see if we can find some cool Wii stuff. Alright guys, trying to decide if I should get Mario Kart Wii here. It looks complete, except it's in a black case. Maybe we can get it in a white case, I don't know. I get about, I'd say, between 500 to 1,000 items every week. Like, wow. It's a lot. Jeez. And the majority of it is good stuff. You know? Yeah. I have this demo disc for the Mario yeah. and Zelda CDI games. <laughs> but these discs, they were cool. all directly from the Philips rep from the Wiz in New York City. Uh, curious if you're able to, are you able to swap this out for like a, a white one? Alright guys, we picked up 
an inbox Wii console. I uh, got everything in it. We also picked up a Mario Kart Wii. You can't see it through the bag, but uh, very nice condition as well. Very cool store, cool owner. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the next store now. So our fourth stop of the day is Rare and Classic Video Games on Jones Road in Houston. Uh, let's go ahead and go inside, see if we can find some cool Wii stuff and, and finish out our collection here. The original copies of No Mercy, uh, there was a bug that like messed up your save data. You could call the like Nintendo support people, you'd send it to them and they'd send you back this copy. All right, guys, just picked up Wii Sports from Rare and Classic Video Games. Uh, kind of tragic considering all the cool stuff they had in here, and I picked up Wii Sports. But we had to get, you can't have a Wii without Wii Sports. You know, it's the, it's the classic packing game. So we picked this up, and uh, yeah, shout out to AC for his store. All right, guys, so it's the morning after we picked up all this cool Wii stuff from the stores in Houston, and we're running low on time here, about to get kicked out of the hotel. So uh, we got to go through this pretty quick, but let's go ahead and start with what we got at the first place. All right, guys, so our first stop, we picked up a sealed GameCube controller, and this thing is pretty sweet. You can see it's in really nice condition. It is the, the purple GameCube color, which in my, my eyes is the like most iconic GameCube color, which makes sense because the you know, logo is purple. But the front looks pretty nice. Paid 200 bucks for it. Uh, it does have this one little ding right here. A uh, little, you know, crack, split, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's the, really the only mess up there. It's got some scratching on the back and maybe faded a little bit on the back. It's hard to tell, but overall, this thing's in really nice condition. And just looking at comparisons on eBay, this is a, a nice price. And if you remember correctly, I, I traded in uh, three things to get this and uh, got this. All, all I had to do was pay a few extra bucks for tax, uh, but I got it all covered. Now, I didn't do trade-ins for the rest of the stuff because it took so long to do a trade-in. I just frankly did not have time to do more trade-ins. Um, we didn't even get to visit all the shops as is, but next thing I picked up was this uh, inbox Wii Remote from a Game Over Video Games. Didn't have a whole lot, lot of cool stuff, but this was a little bit cool. You know, it fits with the Wii, and uh, it kind of brings me back to actually, you might be wondering why I picked up a GameCube controller, and that's because the Wii can play GameCube games. So I <laughs> ended up not actually picking up a GameCube game or anything else, but I did think this was a cool addition, and it was kind of like a little loophole, but here we got the Wii wheel and yeah that thing's in nice condition I don't know if this has ever been used usually these things are pretty grimy if they've been used um, we got that we've actually got the little bag that I guess it goes in and of course we have the the manual I don't know who needs a manual for the Wii wheel but you got it in case you need it and it came with an extra hair inside that's nice and then we'll go ahead and skip to the uh, the fourth fourth stop here we picked up Wii Sports a classic for the Wii you can't really have a Wii without Wii Sports I picked this up for 25 bucks I think that's a little a little high but not really um, the disc on the bag is a little bit scratched up, but not too bad. I've seen some really bad Wii Sports uh, scratching, but we got the manual and everything, so that's cool. And then, last but not least, our third stop of the day had tons of cool stuff. All the shop owners today were really cool. Um, got to meet them and stuff. But the third shop we went to, we picked up Mario Kart Wii, and uh, this one's in very clean condition. Um, and then, of course, we got our manual and disc. He even resurfaced it there on the spot and that thing looks immaculate. And then last but not least here, I picked up this Wii, Inbox, Wii Complete Inbox console. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here you can see, and actually I wonder, <laughs> I don't think this came with Wii Sports when he opened it up and showed it to me. I don't think it had Wii Sports, but that'd be funny if we have two copies of Wii Sports. Uh, we'll check it in a second, but uh, the box actually looks pretty nice. It's got some dings here and there, but for a Wii box, like. That's, that's some pretty nice condition. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Yeah, so unfortunately our audio file got destroyed, so you get to listen to me do a voice over here, which is, uh, trust me, better than the camera audio. But anyways, we're just doing an unboxing here, pretty basic, and you can see the Wii here coming out, and the Wii was in pretty solid condition. I mean, it had scratches, but uh, basically every Wii ever has scratches on it, just from looking at it, kind of like a PS3. Um, now the doors on the top are pretty finicky. Uh, again, you know, just a classic Wii experience, like that one just snapped right off. It does snap back into place if I do it correctly, but I didn't here because it's just it's just a Wii flap. It really doesn't matter that much. But yeah, overall the Wii looked you know pretty solid, much better than a lot of consoles I've seen. And then of course it does have the stand here, um, and then I think later we find the little circular piece that, that goes in the bottom of that. And then uh, you know of course the unpacking the Wii and putting it back together is so annoying in the box, man. Um, but yeah, we got the sensor bar here, nice and wrapped up. And then of course yeah we got this. I don't know if this actually came with the original Wii box, but it's like a little sensor bar holder. And then of course the Wii Remote, which uh, I think we open it up here and take a look at the, the you know the inside. We don't have any corrosion, which is which was good to see. Corrosion on the Wii context is like honestly the yeah you can see right there no corrosion, uh, which is obviously good because corrosion on the Wii context is like the you know the bane of my existence. And of course we have all the all the manuals and stuff. 
Uh, there's a little circular piece. Still got the AV cords in there, the power cord. Uh, basically everything you need for a complete unbox Wii. Um, let's go ahead and plug this console in, see if it works, and uh, play some Mario Kart Wii. Alright guys, so we're in a new hotel filming the rest of this segment, um, as you may have noticed, and got the console plugged in and everything, ready to go. I'm um, taking advantage of the batteries from the remote in the TV to uh, use the Wii remote. You can see it is booting up here. Now let's go ahead and see if this thing turns on. Uh, we'll get some, yeah, we got power there, and of course we got to test out Wii Sports and Mario Kart here. And hey, there we are, we got it on the screen. Let's go ahead and, oh, well, we're gonna have to sync up our Wii remote first. And there we are, we are on the main channel, and we got all our classics here. We got the photo channel, the me channel, the forecast channel, the news channel. I miss the days of, of playing on these channels. I used to, when I was like 12 years old, I don't know, 10 years old maybe, I'd hop on the forecast and news channel just for absolutely no reason. But let's go ahead and put in Wii Sports here, make sure that works. And of course I did buy the Wii wheel for Mario Kart Wii, but I left it in my car, so we're not gonna test that out. It's not really anything to test, it's just a, literally a wheel. Uh, it just kind of makes the experience a little more authentic to put your controller in the wheel and, and spin. But first of all, of course, we're gonna make sure Wii Sports works. Hold on. Oh. Oh no. This thing was making like a clunking noise. All right, let's try Mario Kart Wii. Mario Kart Wii, I, I watched him resurface and I'd be surprised. It's either, if, if this game doesn't work, then it's a Wii issue. Uh, all right, I gotta turn the Wii off first. <laughs> Actually, it sounds better now. Oh no, what? it was just Wii Sports. Ooh. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the, this disc right here. It doesn't look, oh, actually that looks pretty bad. I mean, let me try to clean this off and we'll see what it does. I didn't resurface it or anything, but I just like wiped it off. We're gonna try it one more time, see if it works. Uh, if it doesn't, then it probably needs to be resurfaced. Sounds okay now. There it goes, I just needed a quick wipe off. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's good to see. That was, that, that was a little scary for a second. The weirdest part about that is the disk drive was like clunking. At, at least that's how it sounded when that disk was in there, but I guess it wasn't disk drive issue. And you can see we're playing Wii Sports, uh, no issue there. Let's go ahead and boot this back down and or boot this back to the main menu and then we'll try out Mario Kart Wii as you just saw. We got Mario Kart Wii pull, pulled up and we do still have some data here from Ricky. Maybe that's just a test because this guy has done absolutely nothing. So maybe that was just a test the game. I, I don't know. All right, guys, we're back. We wanted to check out the data here because I saw that data from the Mario Kart Wii and we wanted to see if there's anything else on here. And clearly there is, there's a few games. So, you know, more than a few. Internet Channel, Mario Kart Wii, Guitar Hero, um, Wii Sports Resort, FIFA 10, just a bunch of random stuff. Uh, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't factor reset. Uh, probably should be, but it's not a big deal because the Wii itself doesn't have any like personal data on here. You can't like log in with an account or anything like that, but uh, just interesting to see. But thanks for watching guys and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm driving 1400 miles to pick up a 900 pound pallet of untested video game consoles from Goodwill and on the way I'm stopping as many retro video game stores as possible, but today is a little bit different. Guys, welcome to episode 4 of the Texas Load. So today started out a little sad, you know, instead of just hitting the normal retro game stores, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So we visited three GameStops and what do you know, uh, the first two had basically nothing interesting and the third one was closed when we got there. So then we hit a random Goodwill, which surprise, surprise, only had a Wii Fit board and two Madden games. We then hit a local game store called Game Over Video Games in Austin and while they had some very cool items, I just, I just wasn't feeling it. But right as I was about to give up, you know, it hit me. I knew what I was going to buy today. All right, guys, decided to check out the Best Buy website and saw that they have some sort of open box PS5 in satisfactory condition. So we're, we're gonna go check it out, see if we can pick it up and uh, see what's going on here. Hey, I'm um, looking for this open box PS5. Just looking around, looking for it. Hey, uh, you have the uh, open box PlayStation 5 up by customer service by any chance? Yep, she has it up by customer service. Okay, wait, hold on a second. Did that, did that guy just walk out with our open box PS5? No, 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 that, that's just a brand new one. Okay, okay, that was close. Open box PS5? Yeah, all right, thank you very much, appreciate it. <laughs> now everybody's looking at me. You're gonna steal my PS5? All right, guys, we secured the PS5 from Best Buy. They uh, had it behind the counter, so we had to, we were looking around for a while, had to wait for them to pull it out. And then uh, checked out the PS5 box, and it's a little bit beat up, but apparently the satisfactory means that the console inside is probably beat up as well, just according to Best Buy's website. Uh, but we'll, of course, find that out here in a minute. So let's get into it. Uh, this console is a little bit weird. I mean, as you've already seen, it has this label on the front. Basically, I was looking for retro game stores in Austin, and just happened to look at Best Buy and found that they had an open box console in store. 
Uh, the weird thing is it's called satisfactory grade C and you can see here on the sticker it says residue slash uh, minor scratches. I'm assuming that's on the console itself. I'm not sure what happened here. I guess somebody bought it, returned it and uh, my guess is that they probably used the code here too. I hope not but it is a Modern Warfare 2 console so it has a code inside. Let's go ahead and slice this open and see what's on the inside. Alright, so we peel this up. Of course, you have some rips in the boxes, man. The uh, the Sony boxes with the sleeves, not a huge fan of. They always get ripped. Let's go ahead and slide this out. Oh, and <laughs> not even inside the box, we have our Modern Warfare 2 code, which hopefully works. Again, I'm pretty sure that was most likely used. Like, my guess is somebody bought this, used the code, and then returned the console. Let me just look at the back here. <laughs> yeah, scratched off. Somebody... <laughs> Somebody bought this and used the code. I, I need to check the uh, Best Buy listing to see if that was like part of the stipulation, but I paid $485 for this, so it was like a $50 savings, I think. You're only saving money because of the code. Like, the, this costs extra because the code is included, so it... All right, that's... Yeah, that's not cool. All right, guys, so I kind of want to go in on Best Buy here for a second because it's it's pretty bad that they did not include the code here. Um, the description of an open box satisfactory on Best Buy's website uh, says that it might be a ris missing original packaging and might be missing some non-essential parts, but like the code is definitely essential since that's like the whole reason you buy this specific package. And Geek Squad apparently certified this and like opened it up and clearly saw there was a used code in here. So it's just like, it's like next level bad that Best Buy resold this without a working code. Just come on guys. Let's see what the inside of the box looks like, man. That <laughs> Dude, that's so dirty of somebody to, I, I know for sure, like you guys know too, somebody bought this console just so they could use the code and return it to Best Buy, just taking advantage. And uh, let's take a look on the inside here. First glance, it looks okay. Um, this box looks like it's been opened before. Let me pull this out and we'll, we'll take a look inside of this box first. All right, so this box should have all the accessories. We have the PS5 controller here. Let's go ahead and see if this appears to be used. It's definitely been used. It's got some like, got some like dirt there along the crack. <laughs> which would not happen if it was not used at all. You can see some little micro scratches here that could be from just banging around in the box, but I don't think so. Um, I'm pretty sure that's just like scratches from somebody using this. Yeah, it doesn't look like in terrible condition or anything, but it's definitely, somebody definitely opened this console up and, and used it. Uh, we got the uh, USB-C cord there, which is not wrapped correctly from factory, so that was definitely open and used. We've got HDMI cable. That looks like it's fat from factory, so they probably didn't use the HDMI cable, probably used the one they already had. Power cable, I think it was wrapped slightly differently from that, from factory. Now the real test is does, do we have the screw inside of here? Uh, I'm gonna guess no. Oh, we do, okay, cool. We do have the screw inside of the stand. That's what I'm making, I'm actually surprised how many consoles I've bought that still had the screw included. Uh, I would think people lose them a whole lot more frequently than they, than they do, but we do have all the accessories so far. Let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll see what's inside of the box here. And guys, in case you haven't noticed, we are in a hotel filming, so apologies for the dirty walls and stuff. Um, I can't really do anything about it, but let's go ahead and slide this out. Let's see what it looks like on the inside here. And, oh yeah, it is kind of scratched up. Huh, top looks fine. Like I see some, you know, like maybe minor blemishes, blemish. nothing to write home about, but here, looking on the, uh, the center faceplate here, <laughs> there's like greasy fingerprints all over it. Like some dude clearly picked this up, played it for, you know, like five minutes and then took the code. I guess those are all just fingerprints. Like it doesn't look scratched up, but like the dude has the, Whoever played this has the greasiest fingerprints I've ever seen. <laughs> now looking at the back here, all the ports look okay. Like you can just glance there, I don't see any issues there. Oh, and he left us a surprise in the bottom here. Got ourselves nice little hair, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, looking at the cracks, it doesn't look dusty or anything, so it doesn't look like they used it for an extended period of time. But this is like pretty tragic that I bought this and the code was used. Um, I'm assuming it is because it was scratched off. I was gonna plug it in. My other concern is what if this guy bought this console and got banned online and then returned it because like i've seen that before that's how i got the banned wish console but let's go ahead and plug it in see what happens all right guys so i'm here at the goodwill location about to pick up this 900 pound lot of goodwill consoles pretty nervous uh, i'm not sure if they're gonna still have it or if they you know everything's running through my head we've been driving for three days and i paid a bunch of money for it so we're gonna go inside see if we can get it my hands are shaking and uh, tune in tomorrow to see what they gave us and if it went well all right guys, I have this console plugged in on my old hotel TV right here. Let's go ahead and see if it works. We'll first, you know, of course, plug our controller in, turn it on. We do have life. I honestly would not be surprised if this thing was not reset. Um, you know, uh, who reset it? Geek Squad? Well, I don't know, uh, but no signal here. All right, it's popped up now. It's just wrong on the wrong input. All right guys, just by the way, uh, we don't have a PS5 disc with us because we're on the road. Didn't pick up a PS5 disc. Probably should have a Best Buy, but it's not a big deal. We'll do some B-roll back at the office and throw it on here. We'll continue without the disc for now. 
Um, but I am, you know, like I mentioned, the most thing, thing I'm most curious about is if I sign in here and it's banned. So let's go ahead and try to sign in. I'm not sure if this is where we would get the, uh, the message yet about being banned. Let's, let's keep going. I won't be convinced until we download a game, but we are at the Welcome to PlayStation 5 home screen, which is a good sign. And of course, Astro's Playroom. Uh, not downloaded here, but let's go ahead and download a game. I'm going to download a small, something small, because we are currently using Danny's Wi-Fi hotspot. <laughs> let's see if we can... Oh yeah, I'll download the biggest, the biggest game I can find. 200 gigs of NBA 2K23. We'll be here for ages. All right, guys, we're downloading Rain World. Only 1.62 gigs. Probably going to still take a... Oh, three minutes. Got a fast hotspot. We're here in Rain World now. Let's go ahead and see if that boots up. Rain, Rain World. Why am I having trouble saying that? No notification yet that we are banned, so that's good to see. And here it goes. It is booting up. So this console seems to work. Of course, we haven't tried the disk drive yet. We'll try that later. I just want to see if yeah, it makes a noise there. I guess I can try to plug this in the back here and make sure the USB ports work. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to try is the... I was going to try to boot up... Let's see. This, is this charging? Yeah, it's charging. So, all right. Yeah, so all the USB ports are working. Let's go ahead and try to plug in the, uh, the Modern Warfare 2 code and see if that works. I'm guessing it won't. I mean, you guys saw it's already scratched off. We'll, we'll try it anyway. All right, guys. Code is on the screen. If it does work, I'm blocking it. <laughs> yep, there it is. Code has already been used. All right, Best Buy. Good stuff. I mean, I think we all, all assume this would happen. I can imagine this this dude just sitting at home right now like, Haha, I got I got them. I got Best Buy. I got this free code. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, whoever bought this console actually opened it up and seemed to play it because there's fingerprints all over it. Uh, I, honestly, I thought they would have opened it up um, and just pulled the code out and then returned it to Best Buy. Like, that would have made the most sense, honestly, from their scamming perspective. But... Uh, yeah, we're gonna message Best Buy, see if we can get a, a real code that works. So I want to bring up another alternative here that maybe the guy didn't just open up the console and use it for a few minutes and then return it and use the code. Maybe he actually used it for a few months, which could make sense because we're in July now. This console is manufactured in December, so somewhere in there, there's probably a few months of usage here, and the controller actually is, is pretty worn down. Uh, so it almost seems like this guy used the console for a few months and then returned the whole thing, which makes the whole situation even worse because... Best Buy is selling it as open box, and open box stuff is supposed to not be used. Like, it's stuff that people return in, like, poor condition or whatever, but it should not be a used product. So, again, another knock on Best Buy here in Geek Squad. Like, this is this is all around, like, this is pretty sketch. And the next thing I want to do is turn this thing off. And I'm going to do, like, I don't know if I'm going to open it all the way, but I'm going to at least take the plates off and see if there's anything weird going on, on underneath the plates, see if they've opened it up before. But let's, let's go ahead and check. All right, so here's the PS5, and again, another look at the surprise they left for me. Now let's go ahead and see if we can pop these plates off. Oh, came off really easily. Yeah, plate looks fine, not broken or anything. We've got, still have the warranty seal intact right there. Doesn't look like it's been pulled up. Got that sticker right there. Huh. Oh, I think that must be the, the newer model one. I think they changed, I think I've seen this on a PS5 at some point where it was like a, yeah, newer model. I think had a smaller, the smaller square. Um, yeah, so let's check the manufacturing date. It is December, 2022, so fairly recent. And model CFI 1215A. So I think that is the newer model. So yeah, maybe the newer model is why it's got the smaller sticker there. I feel like I've seen that at some point, but I'm gonna take a screwdriver and see if I can pull off the SSD here and see if there's one in there. All right, I got this screw out, I think. Pull this up and nope, no SSD there. Not surprising. <laughs> that would have been a mess up on that person's part to uh, leave the SSD in there if they did that. And let's go ahead and flip over and look at the other, at the other side of the plate. And yep, the plate looks good. And let's take a close look. Oh man, yeah, this definitely is a newer model. It's, I've, this was not all the older models, like the little gaps here. You can actually see the power supply, which is nice because sometimes the power supply accumulates a lot of dust, so maybe that'll help with dust there. I mean, this person probably used the PS5 for like five minutes, stole the code, and then and then dipped. But uh, yeah, very interesting pickup. I paid 485 plus tax and stuff, so it was basically like a $15 discount, an absolute ripoff. I mean, it would have been, I think it actually would have been reasonable if they had included the code because originally this is like 550, I think. So it would have been like a $65 discount somewhere in that ballpark. And if we got the code, that's, you know, a pretty good discount. But of course, code's redeemed. And yeah, kind of unfortunate. We'll see if we can get the code from Best Buy. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to check in tomorrow for the 900 pound lot of video game consoles that's going live. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Dude, each, each console I pull out, I started to think more and more how the, much of a mistake this was. The Texas load. I bought this 900 pound lot of untested consoles from Goodwill, and in this video, we're gonna go through everything and see what they gave to us. And we got, right off the bat on top, we got a couple Wii Sports, which is actually a good sign because those are pretty light. Both of these are like 20 bucks right there. That's good to see. We're just gonna 
put this stuff to the side. We're straight up in a U-Haul doing this because of this ridiculousness. I mean, there's tons of stuff in here, guys. It's like 360s, PS3s, Wii's, I think. And the funny thing is they didn't tell us what was in here. They just took a picture of the top and said, here you go, bid on it. But we're gonna go through here and hopefully stuff works. I uh, don't have a whole, a whole lot of hope, but we got a 360 here, a slim. Uh, still got the warranty seal in it. It actually looks like it's in pretty nice condition. Then next up we have another slim, warranty seal intact again, and actually nice condition as well. And then we got two more slims. We got another matte slim, warranty seal intact. We got a uh, glossy slim, warranty seal intact. Good stuff to see. And oh, oh, look, look what I just found, guys. This one says GameStop certified pre-owned on the side. That's funny. I don't know what year that's from, but most of the consoles so far, these four consoles so far look pretty good. I'm really hoping there's all consoles in here and not just a bunch of like Wii Fit boards. That would suck. Um, we got a, what is this? Oh, we got a Jasper. Let's go. You can see the date there. We got a 120 gigabyte hard drive. Nice. Let's go, baby. All right, next up, guys, we've got a, I'm just gonna move these cords out of the way. Nobody cares about the cords. And guys, I'm not gonna even tell you how much I paid for this. Guess down below how much you think I paid for it and I'll, I'll tell you if you're right or not. But this Wii right here is disgusting. Look at that Wii, that's, that's just nasty. Ugh. Oh, great. Now my hand is sticky. All right, guys, let's test out this random Wii console I have here. We're just going to turn this one on. It's got a red light so far. Got power. Got a blue flashing light from the disk drive. And there it is. I already booted up. And oh, there's actually an SD card in here. Dude, no way. 32 gigs? Oh, that's a solid SD card. <laughs> Dude, the funniest thing about these are honestly what I think is going to be most interesting is searching through here and seeing people's like old save data and stuff. And hopefully there's not. Oh, oh, this one's got some games on it. Okay, we got Mario Kart 64. We got a Super Nintendo game, Super Mario World. That, that's solid. Okay, uh, let me see if I can get this Wii remote to work. Wait, hold up. There's Wii, Wii Sports is inside. Jackpot. Let's go. And of course, <laughs> got the Wii wheel. I mean, this is an OEM one. This is like 10 bucks right there. Got a uh, Wii remote, and that thing looks pretty dang grimy. Another Wii remote. The good thing is about the Wii remotes is like they're pretty light, and like the weight to price ratio ratio is not bad. Um, compared to like 360s and Wii's because those weight to price ratios is really bad. I can already see like a little stack of Wii's down here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them out and, and stack them up. They're all in like, they're all in okay condition, pretty beat up, missing the flaps and stuff, but they are, they are Nintendo Wii's and hopefully they somewhat work. And here we go guys, a couple more 360s. There's, there's so many 360s in this lot. Both of these still have the, actually this one does not have the warranty seal intact. This one does. Um, no hard drive. I've been forgetting to check the hard drives. That's the that's one thing that could make or break us here So we, if we find these 360s have hard drives inside of them and yeah We got 250 right here, which by itself is like 30 bucks So that's that's cool to see and, and in case you can't tell guys we are outside It is blazing hot here in Texas like 104 right now. And oh, we got a HD DVD I love those things. They just look just like a 360 just in miniature form. All right, I got some more some more Wii's down here um, What I'm really hoping is we get to the bottom and we find some like really extraordinary valuable stuff I'd I don't have a lot of hope for that, but that's, you know, of course the hope. Got a few more Wii's. We actually have, oh, what is this? <laughs> the Wii HDMI converter. That's pretty funny. Dude, we have a, uh, an OG Xbox. Oh my gosh. What happened to that? Uh, I'm really hoping the consoles at the bottom do not like, look like this because 900 pounds of weight is in here. So that means the consoles on the bottom have a lot of weight on them. I'm hoping they don't look like this. Uh, we're, we're about to find out. So far, most of them look decent. And dude, we got a refurbished 360 here. Look at that, refurbished. 2009, so I don't know. It's probably a Jasper as well. That's, that's nice. <gasps> what is it? Oh, dude, no. Oh, we have a B01. Let's go. You see that black trim, guys? That is a B01. So we're gonna go ahead and try to test out this backwards compatible PS3 and see if it works. I'm a little scared right now. This is kind of gonna make or break my day right here because this is a very valuable PS3. If it is working, it's nasty, but let's go ahead and see if it turns on. I'm gonna get some footage right here. I gotta flip on the back first. So three, two, one. We do have a red light. That's a good sign. I really hope it does not get the yellow light of death right here. But three, two, one. Oh no. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I know that's gonna happen, but that, that sucks. It does still have the warranty sticker though, so. And even better news, we have another refurbished. <laughs> what in the world? And the hard drive is peeling apart. When is this from? This is from, it says service date 2009, so it, I don't know, probably a, uh, I forgot the, the uh, motherboard name, but man, this is this is an interesting lot so far. PS3s have X's on them. Oh no, that's not a good sign. All right guys, we have PS3s that have X's on them. Does that mean they tested them and they didn't work, so they threw them in this untested lot? That's my worry here, is that this is all crap that they just throw in a lot and called untested, but it's actually broken. That's that's my main worry. And the next up, let's go ahead and pull out this B01. This thing is scratched like crazy. Oh my gosh, that thing looks awful. But it is a B01 and yeah, this is a warranty seal. 
We have another 360 here. This one I think is also a Jasper. Man, a lot of Jaspers in here. That's good to see. All right, next up we have a PS3 Super Slim. Um, I don't think those break very often. Maybe the disc drive doesn't work because it's covered in filth, but got that, plus a few random 360 controllers, which we'll put to the side. Dude, each each console I pull out, I started to think more and more how the, much of a mistake this was. Oh no, look at that console. Oh no, destroyed, what in the world? And it's from 2006, it's actually got an HDMI port. It's probably a Falcon. Oh, it's got a memory card on front. There we go, that's cool. So by the way, this is not the last video in the Texas Load series. We're gonna continue them weekly, testing out all the consoles and doing repairs and cleaning as needed. And by the way, we have a little twist here. We're gonna take the profit from each console that we fix and resell. Um, and we're gonna turn that into a, a cool console collection that I'm not gonna reveal the details of yet, but I think you guys are really gonna like it. All right, now, oh, we have a Slim, PS3 Slim. Dude, these things are filthy. These have probably been sitting in the warehouse for ages. Oh my gosh. All right, next up we have a Wii in a bag. Dude, what kind of Wii is that? Wii remote is that? Yeah, we're not even like, what is this? We're probably like a fifth of the way through this lot and there's just so much stuff still. Got another 360. This one is a, probably a Falcon. Got another Slim. I'm gonna have to like cut this box open eventually because I can't reach all the way down into here. Do have another couple games down here. We've got Tiger Woods 09. We got Sega, oh, empty case. Wow, cool. One, oh man, <laughs> dude, we gotta, <laughs> we're just pulling out random stuff and we got a Wii, a box Wii down here. I'll, I'll wait for that so we don't drop a bunch of stuff, more stuff down there, but another, you know, a couple more 360s. We got a Turtle Beach engineered for gaming sticker there. That's funny. Let's see if this 360 Slim works. So three, two, one, got a green light, cool. Does it open? A hey, no free game, but it does open and it's booting up. <laughs> let's, let's go, dude. We got a bunch of profiles. Let's go ahead and just try out a game and see if see if this loads up and works. Yeah, 360 Slim works. Let's go. It's it's kind of interesting how I haven't seen any Xenons yet. I thought this would have been littered, littered with like Red Ring of Death Xenons. Maybe they still have Red Ring of Death. I don't know, but all these consoles are just filthy. I'm not surprised at all, but it's just ugh, nasty. Another Super Slim that is uh, basically falling apart on one side. All right, guys, we're just going to start shoveling these out of here. Two more 360 Slims. <laughs> got a couple more 360s. One is a Slim, one is a Xenon, and we even got a Wi-Fi adapter that's worth like 20 bucks. No, it's actually, it's not worth anything because it's broken. <laughs> so many Wii's guys. And then we have another 360 uh, HD DVD player down there. I mean, they're not worth that much and honestly, they're probably broken, but well, this thing sold for eight bucks at one point back in 2016. We have another, <laughs> another GameStop certified pre-owned 360 down here. These, these consoles are so old. And, what in the world, man? But yeah, half these consoles are just not even unplugged. We're just like, they're still plugged in, just tossed in the back. <laughs> I'm bringing a DualShock 2 along with me. I am a little bit disappointed about how many Wii's are in here. <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised, but I would, I would rather have 360s than Wii's. And again, another, is this the same PS3? Is this a different PS3 Super Slim? It's got the same issue where it's got like half of it broken off. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, wait, wait, powered on LED lights don't work but it works <laughs> i guess i guess that's a good note hey another another jasper guys guys we're, <laughs> we are safe we've been looking for a double a battery for like two days now we are we've been traveling for a long time and had multiple things that needed to need double a batteries and could not find any and, and uh the hotel room of course another slim here and uh warranty seal and tap oh my gosh look at the <laughs> look at the filth i mean like I, I really hope these are not just like infested with cockroaches they <laughs> That kind of looks like it is. And another, <laughs> another super slim. Oh man, that thing looks nasty. Gross. It's oh, looks like somebody peed on it. <laughs> Get that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? I mean, we got this more, more of this bag stuff. I almost wonder, like, maybe this stuff was sitting at a Goodwill for sale. Like, that's the kind of stuff Goodwill uses. So it almost feels like they had it for sale and nobody bought it because they had it probably listed too high. All right, guys, we got a Wii in box, and I do feel something in there. So there probably is actually a Wii in there. Nice, you guys. We are. We are we are fraught, <laughs> dude. What is that, girl? <laughs> Skater girl? Got the warranty seal in tech, guys. We are frying out here. It is like 104 degrees in Texas right now. I hope you guys watch this video. I hope you guys like it. This is not good. We're getting to the bottom, and they have a handful that have an X on them, which tells me they were probably not working. Which is, in my opinion, pretty dirty to test it, say not working, and, and call it untested. Got another bundle. What is that? Oh, is that, that looks like an Amazon like dot thing. What? <laughs> so random. Another 360 warranty seal in tech. Gotta love the 360s and uh, another PS3 Slim with an X on it. All right, so we're gonna test out one of these uh, PS3 Slims that has a giant X on it. Let's go ahead and turn it on to three, two, one. All right, yeah, so this one is weird. It won't display via AV or HDMI. And also I can't even turn it off. Once it's on, it just like the button does nothing. All right, guys, so after a little hydration break and uh, just a break in general, we're back and better than ever, not really, but we got a uh, Skylanders Giants empty box cool um there's still there's so much so much stuff in oh hold on we have a wave bread receiver 
Oh, baby. Go ahead and take out this boxed Wii, though. Uh, yeah, it's definitely boxed, and there's definitely something inside. It's just a very beat-up Wii box. Another little Wii bundle with a uh, memory card in there. And again, another Wii bundle that is breaking on me because there's so much junk in it. Dude, what, what kind of bundle were they selling? Like, a Wii with 20 Wii jackets? Like, what? Who, who, no wonder they didn't sell it. What in the world, dude? So random. We got another PS3 Super Slim down here, though. We have a little thing that says BD right there, as in Blu-ray drive, maybe? And so my guess is maybe the Blu-ray drive does not work. Oh, yep, it's got an X on it. Dude, how, how are you gonna call these untested? And you've got stuff in here with giant X's on them. Like they're clearly tested and had issues. That's, that's some BS right there. But we'll, we'll try it out. So three, two, one, hit that power button, hit the eject. And I uh, see the disc, the uh, laser doing something. Let's go ahead and put a disc in here. And I do see, oh, I see a picture on screen, but it's like just, oh wait, there it is. Is that just me? Or do I see like static all over the screen? Oh, wait, did it go away? That was odd. And the disk drive works fine. All right, another PS3 here. Luckily, this one does not have a giant X, so maybe it does work. And again, it's just filthy. Dude, how long have these been sitting in their warehouse? Now we're getting somewhere. We got games down here. Yep, just a bunch of random sports titles that are worth nothing. We've got The Sound of Music. <laughs> what? Okay, so we got another stack of four Wii's. We have, if I had to guess, probably 25 Wii's so far. Oh, Wii Sport, oh no, wait. Maybe there is the disc in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go. No, no. <laughs> Dude, they did me dirty with that. And of course, another 360. This one's kind of smashed up and it's 2008, so probably a Falcon. All right, got another 360 Slim here covered in filth. Got another DualShock 3. This one might work. It looks filthy, but it might work. And then we also have a camo. Hey, that one actually looks not bad for how far down this was in the pile. All right, guys, another PS3 Slim. Another 360 slim, 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 slimly slim. All right, two more Wii's guys. I mean, it's just like Wii's galore here. And we're still going down. We got another 360. This one is, a it even has a Jasper sticker on it. That's funny. All right guys, so we've been slowly pulling everything out. We're, we seriously might be close to heat exhaustion. So we're gonna push through till the end. Uh, but we do still have some box consoles down here, which is cool. Like a box 360, a DJ Hero, another Wii, another Wii. There's clearly a blue Wii down here, which I think is worth a little bit more. And just by the way, we've been pulling out tons of accessories that have not been shown on camera because there's just way too many to show. But the uh, funny part is we have another another PS3 with an X. This one says bad discs. So, dude, untested my butt. <laughs> nice, face boy just fell straight off. We got a couple more elites. There's another, there's another Jasper, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this Jasper 360 and just see if it turns on. Three, two, one. Okay, yeah, it sounds like a Jasper. <laughs> this drive is stuck. Nice, dude. <laughs> It is booting up though. Okay, okay. I just want to try to get it open once. There it goes. <laughs> okay, I got it open. Uh, I would not recommend slapping your 360 like that. Very, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, it's reading. Okay, so this this console, a stuck disk drive on a 360 is pretty easy to fix. So I'm not too concerned about that. That's actually a really nice console. You know, guys, I can see the bottom. We're getting close. I can see the cardboard at the bottom. We got a PS3 or a 360 Slim here. Two more 360 Slims. <laughs> Look at this. This battery is wedged into the 360 Slim. And wait, hold on. It's from Target and it has a service plan sticker on it. That's actually pretty funny. Uh, the good thing is this thing is on the bottom and like it's not smashed up too terribly. I mean, honestly, I thought we would get some on the bottom that were just completely destroyed. Oh, wait, hold on. What is this? A piano for the 360. <laughs> what is that? Of course, we have some more Wii games down here. Nothing valuable down here. Um, I might just like try to spread out the stuff on the bottom so we can see the last few things and then call it quits because this is uh, getting a bit excessive. We got another Wii. And yeah, we, so we got another 360 over here which is basically mutilated. PS3 super slim down here. Oh wait, hold on. Dude, we have a Wii bag. That's actually pretty sick. And it probably has a Wii inside. It does. Nice. But guys, I think you can see most of the rest down here. And uh, this is going to be a long series of videos. Oh, dude. Black Ops, let's go. Yeah, I think we have a couple, few more Wii's over there, just some various sports games that we. Um, I, I am pretty hopeful though that we have a pretty solid number of working consoles or things that just need a little bit of work. We'll throw up the number on the screen of how many consoles we count here, but this is gonna be a long series of videos. And this, this series is gonna extend like, I don't know, 15 videos, it's gonna be crazy. But guys, make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. If we live. <sighs> yeah, if <laughs> we might not make it out of here. I'm like, honestly, destroyed right now and it's like 105 out I bought over 900 pounds of untested consoles from Goodwill and in this video we're gonna go through about 10 of the consoles try to test and fix them and see if we can turn a profit now I have a little side quest for this video I'm gonna see if I can take the profit from the consoles I sell and turn it into a cool complete unbox limited edition Halo Xbox 360 that I found for 250 so hopefully we can get that much in profit let's find out guys welcome to the Texas load
So I have some 360s, PS3s, and Wii's to test today. We're going to start with this Elite Xbox 360, and you can see it's pretty beat up on the top. Uh, front is actually not too bad, considering the top. And then bottom, we have some, like, paint or something. I don't know what's going on, but let's take a look and see what version we have here. And judging by the power port and the manufacturer data, it appears to be a Jasper, which is always good to see. And of course, we actually have a 120 gigabyte hard drive. So let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. All right, so we're plugged in here. The controller and the power supply I'm using are all from the lot I bought. Let's go ahead and see if it works. Three, two, one. We got life and it sounds like a good Jasper so far. Let's see if the disk drive works. It's stuck. Oh, oh, wait, wait, it's out, and there's no free games. Now, a stuck disk drive is pretty easy to fix. It's usually just dust on the uh, little band in there, the belt, whatever you want to call it. And this one actually looks like it was reset. Okay, that's odd. And indeed, this console boots right up. Uh, again, it was reset, so we shouldn't have anything on the hard drive. And yeah, we got 120 gigs, so that's, that's awesome. Disk drive opens sometimes. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it open now and read a game. Little trick for you guys out there. If you got a disk drive and you and you're trying to like get it open in an emergency, you can kind of tap the top of your Xbox and it'll usually open up. I don't recommend that, but you can do it if you want to. Now the good thing is the disk drive is staying open when I, <laughs> once I pulled it open. We'll try out Modern Warfare 2. This is not a game that came with the lot, but um, they, I got some games in the lot, but they were all like crappy, like $2 games. Some of them are missing the disk and stuff, so basically useless, but let's see if this reads up. And guys, as you can see, it booted straight up. Uh, no delay at all. I mean, it, this console works great. Again, the disk drive is stuck. We're gonna go ahead and try to fix the stuck disk drive on this Black 360. I already have it all the way apart and the disk drive open. You really don't have to go this far down just to fix the disk drive. Like you can actually kind of sneak some tweezers in there and do it. Um, but I'm just kind of have it, have it broken down because we're gonna clean it out anyway. And uh, I just wanna show you guys. So to manually eject this thing, you just gotta push this little tiny pull right here. It'll actually kind of pop out and you just pull it all the way out. All right, and to make this really easy, I went ahead and took the whole uh, eject tray off. So what happens here is this, this little band right here gets really dusty and dirty, uh, typically, and that's the issue. So you can take it off and clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it with a brand new one because I have like a little baggie of brand new ones. And we'll stick that on there and we should be good to go. All right, so we take one of these bands, string it around the little, little gear right there, and then around the big gear, and boom, we should be good to go now. Now, of course, before calling it officially good, we need to test this thing out. So let's go ahead and turn the console on and make sure it opens up. There you go, guys. Opens up on the first try. We'll Tried a couple times, and you can see no issue now. All right, so this console is all cleaned up, ready to go. You know, cleaned out the inside, outside, uh, thermal paste replaced. It's going to be listed on the website down below. But guys, I want to go ahead and explain how the profit's going to work in this whole series and how much I paid for everything. So straight off the bat, I paid $3,300 for the entire lot, which I already know is pretty high. I'll be honest, I would not have paid that high if I wasn't making videos out of it as well. Um, now, I do still think we'll make a pretty nice profit, but um, that's a lot of money for untested consoles. Now, I'm going to throw a screenshot of an Excel spreadsheet on the screen so you can see my like per console breakdown, how much I'm paying per console. Console. And so all the consoles add up to $3,300 and everything else you find like accessories, controllers, uh, you know, power supplies, free games, that is all, we consider that all free, just a huge bonus. Now in terms of profit, we're going to run on expected profit and how much I think I can sell each console for. So we'll do expected profit minus the item cost, minus any fees, and minus any, you know, any parts I have to buy to fix a console. Now for simplicity's sake, we're going to completely ignore the whole labor aspect for the entire Texas Lowe's series. So after fees and item cost and everything, this console should net us about $76. And that's because it's going for a higher price because we're fully opening these things up, cleaning the inside, outside, uh, thermal paste replaced. So these are very nice consoles much better than one you would just grab off of eBay or uh, a used one that's not been cleaned or anything. So next up we have a PS3 Slim and man this thing is uh, this thing is filthy. Now to be fair it should be fairly easy to clean off um, but just as I tilt it around there's like dust and dirt falling out. Uh, you know other than that there's not too many dings and, and stuff like that. There is one rubber foot missing. Um, now the good thing is the warranty seal is still intact so it means nobody's opened this up. And looking on the back, the model number is a CECH 2001A. Uh, I don't remember what hard drive size that is, but everything looks good here. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it turns on. But we did have a red light, so three, two, one. Okay, it's booting up. Any games? Nope, no games. All right, let's see if this boots up to the home screen. Oh, let's go. We got the Sony logo. And guys, in case you did not notice, we do have the Texas Load merch live. I got a hat right here, which is, this is just like a normal hat that I wear, but it says Texas Load on it. Got the Texas Load shirt with the full logo and everything. These things are pretty sweet. Make sure to check out the links down below if you want to pick one up and support the series. I really appreciate it if you do. First of all, I'm curious what firmware version we're on, and then of course, how much memory we have. So let's check that out. We have a, it looks like we have a 120 gigabyte hard drive. So that's like the smallest one they have in the slim, I believe. Uh, yeah, it is factory recess. So there's not anything to see here, but let's go ahead and put a game in, see if it works. Now, conveniently, I do have Modern Warfare 2 for the PS3 as well here. Put it in. 
I mean, for how dusty this thing is, I did not, th not expect that to draw the, uh, draw the disc in, but let's see if it reads up. Just booted up, playing some local multiplayer against myself, you know, the classic. This is like a nice console. If you want a PS3, a 120GB PS3 Slim is a, a nice pickup for you guys. Um, I'll throw the profit on the screen, I'll have to calculate it later, but um, this should be a nice, nice addition of profit to our lot right here. All right, so next up we're gonna test out a Wii console, and oddly enough, I'm actually the most excited for the Wiis because I think these are the most likely that they'll still have user data, and maybe some stuff sta saved on them, so we'll, we'll find out. No SD card here, but the Wii itself, I mean, as far as Wii, Wii's go, it doesn't look too bad. It's, it's pretty scratched up, but um, yeah, it is the GameCube compatible one, missing one flat, but overall, uh, not terrible. And by the way, all this stuff right here did come in a lot. We got like 25 Wii power supplies, probably like 40 controllers. I don't know. Those are all nice bonuses though. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. All right, guys, we're all plugged in. Let's go ahead and see if it turns on. Three, two, one. Got a green light. Any games inside? Nope, no free games. Damn, that sucks. All right, and it's working now. And we do have some stuff on here. We got the Nintendo channel, internet channel, check me out channel. Dude, a check me out channel on the Everybody Votes channel. Those were legendary. Yeah, we got nothing else on here. Let's, let's check out the save data and see what kind of games these people played. So there's a bunch of like, there's like a few of the classics and then just a bunch of random games. Deca Sports, I played that back in the day. Let's see if we can find when the last time this thing was played because that was... That's gonna be interesting. Oh, 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 I think I found it. We are August 7th, 2012. This this is last played 11 years, that's insane. All right, all right, so we got a few things here. We got this person, wait, we didn't check out the, the Mies. We gotta check out the Mies. We got this uh, Kaylee Callie played bowling um, and debuted in December 2009. And yeah, like I said, I wanna go back and check out the, the Mii channel. People always have really interesting Mies. You know, back in the day, you could actually download other people's Mies that they made and. People would make the most ridiculous things. There's not much here. Wow, this Wii was probably not played very much. Pretty basic. It looks like a family of of six played, and that was about it. There's no special Miis here or anything. Uh, let's go back to the Wii menu, and of course, we'll put a game in, see if it works. So just by the way, in this massive lot of consoles, there were a few copies of Wii Sports, so we're gonna try this one out. Let's go ahead and see if this game works. Uh, it was pretty scratched up, so I won't be surprised if it doesn't. Hey, there it is. Wii Sports, the classic. You can't, you can't have a Wii without Wii Sports, guys. There we go. No, crap. Wait, wait, I gotta do the classic here. You guys remember this? <laughs> you chuck it up in the air. But I mean, guys, this console's working great. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console and see what's up with it. And guys, by the way, all these consoles you see in the video will be for sale down below on my website. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go on with another weeb here because I'm kind of in the Wii mode, get all my Wii stuff out. Now we have a black one here, which is not as good. It doesn't have the GameCube compatibility, but it is a Wii. This one's mutilated, but uh, that's just like classic Wii territory right there. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works though. And actually, First of all, oh, there's an SD card. Oh, it's a micro SD card adapter here. What do we have in it? Two gigs, <laughs> nice. So not much, but that's that's plenty for a Wii. Now that's that's the stuff I like to, like to see on a Wii because that means there's probably gonna be some cool save data on here. So let's boot it up. All right, it's three, two, one. We do have life. Ooh, right off the bat, the disk drive sounded odd, but console booted right up. Let's go ahead and connect the controller. All right, guys, do you think this one's gonna have a game in it? It does, let's go. I can already see there we got 007. Now, I don't think that game's worth that much on the Wii. I mean, Wii games in general are not worth, worth very much, but it is, wow, it's in nice condition as well. We also got the Nintendo channel, the Wii Shop channel, all the classics here. Got Hulu, YouTube, Amazon. So somebody was using this as like a smart TV hub, which is funny. But yeah, free game, guys. Let's go ahead and check out the SD card here. I don't see, oh, wait, it's loading. Uh, yeah, nothing here. Now, you know what it could be here is stuff on the photos channel. Uh oh, no, dude, there's... 299 photos and 72 movies. I, all right, I'm gonna click on this. I don't know if I should show you guys because I don't know what's gonna be on here, but let's go ahead and just, let's gonna go ahead and view. <laughs> this is this is like classic Wii photos. It's like, honestly, the same ones I have in my Wii, which is just like me as a kid and my family, just random pictures. It's kind of like, honestly, makes you think, like I, I wish I could find this family and give the SD card back to them because who knows if they even have these photos anymore. Let's go ahead and go back to the main menu and see when this is last played. All right, I don't know what's going on here, but I could not find any days when this was last played. So maybe, I wonder if the console itself was factory reset, but the memory card was not. Let me go check the save data. No, I mean, we have save data here. We actually have a, a lot of save data. Not a lot, we got a decent amount. New Super Mario Bros, like the classics here, Mario Kart. I don't know, we can't see when it was last played, but uh, from the photos, it looked like 2009 probably. So man, another one that's, that's amazing. 14 years ago was the last time this console was played. Just just wild. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, so next up we got a 360 Slim, and this thing is uh, pretty scratched up. It is the glossy one, obviously. We got a lot of dirt on top, which should clean off pretty easily. Front looks good. Faceplate is not messed up or anything. Now the real question is, yep, we still got the warranty sticker intact, which is obviously good to see. Manufactured in 2010, so it's one of the earlier models of the Slim. Let's see, do we have a hard drive? I'm gonna guess no but yeah, no hard drive, that sucks. So it's only four gigs, but it does still have some built-in memory, which is good. Three, two, one, green light. Sounds good, see if the disk drive opens. Oh, it's stuck. I'm, I'm not really surprised these disk drives are stuck. I mean, all these consoles are so dusty. 
they might all be stuck. But hey, we are booted up to the main menu on the Metro dashboard. Yeah, still not opening. Now, do we have family settings turned on? They're good, they're turned off, that's good to see. Do we have any save data? That's what I always like to see on the 360s is the old save data, no storage. Does this not have four gigs built in? Odd, I thought I could have sworn it had one built in. There it goes, all right. So I had to do the classic tap on the top and yeah, the thing looks filthy inside the disk drive. So we got another one that needs to be cleaned out and we can get that disk drive working. But let's go ahead and put a game in and, and see if it works. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's reading up. There it is, guys. I mean, <laughs> if we can get the disk drive open. Oh, hold on. Oh, is that supposed to happen? The disk was still spinning when it came out. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. All right, guys, so I messed around with this 360 for quite a while. It was working, but like not quite. And basically I cleaned out the entire inside of the drive, replaced the band, and it would, the disk drive would eject and come out like basically all the way and then it would stop. And then like two seconds later it would finish ejecting. Sometimes it would get stuck and go back in by itself. So I figured it was an issue, more internal issue. So I actually lubed up like everything inside and still had the same issue. Ended up figuring out the band I put in there was bad for whatever reason. So I bought some more bands and I put one of these in and it works fine now. I'll just show you. Closes in just fine. And when, you, when we eject it, normal, smooth, no issue there. So this console is good to go now. So next up, we're gonna check out this white 360, which of course, pretty beat up. All things considered though, it's not awful. I mean, like it's very scratched up and beat up, but um, doesn't appear to be too dusty and dirty from the outside. And we have a 60 gig hard drive. Now let's go ahead and open up the plate or take off the face plate and see if this thing's been opened before. It looks like it's been opened before. I, I see a little tear there on the uh, uh, warranty seal. So hopefully this thing works. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see. All right, by the way, this is actually a Zephyr console, which is basically the same as a Xenon, but has an HDMI port. So one of the least reliable ones. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works. So actually I'm gonna film this one because from the front because this one might have Red Ring of Death. I hope not, but we'll, we'll, we'll do this just in case. So three, two, one, good so far. Come on, boot up, boot up, boot up. Please, please, yes, it's booting up, let's go. All right, disk drive. Oh, nope. And it's already, <laughs> it already sounds like a jet engine. What in the world is going on here? We do have some save data though, let's go. That's what I've been work, looking for here, is some, some profiles, some save data, all that good stuff. And we got Alex. This looks like I was in a college, college dorm room or something and just all the, everybody in the suite used it, I don't know. But this thing, what in the world? This thing's going crazy. All right, we gotta test this one out quick because I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but the, the fan speed is like maximum right now, which is pretty wild considering I just booted, just booted it up. Now let's see if there's any games saved on here. Salt Heroes, yeah, we got some games on here. Got some demos, but let's go ahead and, well, I was gonna say I can put a game in, but I can't even get the disk drive open. Let me see if I can take this faceplate off and try to open it up. Oh, there it goes, <laughs> let's go. Now let's try Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, it's been reading for like 20 seconds. Still says reading, as you can see, when I select it, it does nothing. Uh, I guess this console is kind of good, like it works, but the fan is going crazy. The, uh, the disk drive is stuck. And of course it doesn't read games either. I don't, it's just like, it's such an old model. I don't know if it's worth working on. So next up we got this PS3 Super Slim and this thing is filthy. Like the top doesn't look too bad, but guys, let me just show you the bottom of this thing. Oh my goodness. Like <laughs> this thing is absolutely caked in dust. I don't even know if that's dust. Like is that, I, I don't even want to make a guess here. Let's go ahead and try to turn this on. Whoops, I already did it accidentally, but we got a, <laughs> got a green light. And of course it, the eject mechanism does work. Oh, there it is. We got the Sony logo. Nice. Is this, one, is this one gonna be factory reset as well? It is, what, dude, what in the world? All right, booting up the main menu. The game looks like it's loading up. Uh, let's go ahead and check out how much memory we have here. We probably, I, I would assume we got unlucky and it's probably just the 12 gig, uh, 12 gig system, let's check. All right, so system info, we are on 4.88 and we have, oh, we have a 500 gig hard drive. Let's go, nice, dude. And what do you know, guys? Here we are again, game works. So we got, what is this, console number four or five that works perfectly fine. Well, let's go ahead and put this to the side and move on to the next one. All right, next up, we're gonna do another Wii here. This one looks like just about every other Wii, very scratched up, plates missing on the top, but it is GameCube compatible Wii and there is no SD card. Um, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. Oh, and something else I just noticed here. It says, I guess it's somebody's last name, Correa. That's kind of funny. All right, we're plugged in here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Three, two, one, got green light, no free game. That sucks, but let's go ahead and see if it boots up. Boom, there we are. Now this Wii looks, like it might actually be factory reset because there's not much on here. We got the standard Mii channel, photo channel, um, and of course there was no SD card in here. But let's go ahead and see if there's anything on the Mii channel. Oh, we got a lot of Wii's here. Let's go. I don't know about you guys, but I had so many random Wii's of mine that I would just like download from the Check Me Out channel. Like I had like, I don't know, Elmo, Batman, just like any ridiculous thing you could think of I had on my, my Mii channel, but so far no dice here. And we have some save data, but it looks like this person only played Guitar Hero World Tour, which I actually had that game, uh, Fishing Frenzy, Cruising, Madden 08, and Wii Sports. So wow, what a what a library there. So not much. Let's go ahead and put a game in. We'll try out Wii Sports again. Ooh, ooh. 
Yeah, that was not good. It sound that sounded rough. That sucks. Uh, let's go ahead and do, <laughs> we'll do our classic here, where we go to go to the calendar and see if we can find when this console was last played. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Here we go. November 2009 on the 21st. Yes, let's go. Got some got some Wii Sports here. Debuted on uh, August 2007. What was this? November 2009 was the last time this was played. So 14 years. But yeah, this console does not quite work. Uh, it works except for the fact that disk drive does not work. Now, Wii's are pretty easy to mod, so do you need a disk drive? Probably, but. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this off and we'll move on to the next Wii. Just by the way, we're gonna leave this Wii for next week when I get a new laser. I ordered one on eBay. Should come in next week sometime. Uh, so we'll just save all the profit and loss for next week on this console. All right, so Wii number four. Again, this one's actually probably the dirtiest one, uh, but not quite as scratched up. And surprisingly, still has the uh, the two flaps on top. Now, does it have an SD card? Oh, it does, let's go. Hey, and this SD card is really dirty 64 megabytes <laughs> dude it must have been a long time since this sd card was bought i don't even remember seeing sd cards that small yeah other than that it looks like a pretty normal wii let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works so i have higher hopes for this one usually if there's an sd card left in it it means it probably wasn't reset and they might have left a game inside so let's go ahead and see if it turns on so three two one. Oh, i think it's a game inside all right we'll, we'll start by just uh booting it up and then we'll try to eject the game i guess i'll find out what game is here right now we got zelda skyward sword no Oh, wait, holy crap, we just hit the jackpot. We have Skyward Sword, we have F-Zero X, Sonic Spinball, Sim City, Excite Bike, Castlevania, Street Fighter 2, Turbo, Golden Axe. All right, let's just start by seeing if this game works here. Oh, oh, that's not good. Stop, please, stop. Man, the disc looks fine, but that, wow, that sounded awful. Let me put in a, let me put in a less valuable game. I'm actually not even sure how much Skyward Sword is worth, but let me, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me look this up real quick. All right, so Skyward Sword is like 17 bucks. Still pretty good for a free game. Now, yeah, that, that sounds great, right? Uh, I mean, it's reading the game, which is odd. Let's see if it actually boots up though. What in the world? Like it's actually reading reading the game. Even the motor, when it pulls it in, sounds awful. I'll have to open this thing up and look at the insides. Oh, no, no, stay out, get out, get out. The device inserted in the SD card slot cannot be used. So <laughs> we have an SD card, card in here and it's not even doing anything. I bet with all these games downloaded, this person's gotta have some interesting Miis on here. Well, let's find out. Nothing too, oh, there we go, we got an alien. Yes, nice. And yeah, checking out the uh, the memory, we got a ton of games saved here. So much more than any other thing I've booted up so far. And of course, last but not least, we're gonna check when this thing was last played. Oh, 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 December 2013. Uh, nope, just a Wii, Wii U chance for a thing. But Mario Kart Wii was played. This console is awesome. We got so many games downloaded. Um, of course, we'll have to open this up and <laughs> see if we can figure out what's going on with the disk drive because it sounds really bad. It does read games, but it sounds awful. So for just a second here, let's ignore the fact that it's grinding while playing a game. Um, the other issue we had was the fact that when you turn it on and also when you load a disk and unload a disk, it, it grinds. And I figured out it was an issue with the gears, but let me just show you the, uh, remind you of the noise. So yeah, so not a great noise. Uh, we want to fix that, but what I found out, let me, let me just zoom in and show you what I found out. On the right side of the disk drive, you take off the little uh, the metal piece on top. You have a few gears right here. Down there, you can see some gears. Up there, you can see some gears. Now those, uh, one one or multiple of those are, are worn down or broken. It's, it's hard to tell because they're so small, but they're definitely worn down and that's what's causing the noise. And you basically can't fix that unless you were to actually repa replace the gears. Um, and the fact is I wanted to get this done in this video. So what I did was I ordered a uh, brand new Wii disk drive on Amazon. So the Wii disk drive is actually pretty simple to replace. You just have to, once you get the screws out, you have to take off a ribbon cable on the bottom and also a little wire harness. Once you take get, get those off, we just have to pull out the uh, the new drive here. All right, now it's back in place. I'm not gonna put the screws back together yet. We're just gonna plug it in and uh, see if it works. All right, got it all plugged in. Let's go ahead and see if we can turn it on. Three, two, one. And that sounds like a normal disk drive. Nice, all right, that's a good start. Let's go ahead and put a disk in. Perfect, all right, cool. And there it is. Indeed, it is reading the Skyward Sword game, so nice, got this one fixed. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, so 360 Slim, and this one kind of looks like about the rest of them. Uh, kind of beat up, got some dust and dirt, but not awful, like not destroyed or anything. Now looking at the back, it does still have the warranty seal intact, as you can see, manufactured in 2011, so a little bit newer. It is, is the matte console. Uh, I don't think it has a hard drive in it. Let's go ahead and check. Yeah, no hard drive, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and turn this on and uh, see if it works. All right, we're all plugged in. Three, two, one. We got life, disk drive. Hey, the disk drive opens on the first try. We've tried four 360s today, and this is the first one where the disk drive actually opened on the first try. <laughs> Dude, brisket boy. That's awesome. That's like me, I love brisket. The Texas load. We got a brisket boy, and this, this dude straight up looks like a, he looks like a brisket boy. What does he play? Let's, let's check it out. 
Disney Infinity 2.0, Disneyland Adventures. Dude, this guy just straight up played Disney games. Pretty big mix of games here. <laughs> we got big bumping, let's go. That's funny, let's go ahead and see if this thing uh, can play a game though. And no surprise here, game is booting up and working. This, this console actually is pretty nice. It's not quite as dirty as the other ones have been. And of course, this is the last console here. We'll get it opened up, cleaned out, thermal paste replaced, and this will be a really nice pickup for somebody to, to, to buy, so check it out down below. So we have plenty of profit for the uh, Halo Edition Xbox, but I found a cooler uh, Resident Evil brand new sealed console for about 700 plus uh, shipping. Now what I'm gonna do is save my profit from this one and hopefully take the profit from next week, combine those together and buy this cool brand new console. So uh, unfortunately I'm not buying one today, but next week guys, let's get that Resident Evil console. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next week. I bought 120 untested video game consoles from Goodwill, but they messed up. I was supposed to get some Wii U consoles on the pallet that I bought, but I didn't. So they sent me this mystery box right here. And in this video, we're gonna go through this mystery box. We're also gonna go through probably five or six other consoles and test and fix them and see if we can turn a profit. So guys, welcome to the Texas load. We'll get to the mystery box in a minute, but I wanna start with this 360 just cause I feel like it. And as per usual, we have Wii's, 360's, PS3's to test today. And it looks like this console is from 2009 and it's definitely in Jasper, so that's awesome. And we got a 120 gigabyte hard drive, as you can see there. So let's go ahead and uh, plug this bad boy in and see if it works. So I have the console plugged in. And by the way, I have a little side quest today. I'm gonna take the profit from this video and last video and see if I can turn that into this brand new sealed Xbox 360 on the screen. But let's go ahead and turn this console on and see if it works. So life. This drive sounded a little bit odd. Let's see if it opens up. That's awesome. <laughs> we got Halo 3 in here. <laughs> the number of people that <laughs> leave games in their consoles is astounding. Fortunately, it looks like this disc has a little crack in the center. Hard to see, but there is a crack there and a crack there. I mean, let's see if it, let's see if it reads up though. And we got Lotus Echoes. Okay. Ooh, okay. Yeah, this game is not reading. My guess is that it's just a, yeah, there's Lotus Echoes. My guess is that it's just a bad game. Let me get a, a different game and try it, because this one is cracked. All right, so let's try Modern Warfare 2. Let's see if that works. Nice. Yes, it's loading up. All right, so it's just a bad game disc. That's, and then that's, that's so frustrating to find a free game, but it ends up being bad. Like it doesn't, uh, okay, yeah, it looks pretty bad. There's the cracks and just other stuff on there. That's rough. Let's go back to the main menu though, because we can see that the game is working which is awesome to see. I mean, this console right, right, right off the bat is pretty much working. I got Lotus Echoes here with 3,800 gamer score. So last, oh, last played in 2017. That's actually fairly recent compared to most 360s that come across or like people playing in 2012, 2013, 2010. So 2017, six years ago is not too bad. And the weird thing here is Halo 3 shows his last played in 2015, but it's the game we just found in our disk drive. So you would think this is the last game played. So that's, I don't know, very weird, doesn't really matter. But let's go ahead and see how much, make sure we got 120 gigs here. Oh, we got a bunch of games. We, we, do, we definitely have 120, but we got a bunch of games downloaded. So let me see if there's anything interesting on here. So we definitely do have a bunch of games downloaded here. Uh, we got TMNT 1989 Classic Arcade. Let's try to boot that up. And of course, back in the 360 days, you didn't have to connect to the internet to verify you own the game. It's just on your console and here it is, boot it up. Now we do have some more profiles here. We got Extra Chrome, Hogwild, Lauren, Caps Lock Broken. <laughs> That's hilarious. And here we are booting up Grip Shift. Now I wonder, I can't remember, on the 360, can you still play these games without these profiles on here? Because if so, I could sell this console with all the games still on here. Uh, we're figuring things out now. So to test my theory, I'm gonna delete all these profiles and see if I can still play the games. Bye bye Extra Chrome. It always, it always feels so sad deleting these profiles that had years of hard work on their Xbox and it's just gone in a flash. All right, so no profiles left. So basically all the personal data is gone, except maybe the network connection or whatever. Let's go ahead and see if these games work still. Hey, it does. That's awesome. I didn't, why did I not think about that before? So I'll be able to, you know, fully clean out this console, replace thermal paste and everything and sell it uh, with all these games on it. So whoever buys this will get a big stack of games to start with uh, and a 120 gigabyte hard drive. So nice. It's always good to start out with a working console. The box is only 12 pounds. So I'm guessing there's only three Wii U consoles in here, but let's, let's find out. All right, here is uh, I guess one Wii U console. I mean, you can't fault them. They, they wrapped it up pretty well. And here's a second one. And here is a third one. All right, yes, yeah, so that's all that's in there. No game pads, no nothing. Just <laughs> straight up Wii U consoles. I, I guess that's kind of cool, but uh, would've been nice to get some game pads. So I have the Wii U's unwrapped and they did bubble wrap them very well. Now, taking a look at the first console, of course, very beat up, not really surprising for a Wii U. These things just attract scratches and scuffs. Now, no SD card. Looks like a pretty normal Wii, Wii U, to be honest, with all, all the scratches and scuffs. And yeah, console number two, same deal. Very scratched up, scuffed up. Uh, typical Wii U kind of status there. Now, third Wii U here, same deal. We got <laughs> tons of scratches, scuffs all over it. 
and uh, again, ports look good. And just by the way, no SD card on the second or third consoles either. But let's just go ahead and go through and test these one by one and see if they work. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. I have my own gamepad hooked up, my own power supply, all the good stuff. Let's go ahead and see if it boots up. Got a blue light. Do we have any free games? Nope, no free games. Nice, so we do have life. I need to sync up this gamepad though. It takes four minutes to set up the language on the Wii U gamepad. Why? <laughs> all right, dude, finally up on the main menu. I forgot how long it takes to set up a Wii U. Uh, let's go ahead and see if a game works. So we got Lego City Undercover here, just a random game. All right, so the game showed up, but I also noticed we have Nintendo Land over here. Is that already installed, pre-installed? I guess so. I did not realize this game had pre-installed on some consoles. Like, I knew it came with some consoles, but I thought it was a disc, but maybe I'm wrong there. Yeah, so indeed, Nintendo Land was on this console. We had to re-download it, but it was already, you know, assigned to this console. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw our profit on the screen for this console. Uh, it is a basically pure profit because I did not assign any cost to this Wii U because I didn't get it in the original lot. So it's pure profit, but it's not worth a whole lot, but it'll be listed down below on my website. All right, so on console number two, let's go ahead and turn it on. We got life, no disc. So this Wii U is a little bit weird. It, it booted up fine. It's a factory reset, just like the other one. But I've been trying to connect to the internet for like 15 minutes now, and I keep getting this same um, error. Connection test failed to come here, and I get an error code that says 103-2002, 2003, 2004, something like that. Like it tells me it connects to the router, but it doesn't connect to the internet, which doesn't make sense to me considering I just connected to the internet just fine on the previous console. So. I'm gonna ignore this for now and uh, assume it's probably a bad Wi-Fi card in the uh, Wii U itself, uh, but we'll get into that later. Now, of course, booted up here to the main menu, you'll notice we don't have uh, Nintendo Land downloaded, so that was a little nice little bonus in the first console. Let's go ahead and put in Lego City Undercover and see if the game works. The uh, good news is the game is working and booting up, and you, <laughs> you can see this guy creeping across the screen. <laughs> I've been watching this home screen on this game for like five minutes, and it's just like clowns. I don't know what's going on, but the game is working. Now, the bad news is the update did not fix our Wi-Fi issues. All right, guys, so we're gonna go step by step and try to troubleshoot the Wi-Fi issue here and see if we can get it working. Let me just go ahead and show you that it's still not working normally. So sure enough, our connection test failed. Now, my first step is gonna be moving this console like right next to my Wi-Fi router and see if that fixes the issue. So I tried it right next to my Wi-Fi router and it did not work any better, same exact situation. Now, uh, what my next step would be is taking one of those USB to ethernet adapters and trying to plug in ethernet here and seeing if that would work, but Unfortunately, I do not have one of those. So what I'm gonna do next is kind of the uh, the hard step, which is I'm gonna tear down both console one and two and swap the network card from console one into console two and see if that fixes our issue. All right, I have console number two, which is the one with the bad Wi-Fi chip uh, torn down. And guys, this is gonna be my first and last time taking apart a Wii U because holy crap, it was just like, the in intricacies were so annoying. Honestly, the worst part is the fact that you have so many uh, chips here with wires like straddling across multiple parts on the board. And it was just a uh, It was not fun. So we have two chips up here one of these I don't remember which one of them is for connecting to Bluetooth devices like the uh, like Wii remotes um, That sort of thing. The other one is for connect connecting directly to the gamepad um, Since almost obviously those two interact with each other this one down here is for the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi So I need to replace this and I already took it off It's pretty simple to pull off you can see it's got one little connection right there And of course we have our wires that go up to the antennas I, j I found it on eBay for like 10 bucks plus four bucks in shipping So I'm gonna order one of those and replace it uh, like I said earlier I was going to tear down console number one and swap them But after taking this one apart I do not want to take apart another Wii U to be honest and the real issue is that there's actually multiple different Wi-Fi chips they could be inside the Wii U and I don't know if they're interchangeable, so I need to order the exact same one. So I'm gonna order on eBay and push this repair to the next video. Uh, so you'll see this next week when we, when we saw about the Wi-Fi chip and hopefully that fixes the issue. So on to console number three, let's go ahead and turn it on. And we got a blue light, no free, oh wait, wait, oh yeah, no free game. So I have the gamepad hooked up to console number three here and it also is factory reset. So we have three consoles in a row that are factory reset and also three consoles in a row that have no free game. And in my experience of Goodwill, it's very unlikely to happen unless they tested the console. So my guess is they actually tested these three consoles and at least factory reset them. They didn't do like a full test obviously, but um, it is good to see that they tested them. So after another painful 15 minutes of setting up this Wii U console, we are on the home screen now. Everything is working so far, the internet does work. So it's just the second console that had the internet issue. Uh, let's go ahead and put a game in. And also you'll, you'll notice by the way, there is no free Nintendo Land, so again, we got lucky on that first console. Put a game in here, and we'll make sure it boots up. Now, as you can see, the game is booting up with no problem at all. So this console is working A-OK. -okay. Now, I haven't tested every minute detail here, which we will do off camera. I just don't do everything on, on camera, but everything, all these consoles will be listed down below for sale on my website. Uh, let's go check them out. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console now. All right, so next up, I put out a 360 to test here, and this one is, I mean, about like all the other ones, pretty beat up and mutilated. Uh, we are missing a, actually, we're not missing a door there. It's just the flap is kind of broken. 
Um, again, on the bottom, uh, pretty, pretty beat up. Now here on the back, you can see that we do have a Jasper console. You can tell by the power port here, and it's also manufactured in 2009. And it also doesn't look like it's been opened. We don't see any like marks in the holes there. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, it's gonna turn it on, three, two, one. We got life. Now, what are the chances the disk drive is stuck here? Let's go ahead and try it out. Let's go. <laughs> So we got, we got Call of Duty Black Ops 2, and then we got Brian00847 logged in. We got Call of Duty 4 background. Let me go ahead and sync up my controller. Oh, this is, this is a nice start here, guys. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, no. It sounded weird reading up. We'll, we'll ignore that fact for a second here. And we do have a user already logged in. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 is worth like 10 bucks or so. <laughs> wait a second. What it do? <laughs> the bio is blah, blah, cake, blah. This is the most 360 like comma and bio I've ever seen. Maybe other than the brisket boy from last week, that was that was like the best. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if we have any games downloaded here. No, nothing. And we should have like either 256 of memory or 512. Yes, the memory unit says 136 free. We click on it, 451. So yeah, 512 uh, megabytes of storage here. <laughs> Dude, I love getting a free games. So let's go ahead and see if this game is scratched up or anything. And actually it's not, it looks like, it looks pristine. And I mean, the disk drive opens up without an issue that is that's surprising let's go ahead and see if the game works though oh there we go all right so that time it did not read it read up the first time i put it in but it made weird noises second time second time it did not read and it still made weird noises third time we're gonna try skate three here okay that sounds a lot more normal all right well the good news is i think it's i think it's a game issue but that's like like i said really strange because the game looks perfect it's been a minute since i did this uh tutorial on skate three skate three one of my favorite games of all time honestly it's just a it's just such a fun game because it was like a little bit competitive and like it had some difficulty to it but it was also a chill game so it was fun to play whenever you're just bored <laughs> all right well that game was working uh, let's go ahead and sign out i want to see if there's any pro other profiles here we there are we got ac cassie <laughs> all right we, we, we gotta do it <laughs> all right let's go let's go home and see see what this guy's bio says oh lame no bio i guess because it's not connected to xbox labs no bio but let's go back to the uh the main guy here and see if he has any other interesting save data all right so skate three which i just played Black Ops 2, Madden NFL 10. All right, yeah, so Black Ops 2, that is the game we found in the disk drive. Last played in 2013, so almost a decade on the dot. That is, it's always crazy to me when I boot these up and see how old these, uh, these consoles, or how long ago it's been these, since these consoles have been played. We got NCAA Football 10, Street Fighter, a little mix of games, mostly like fighting and shooting games, um, and just a little bit of football as well. And uh, yeah, so this console is pretty much good to go. Of course, we'll open this thing all the way up. We're gonna do a full cleaning inside the disk drive, inside of everything here, replace thermal paste, um, get the nice, you know, get the outside looking as nice as possible, It'll be listed down below, and uh, yeah, go check it out, because the console sold really fast last week. All right, onto the next console, and I'm in the 360 mode right here, so let's go with the 360 Slim this time. This is a matte one, and honestly, it doesn't look too bad for being in that giant 900 pound lot. I mean, it's got some scratches here and there, but nothing compared to those Slims that get scratched up like crazy. Looking on the back, it is from 2011. Of course, it's a Mac console, so it has, has four gigs built in. Um, we do have the warranty still, seal still intact, which is obviously good to see. Any hard drive? Nope, no hard drive. And then, uh, yeah, front looks pretty good as well. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. And yes, I was too lazy to go grab a slim power supply, so I'm using my slim adapter to plug into the Jasper power supply. I've used them in the past and they work fine. But let's go ahead and see if this turns on. We got life, now disk drive. I'm gonna guess the disk drive does work here. Hey, no free game, but it honestly doesn't look too dirty in there. Wow. All right, here we are, and we do have a profile. We got the, uh, let me go ahead and sync this up first. So we got ba Bass 3, it's using a 3 as an E, ba Bastra. Ba I'm gonna call it Bastra. Why not? Let's go ahead and check out these achievements, see when it was last played. So last played in 2014, Skyrim. Unfortunately, they did not leave Skyrim in the in the disk slot here. And coming over here to the storage, you got four gigs, of course. And uh, let's see if, any, see if we have any uh, games downloaded here. Hexic HD, and I think that's one that comes pre-downloaded sometimes. Um, let's go ahead and put this Skate 3 in, make sure it reads the game. And we are booted up into Skate 3 here. I'm not gonna actually play the game this time since we see it's working. So there we go, guys, two Xboxes in a row that work perfectly. Of course, this one will also be opened up, fully cleaned, uh, inside and out, thermal paste replaced, all that good stuff. So check it out down below if you wanna buy it. So next up, I wanna do a PS3, because this one is, is pretty sus. Like if you look at the, uh, the top here, it's got a giant X on the left side. And it says BD down here, so presumably the Blu-ray drive is broken, maybe? Now this console is pretty scratched up, of course, with all the, uh, the glossy sides. And uh, overall, though, it doesn't look too terrible. And it looks like the warranty seal is partially peeled up, but it does not look like it's been opened before. So 
That's a good sign. But let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. I've got it plugged in and I do have a red light over here, which is a good sign. Now, I always do a countdown from three, but let's do a countdown from 10. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 2, 1. It sounded a little bit strange, but then I remembered that's just how PS3 Sim Slim, Super Slim sound like. Uh, we'll see if it boots up. All right, so we booted up here, and the good thing is we are not factory reset, so we might have some interesting data on here. Maybe, I don't see anything yet. And uh, of course, we saw no free game. But let's go ahead and check out how much storage we have here. All right, so system info, 4.87, and we got 500 gigs. Nice. Now, of course, the real test here is, well, first of all, let's check out the memory card utility, see if we have any, anything any game data. Modern Warfare 2, that's that's it. Wow, okay. That's convenient because I'm about to put in Modern Warfare 2 to test. Okay, let's see if this see if this works. <laughs> okay. Why would they put an X and say BD here if the Blu-ray drive works fine? I'll count my blessings. Let's, let's go ahead and see if it, it boots all the way up. You can see here where we are playing the game. Sure enough, so I'm not sure why that said BD. As I opened the disk drive, I saw like three hairs pop out. All right, guys, so in tragic fashion, I decided to uh, take Modern Fair 2 out and put it back in and just test it one more time. And of course, when I did that, it's now not reading. So I guess we just got lucky on the first try. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but we have some more games here to try out and make sure it's not just, just this game. Okay, so it like seems to randomly work because I tried FIFA 14 and it didn't work, and then took it out put it back in and it did work. So it seems to just be kind of at random when it works. Also, just by the way, you can play PlayStation 1 games on PS3 Super Slims and actually all PS3s, but I just tried that out. It works without an issue. I've been messing with this PS3 for like 20 minutes now and very strange behavior. Uh, I haven't got it to not read a game in 20 minutes. I've tried three games, Winter Storm, Modern Warfare 2, and FIFA 14 like six times each. Read fine every single time. Uh, very strange, maybe when it wasn't reading, I didn't have it latched all the way or maybe I just got unlucky. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna tear down everything and go ahead and do the full cleaning and, and, and stuff here. We'll clean up the disk drive and, and you know clean the laser and all that good stuff and see if that'll like permanently fix it. So I have this PS3 Super Sim part and it is indeed very dirty, dusty. I already killed a spider that crawled out of it, but I mean, you can just see here, there's like tons of filth hair and just dirt and dust and here in the power supply, tons of dirt and dust. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything out and uh, replace thermal paste and all that stuff and clean out the disk drive here. And then I'll come back once I'm ready to uh, clean the laser. So we have all the pieces cleaned up, blown out. Uh, we gotta put everything back together. And I'm gonna show you a few things. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the thermal paste replacement. So you can see these chips are already cleaned off. We gotta put some thermal paste here and on that little tiny RSX right there. And there should be plenty of thermal paste. Actually might be even a little too much. It'll squeeze out, but it doesn't really matter too much. And then the RSX will put just a little tiny dot there. But next we're gonna take the disk drive which has already been cleaned up. Uh, but I'm gonna show you just uh, how we clean the laser. And then also if you flip this thing open, we can also re-grease the rails. So first thing we're gonna do here is clean off the rails. So we have one rail there, one rail there, and we have like the motor rail back there. So we're just gonna clean those off with a Q-tip and get, get the uh, old stuff off. We already, already did this once. Um, so it's not gonna be much dirty stuff that comes off, but I'll show you anyway. And if you move the laser around, you can get all of the stuff off of this uh, rail back here. All right, so once you get all the dirty stuff off, you're gonna take some uh, lithium grease, which I have right here, white lithium grease. And you're gonna squeeze just like a little bit on the rails and then spread it out with your Q-tip. And then slide the laser over it. You really don't need a ton. So we got those rails greased up and it's running pretty smoothly here. So we should be good to go. You'll know when you plug this in and if it's not working, then obviously you did something wrong there. And then of course we wanna clean the laser here. So get a Q-tip, dip it in some 99% isopropyl alcohol. And you're gonna do like a little tiny circular motion on the laser here. You don't want to push too hard. Um, just circle a few times, then you're gonna flip it around to the dry end and just dry it off. And then you're gonna let it dry for a few minutes and you can test it out. And also just by the way, this drive was just caked with dust, dirt, hair, uh, which would explain the uh, kind of inconsistencies with the drive. So I think cleaning it up will really fix it. So let's put it all back together now and just test it out. I have this console back together enough to test now. So let's turn it back on, eject the disk drive, put a disk in and Hopefully it's uh, working better now. Yeah, Modern Warfare 2 is waiting up. Let me try another game. All right, yeah, so I've tried this like 10 different times and it's working perfectly every time. It loads up in like two seconds. Now, one thing I've learned and what might've been the issue is if you don't push the cover far enough over, it doesn't trigger this little switch right here and it doesn't actually read games. So like you gotta actually push it hard all the way over and it clicks into place and it'll start reading. So yeah, this console is good to go. It'll be linked down below if you wanna buy it. So next up, we're gonna test this Wii here. And this one's interesting because it says GameStop certified pre-owned. It's got all these initials and tested by, components removed, SD card removed. Let's just let's actually check. Yeah, no, ooh, there's a bug in there. <laughs> a little bug in the SD card reader, but there's no SD card and I'm missing a flap, but otherwise it looks like a pretty standard Wii. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, console's plugged in, got a red light. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Do we have any free games? We do not. That sucks. All right, let's go ahead and see if it boots up. 
Here we are, booted up to the main menu and it looks pretty standard. It's It must be fairly up to date because it's got all the, the streaming channels like YouTube, Hulu Plus, Amazon Prime. Those weren't there like when it, we originally came out. So this one's been used, I say fairly recently, but it's still probably like 12, 2013, I don't know. We'll, we'll start by seeing if the game works. This is one of my free games from last week that I, that I found inside of a Wii. I need to go ahead and throw this in my profits and list it for sale. We're gonna go ahead and just test it for now. Oh, oh no. These Wii disk drives are just wild stuff. Always grinding, making weird noises. I've had like three drives now that all make different noises and have different issues. So clearly the game is not actually, it doesn't load all the way up. So I have a feeling there's an issue with the gears. I mean, obviously, because it's not loading the game all the way in, it spits it back out. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see if we can figure out the issue. All right, so the console is torn down. It is pretty dusty, so hopefully that's our issue. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And I'm gonna put a disc in and see if we can figure out, oh. Yeah, you can already tell this part here is shaky and I think it's not pressed down as far as it should be. I don't know, let's just, let's just load this disc in and see what happens. Ooh. Yeah, it appears to just not be latching at all. I don't know, let's break it down some more and that might be an easy fix. Well, we'll find out. All right, guys, I kind of figured out the issue, but the problem is there's multiple issues. First of all, the main issue we saw is it's not pulling discs in. Um, what I figured out is there's a gear right here, which I'll show a photo on the screen, that's basically mutilated and not spinning correctly. And that's the one attached to the uh, the rollers that pull a disc in, so it's not pulling in all the way. Um, but then I found another issue, which like, if I force the disc all the way in, it does accept it, but then once it gets in here, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't spin, doesn't try to read, nothing. I think we have multiple issues here. First of all, that gear has to be replaced. Second of all, either the laser and or motors have to be replaced. So <laughs> my take on this is that it's easier just to, it makes more sense just to swap the drive. Like the cost for all these replacement parts and the time, not worth it just to get a replacement drive that I can get for under 20 bucks. So uh, we're gonna replace this drive, probably not in this video because I gotta wait for one to come in. So I really wanna get a working Wii. So next up, we're gonna do another Wii here and hope it works. This one has a flap that's kind of messed up. We'll mess with that later. Let's see if there's an SD card inside. No, there's not, nope. Looks pretty beat up like a normal Wii, but it is a good sign we have both flaps because usually the more flaps, the better condition. I don't know, let's plug it in and see if it works. All right, I really hope this works. So three, two, one. Okay, it sounds okay. I don't hear a free game though. Yeah, no free games. All right, up to the main screen and it looks like a pretty typical Wii. No games downloaded. But we do have the uh, the classic Wii Shop channel, photo channel, all the, all the normal stuff. Let's go ahead and put a game in, start there and see if this uh, game works, please. Okay, loads it up. I just, I really want a working Wii. What, what you guys did not see in this video is there's another Wii I messed with that's gonna get getting pushed to the video next week because I just like had so many issues with it. And uh, yes, I'm really, I'm really weed out right now. Thank you, let's go. Oh, Quantum Solace is working. All right, let's try out Wind Waker as well. Why did I say Wind Waker? I have Skyward Sword. Man, thank goodness we have a working Wii. <laughs> oh man, that was, that, was, that was a little bit of a rough time there. Let's go ahead and uh, I wanna check out the last time this thing was played. By the way, we do have Texas Load merch. Go ahead and check it out down below if you wanna buy some. It's so strange, another console that I can't find any, any data about when this is last played. That's, that's unfortunate. I guess this console is factory reset because there's no Miis either. Wow, I finally found a Wii that was factory reset. That, is, that does not happen very often. Sorry for the mess here, guys. I'm busy cleaning consoles, but I wanna talk about our side quest for today. And we have some good news, which is we have enough profit from this video and last video to buy the Resident Evil brand new console now. Bad news is it already sold. Uh, but more good news is I found a Blades dashboard Xbox 360 that was brand new for under 400 bucks, so I already bought that. So that means we have more profit left over from this video and profit from last video to spend on more 360 stuff. So let me know down below what I should buy next. And uh, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. I bought over 40 untested Xbox 360 consoles from Goodwill, and in this video, we're gonna go through about eight or 10 of them, test and fix them, and see if we can turn a profit. So guys, welcome to the Texas Load. We're gonna start out with this white 360 console that has a hard drive attached, and I think this one will be pretty interesting because on the bottom it says refurbished. I've never seen that kind of refurbished sticker before. And then on the back it says it has a service date of 2009, and it also, it appears to be a Zephyr console. So it's, it's pretty old. Let's go ahead and uh, plug it in and see if it works. And by the way, my profit goal for today is $500 because there's a cool limited edition 360 that I wanna buy on eBay. But let's go ahead and turn this console on and see if it works. So three, two, one. I'm free. I won't be surprised if it red rings. Oh, disk drive sounds off. Let's go ahead and see if the disk drive opens. It does not. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> another another console, another free game. We got Skyrim. I, like, I can't tell you how many times I open up a 360 and there's a free game. And <laughs> what is this? Dude is wearing a, what? what, what, what? He's wearing a, like a, a dog. Oh no, this thing sounds so bad. But uh, what is going on here? I'm just trying to like do 10 different things and it's just, has a mind of its own. It's booting up now. 
surprisingly, I, I actually can't believe this is booting up with the, the disk drive noises this thing is ma making. But like I said, it is a Zephyr console, so it's one of the older ones, like kind of in line with the Xenon, so not very reliable. Honestly, pretty surprised it did not red ring when he booted it up. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out this guy's profile. And wait, wait a second. Did I just see a bug crawl out? I don't know if that got caught on camera, but there was something, I saw something black scurry along there. I don't know if it was, it might've been dust. It was probably dust out of the fan, but this, uh, the console's already going crazy. Classic Zephyr and Xenon. And yeah, sure enough, the last game I played is Skyrim. Not sure what the date was because all these games are, are played offline, but he's got a ton of games on here. And holy crap, we have 10 profiles on this console. Let's check them out. We got Binnick, I Am The Riot, Linus, Player One, Player Two, <laughs> Sonic, Wingnut, 1419. Oh, there it is. All right, so now it says disc is unreadable. Not surprised. Now the uh, the disc itself, this looks weird. Let's try another game. Yeah, so the console is reading games. It must've just been that disc. All right, guys, so this console is working. It'll be for sale down below on my website. Of course, I could open this up and clean and refurbish it, but honestly, I just don't think it's worth it for these consoles that are this old. Uh, so I'll get it down below for a pretty nice price. Let's go ahead and move on to console number two. All right, console number two is a matte black Xbox 360 Slim. Let's go ahead and see if we have a hard drive in here. Uh, nope, nothing there, but it does have four gigs internal, at least it should. If we flip over to the back, it looks like it still has the warranty seal intact, which is good to see, and manufactured in 2011. And overall, this thing is honestly not too terribly being dinged up or anything, so let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. I have high hopes for this console. Just, just from the outside looking in, it looks like a console that's gonna work perfectly. So let's hope it does. We got a green light there. This drive is... <laughs> Nice, Borderlands 2, and the game, ooh, the game looks pretty beat up, like it's scratched up in tons of fingerprints. Let's hope it works, but another free game, that means we're gonna have a profile on here. Never mind, it, it almost looks like this console was, res this console does look reset, or at least there's no profile, so somebody deleted the profiles, but left the game inside, like, <laughs> how does that happen, and the game is working. I don't, <laughs> this like by far looked the worst of all the games that I've gotten for free in consoles in the series so far, but it is the one that works, I mean, I'll, I'll take it. Let's go back down to the uh, the main menu, see if there's any games downloaded or anything, because it is, like I said, it is pretty strange that there's no profiles on here, no games either. I wonder if there's even any, any save data or anything. Just not... Wait, hold on. So my assumption here is that maybe this came with like a, let's say a 250 gig hard drive and it had nothing internal. I, whatever, it doesn't matter. Of course, we'll open this console up, clean it out, replace thermal paste, grease up the rails inside the disk drive, clean the disk drive laser, all that good stuff, and it'll be listed down for sale down below for be listed on my website down below for sale. So next up is a black 360 Elite. And the one thing to note here is it's missing the uh, front disk drive cover, which doesn't really matter, but uh, just need to note. And it also has a 120 gigabyte hard drive and it's really beat up with some like white stuff, which I've seen in a lot of these consoles. I'm not quite sure why. And looking at the back, it does appear to be a Jasper from looking at the power port manufactured in 2010. Always a great sign. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, three, two, one, we got life. Oh, it's flashing. And the funny thing here is I can't, even, I can't even get it to stay closed. It just wants to open all the time, whatever. <laughs> we have Plumber here on the screen with no B, just a two M's. I guess I'm just gonna play with this disk drive open. Uh, we got a background of a skull. I don't know, that's probably in reference to something. We got this guy dressed up nicely. Doesn't have much of a gamer score though. And no, eh, nothing, nothing much here to write home about. We got Goat Simulator, Doritos Crash Course, and Diablo 3. What a, what a game profile there, what a game library. For some reason, the games are not loading up, but I want to show you what I did with the disk drive. Uh, it's basically, it has no mercy. It just wants to open all the time. And if I, I can hold it closed and eventually it'll just stop trying to open. But this light here constantly flashes, which is a pretty common thing in the 360. I used to see this all the time when I used to repair 360s. But let's go to the storage space, I guess, since it doesn't want to uh, show anything on the games. Wait, hold up, hold up. Initial setup is grayed out. That means we have, oh no, we have family settings turned on, don't we? No. All right, time for some magic here. Let's see if we can guess the passcode. It was right trigger four times. So simple. Let's turn it off. I can't see any data about storage space at all. Like it won't load. Uh, let me turn this off and plug the hard drive back in and we'll try it again. Okay, there it is. So I unplugged it and kind of blew it out a little bit and then plugged it back in and now it's showing up. Uh, so it seemed to be that was the issue. Now while scrolling through there, I did notice there are a few other profiles on here. So let me check those out. This is another one of these 360s that like I just, my, what I'm envisioning is this like sitting in a dorm room. There's just a bunch of uh, dudes sitting around in a, in a suite uh, college suite playing video games each have their own profile we got eye of horus i'm not even gonna try to pronounce that i do stuff like a boss <laughs> got i go ham <laughs> mz3 pilot noah's ark <laughs> extreme snipe 68 <laughs> i guess 69 was taken there's actually a lot of xbox live profiles on here so this thing looks like it was going through the ringer at some point so let me go ahead and try out some of these profiles like a boss dude <laughs> i'm like 95 percent sure 
that was what I had my like bio as as well on the 360. I don't know why. Scream, aim, and fire. <laughs> Matt, Matt, leader of the YFAL clan. Probably, a, I guess, a clan on a on one of the Call of Duty games. Uh, let's see if I can find this as last played. 2012, wow. So crazy to look at the last played dates and it's always like a decade plus ago. But it looks like this console, like I said, was heavily used. And every single every single uh, profile here, every single avatar has gloves on. I don't know why, but just something to note. So here we go, this one has the highest gamer store of all the ones I've seen. We got Extreme Snipe 68 and, oh, okay. Yeah, that's the, uh, okay, uh, yeah. But you can see on this profile, it was last played in 2016. So that's actually a little bit more recent than most uh, consoles I see. Uh, but anyways, this console is pretty interesting. This is like a jackpot of a 360 because it's just like the epitome of a 360 to me where you got all these Xbox Live profiles on here with ridiculous like bios and stuff and um, honestly I'll probably do an entire video on my second channel uh, just kind of perusing this this console and looking through everything on here because it's just it's just I just find it interesting to kind of see the history here let's go ahead and attempt to fix this 360 first of all I'll just mention that this console is very dirty I already blew it out some but uh the funny thing is still not as dirty as the desert ps3 it looks like a desert <laughs> And man, it's just amazing how many of these Goodwill consoles that have been sitting in a warehouse for who knows how long are actually cleaner than the uh, the DK oldies or Furbish consoles. All right, so down here to the drive, uh, it looks like somebody chewed up the top piece here, almost like they probably didn't chew it up, but they probably took a screwdriver and were like trying to pry it out maybe. And it created all of these, these marks here. All right, so definitely very dusty in here. We need to clean it out and re-lube some of this stuff and replace the band. All right, so I went ahead and blew out everything here, cleaned it up with a Q-tip. I also uh, cleaned off these rails, these three rails here, uh, added some more lithium grease to those, added some more grease to a couple of gears here, and also there's a little, some little pieces down there that need some, some grease. We're also gonna clean off the laser now, so let me just show you that. It's pretty basic, you can take a Q-tip, put some ice purple alcohol on it, go to your laser, and just circle it very lightly to clean it off any dust and debris, then switch it around to the dry end. Do the same thing. Last thing we need to do is add a new rubber band or belt to these little gears right here. It's basically the glue that holds everything together. So let's go ahead and do that. I've had quite the time with this 360, but let me just start by saying it's much better than it was. As you can see, the disk drive is actually closed now. It doesn't just stay open like before, and it does eject and close uh, just fine now. Now the minor issue I'm having now is sometimes when I eject it with a game inside, it doesn't actually come all the way out, and then you'll see the green light here flashing, and the, uh, the disk will actually go back in by itself. Now it's only sometimes because as you can see right now it's staying open and I can you know swap out a disc just fine no problem it works like a normal 360 but it's still it's a little bit annoying because it does happen sometimes and you have to actually pull the disc drive out manually like a little tiny bit and it's very strange like it basically started when I put in a new band and it would come out really slowly and actually would not come all the way out and it would go back in uh, so then I swapped it out with another like lightly used band that was already stretched out a little bit and it made it work better but still not perfect and it almost seems like once the console warms up it actually has no problems at all. So very strange behavior. I've explored a lot of things here and I even made a community post yesterday and I'm, I'm not gonna go into all that because it would just like make this video really extended. But basically this console is mostly working. Um, it's just every once in a while it won't open quite all the way and I haven't figured out how to fix that. But let me know in the comments if you've ever seen this issue. Uh, and let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up we have another 360 Slim and this one is beat up like crazy. Just so many scratches and scuffs on the top bottom all over actually the bottom's not oh no the bottom's still bad let's see if we have a hard drive inside and no we don't it's not it doesn't even have a hard drive cover and yeah looking at the back it almost looks like the warranty sticker was peeled up at some point in time and then put back on so this console may have been opened at some point in time um let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works now of course as per usual i have my my ghetto slim adapter here just because that's what i like to use let's turn it on this drive <laughs> dude another one fable 2 and this game looks pretty clean dude how many free games we gonna have today i've had Three free games so far today. Before I can even do anything, the game is reading up. But what is, whoa, what is going on here? We got <laughs> our aspect ratio is completely screwed up. Let's go ahead and change that. All right, that's better. And yep, no storage here. That's unfortunate. Any, I guess we can't even have any profiles then. And of course, we'll open this up, clean it out, uh, get all, do all the, the works to it. And uh, yeah, another working console. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. We're gonna do another glossy slim next, just because why not? And this one is almost as beat up as the last one. Bottom and top are just scratched to death. And then here on the back, oh, actually, this is not a good sign. We do have the warranty seal missing there. So it's been opened up at some point and uh, hard drive. Oh, we have a hard drive. Hey, it's been quite a while since I found out some of the hard drive in this lot. 250 gigs, that's awesome. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. All right, three, two, one, green light, disk drive. Open without a problem, the console is bidding up. I see the splash screen, zonated Osprey 5. Okay, only three profiles, we got AV plays, DP and Zonated Osprey 5, okay. Uh, nothing too special here, let's see. Make sure we have 250 gigs here. We do indeed. 
not, it looks like this console is not played very much because there's only one demo, <laughs> Rabbids Invasion demo, and the game's in that. Kingdom for Keflings, nice. Yeah, just some demos and stuff. Again, not much. I mean, let's go ahead and put a game in and see if it works. So we're gonna try, we're, we're gonna try out one of our, uh, what was it? Which one didn't work? Oh, Skyrim had an issue. Let's go ahead and try out Skyrim. So strangely enough, Skyrim is working on this console. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna try out one more game though, just to confirm. Well, I accidentally pressed campaign, but Modern Warfare 2 is waiting up as well. So I think this console is good to go. And again, uh, unfortunately there wasn't much to explore here because there's only three profiles and they were uh, kind of meh. But again, another, another working console. I'm honestly, I can't believe I've had this many 360s that are working and not red ringed yet. Of course, I'm probably jinxing myself here. Next up, we have another white fat 360. And this one is interesting because it's got a ton of dust on top and it has one of the battery stickers on the top from a controller. We have a 60 gigabyte hard drive. And then flipping over to the back, let's see what kind of motherboard we have. It looks like, yeah, it's a Jasper. Nice. Yeah, November 2008. That's, this is like a OG Jasper, but the power port is definitely a Jasper. And oh, just notice we have a crack down here. Not a big deal if it works, but let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it does. Oh, wait, hold on one more thing. I just noticed it's missing that piece on the spoil on the side. All right, I uh, don't know how I just noticed that, but anyways, anyways, let's plug it in and see if it works. After seeing the side of the console, I'm a little more concerned now that the console might not work. So I'm gonna film this uh, as I turn it on because it might have red ring. I don't know, that's good to go. Disk drive, yeah, it's booting up. Disk drive, <laughs> we got another, let's go, another free game. What is Pride and Prejudice movie, wait. Is this like what the disc actually looked like or is that somebody's writing? Yeah, that looks like a burned, yeah, that's definitely a burned DVD. Enchantment 45 with 145 gamer score. So this almost seems like a console that was, my guess is this console was only used for DVDs and they just played like, I don't know, maybe one game. We got Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Fable 3, and Hexic HD. So not much. Let's check and see how much storage you have. We should have 60 gigs. Yeah, it looks about right. I almost wonder if some of these things are like pre-downloaded here because it seems like I've seen a lot of these I've seen a lot of these videos on like almost every 360. Now we, oh wow, we have a lot of profiles here. Hold on. We got Allison Grace, Bra, Brutalize, Enchantment 45, Fireball, Penguin Farmer, and Sydney. Okay, let's try all these out and see if we find something interesting. Oh, so Brutalize here, he's got the full suit on. 2020 gamer score, Honey, <laughs> honey and Jam. His name is me. Now this one was last played in 2012 on Dance Central. Okay, interesting. All right, Penguin Farmer, don't let me down. We got, hey, he's not letting me down, let's go. 7455 gamer score. What is really, oh, what is really real? That's a good question. Uh, let's check out these achievements right here. 23 games, nice. We got a uh, oh, last played in 2012. You're letting me down, Penguin Farmer. Must have donated his console to somebody else to play. I don't know. Imagine watching these videos and seeing your profile on one of these consoles. <laughs> Cindy's got 15 gamer score. Shut up, Cindy. Not much played there, but let's go ahead and check out a 360 game and make sure make sure that works. Yes, sir. MW2 is working. All right, we got another console. Another day, another console that works. I just can't believe it. Let's go ahead and turn this on or turn this off. Move on to the next one. Next up, we have another Black 360 Elite. And guys, by the way, make sure to check out the Texas Load merch if you want to support the series. This is actually a very comfy shirt. I'm wearing it in every video now because it is so comfy. And uh, yeah, this one is interesting because it's got this sticker on the top. It says North Lamar. Bonilla. So I bought these consoles in Texas. I think North Lamar is in Austin, Texas. So I guess this just came from a local Goodwill. I don't know. Flipping to the back, it's definitely a Jasper. Got the Jasper port. Oh, we got a sticker on the bat on the bottom, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, it's also 2009. So yeah, and it looks like it's been open before though. So I bet it. I bet it has a disk drive issue. We'll see though. And <laughs> here in the bottom, Goodwill was selling this for 40 bucks back in 20, 2019. They were selling a 360 for 40 bucks. I bet it was console only too. And like, and it was probably untested as well. So no wonder. Nobody bought it. I don't even wonder. I, I know they took these consoles from off the shelf and just threw them in the Gaylord and uh, sold it to me. But anyways, let's go ahead and plug it in. See if it works. Okay, it's not turning on. I don't think the faceplate is actually pressing the power button. So let me take this off first. That's, oh yeah, it looks like the uh, power button is, you probably can't see it there, but it looks like it's snapped off. So let me go ahead and stick my finger in there. There it goes. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. This is the sound it makes when the band is gone or the belt, whatever you want to call it. So I'm guessing the belt is, I'm guessing somebody opened it up, took the belt out, broke it, and then had no idea what they were doing. And uh, this is where we're at now. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just boot up without the disk drive. There's no profiles, but we should have some storage here because I'm pretty sure all Jaspers have at least like 256 or 512 built in. Okay, so now it just says no storage devices found. That's very, that's kind of strange because I'm like, okay, yeah, I see how this happens. So this is an Elite. Elites usually came with 120, uh, which I had a hard drive, of course, attached. This one has no hard drive attached. So it has nothing on it. Um, so we have nothing built in. Hmm. Now, lucky for us, I have like four or five hard drives that were just laying on the side of the lot. 
and not actually attach the console. So we're gonna turn this off and attach this random 120 gigabyte hard drive I found, which appears to be from GameStop because it's got all these little stickers on it. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if there's any data on here. Here we go. We got one profile, it's better than nothing. We got Malleus EBHC. Now, Malleus, let's see what you play. You have no no avatar. Any achievements? You get Modern Warfare 2, Fable 3, Borderlands, Splunky, Mass Effect, uh, all from 2012. Yeah, just not much on here. But let's go ahead and turn this console off and try to fix it. I think it should be a pretty easy fix, but let's give it a go. All right, I have this console torn down, and of course, as I was opening it up, <laughs> Sure enough, the uh, the broken band just pops out. Wow, that is stretchy. I don't know, what is, wow. Wow, it just snaps apart even more. The funny thing is that popped out before I even took the console apart. Like I took the faceplate off and started prying it apart and it just popped out of nowhere. It does look like somebody's opened this drive up before because the, uh, the warranty seal is broken. Oh, <laughs> and we have a game. Dude, another free game? Wow, and oh no. That one is not gonna work. It's got the uh, the ring. So I bet you this person took the console from horizontal to vertical while the disc was inside. That was a pretty common issue back in the day. But that's funny to get another free game. And um, let's go ahead and eject this drive. Yep, and uh, sure enough, <laughs> no band there at all. That's just it's so funny to see. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and clean out this entire drive, replace the band. So I got this disc drive cleaned out, greased up, cleaned the laser, replaced the, uh, the belt there, as you can see. Let's go ahead and put it back together and see if it works. Turn it on, go open the disk drive. Please open. Yes, let's go. All right, so the other thing we have to test here is a game. I, <laughs> I don't even want to put this game in because it's so scratched up. Let's just put in the classic MW2 and see if that works. So sure enough, the game is working. Of course, we'll clean it out and replace thermal paste and list it down below on my website. But let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up, we have a Mat360 Slim and this thing Honestly, it does not look too bad. It's not too scratched up, which is kind of a product of being a matte console instead of a uh, glossy console. Now flip into the back here. I hear something rattling around inside, which is not a good sign, but uh, we'll ignore it for now. The uh, warranty sticker looks like it may have been peeled up at some point. It's hard to tell. We do have a manufacturing date in 2011. Let's see if we have a hard drive. Uh, uh, we don't. Hopefully we have four gigs built in. We'll find out, of course, here in a second. So let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. All right, three, two, one. Green light, disk drive. Stuck. Crap. It's not very often you get a stuck slim, but we got one today. And even the uh, even the classic tapping the top can't fix it for me. Oh well, let's go ahead and explore this thing though. All right, so first we got Bailey9821. Let's check out what games this person's played. Connect Adventures in 2019. Wow, I think that's the most recent console I've seen so far in this Texas load lot. That's only four years ago. Wow. Here's a War 3, Halo 3, Just Dance 4. Okay, there's actually a Pretty large number of games. That's a really low gamer score for that many games. We got Super Rich Moth 79 has played three games. Connect Adventure, Call no, two games. Connect Adventures and Call of Duty 2. That's really random. 2015. All right, let's see if there's any games downloaded. Disneyland Adventures demo. Nice. And we should have four gigs built in. Indeed, we do. Uh, so not a whole lot on this console. Now, is there a game inside? There is no game inside because we got an open tray. Let me let me give it one more go. I'm gonna try to tap the top and see if we can get this thing open. There it goes, finally. It doesn't even, I mean, it looks dusty, but it's nothing, not too wild, but it's open now. Let me go ahead and put a disc in and see if it reads up. It was slow pulling in as well, so it definitely needs a band replacement, just a overall cleaning. Uh, now this console is fully working, minus the disc drive being stuck, so let's go ahead and open it up and see if we can fix it. So I had this console torn all the way down to the disc drive, and it, the disc drive is actually pretty clean, considering how dirty the console is, uh, you know, the rest of the console. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and clean this out, you know, re-grease everything that has grease already, clean the laser, all that good stuff, and. I'll see if it fixes the issue. So this right here is the old band from this drive, and you can see it's a little bit stretched out. This one's actually not too bad. I don't know if the band, the band was the issue, because after I got this one unstuck, it like didn't stick anymore. Uh, but anyways, we cleaned everything out, replaced the band, uh, got it all greased up, and it's nice and smooth now. So we'll go ahead and close this thing up, put it back in, and we'll see if it, see if it works better now. I have the disk drive back together enough to test it. Not all the way back together, but let's go ahead and see if it opens up. All right, so this drive is working, but it's doing the same thing that the other console did earlier, where it opens up like 99% of the way, then it finishes. So, all right, let's open this back up and see if I can fix it. So fortunately, the fix for this one was pretty simple. I just took the uh, the new band I put in there, stretched it out with my fingers for like a minute or so, and then I left it in there overnight and it's working fine now. Let me just show you. So you can see I have a disc in, it ejects, and it just comes all the way out on the first try. So we're good to go here. We'll of course clean this console up and all that good stuff and list it down below. 
uh, but let's go ahead and move on. So unfortunately, we did not hit our $500 goal here, so we can't buy the Modern Warfare 2 Xbox that I wanted to, but we're gonna save that profit from this week and hopefully combine it with next week and either buy that console or something else that's even cooler. Let me know down below if you find something on eBay that you want me to buy. Um, and guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. I spent $1,000 on almost 50 untested Wii consoles from Goodwill, and in this video, we're gonna go through and test and fix about 10 of these consoles and see if we can turn a profit. So guys, welcome to the Texas Load. We're gonna start this video off strong with a Wii in a bag. Let's go ahead and see what's inside of this thing. We've got AVM power cords. Oh, and we have a, uh, oh, is this like a Europe? Oh, this is like a European power supply. Okay, is this, is this console European? Okay, so this console is from the Middle East. It says model RVL-001 UAE, Middle East there. And this thing is, it's actually in pretty nice condition, like not too many scratches or anything. And we gotta check, yep, no SD card. But let's go ahead and plug this console in and see if I can even use it in the US. All right, so I can't use the included power supply because it's 220 volt, but I'm using an American uh, 120 volt and it's working fine. Now to put out 12 volts DC, let's go ahead and turn it on. Got power, hey, and that's a good sign from the from the, uh, the disk drive. No free game though. Let's go ahead and see if it boots up. And hey, hold on, what is the what is the Wii Speak channel? Why have I never heard of that? Any game, nope, there's no, uh, no free games on here. But what I am curious about is if you can play US games on this, uh, this Wii. So let's go ahead and try that out. Oh, yeah, nice, dude. And let's go ahead and see when this thing was last played. Wait, no way. This thing was last played in September 2022. Am I reading that right? Wow, that is actually impressive. This person was playing Mario Kart Wii back in August and September of 2022. That's amazing. This is by far the most recent console I've seen from the Texas Load. I saw, I've seen like 2016 on some 360s, but Wow, less than a year ago, That that's actually amazing. Yeah, we got plenty of save data as well. <laughs> wow, it, oh no, finally, we, we finally hit somebody that's got a bunch of Mies. Let's see, what is that, what is that right there? Creep Sangu, <laughs> no, <laughs> Panda, let's go. <laughs> Dude, I've been waiting so long to find somebody that was like a, a cultured, a cultured Wii player with their, uh, with all these crazy me's. But also, man, we got a fully working console here to start with, always a good sign. I'll go ahead and throw the props on the screen for this console plus controller, whatever I sell with it. And then also, uh, we've got this, we'll throw the props on the screen for these games. So by the way, here's a little background on the origin of these games. So a few weeks ago when I was like kind of sorting through all the stuff in the Texas Load, I came across this case of games here. There's a bunch of like Wii games I had no idea was even included. Uh, it was also a 360 game. Most of them are, are like pretty low value, but then we get to the back, we got Resident Evil 4, we've got the Simpsons game, we've got Wii Sports, and we even have New Super Mario Bros. So none of these games are like crazy valuable, but uh, definitely much more valuable than all the other games I've found so far. By the way, our profit goal for today, it's a little bit of a side quest as I usually have. We're gonna try to get $400 in profit today and use that $400 plus some profits from previous videos to buy some cool limited edition 360 consoles. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get some cool stuff today. Next up, I'm gonna open up this inbox Wii and let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. And the first thing I see here, machine post controllers not included. So that's a, that's a bad sign, but it is pretty heavy. So I feel like there's something interesting inside. Well, can you, hope you guys can see that on camera, but there's there's definitely a Wii in there and uh, some other random accessories. Let's go ahead and dump this out. What in the world? <laughs> I was wondering where all these accessories were. Uh, <laughs> if you guys don't remember, the Wii was like well known for having just tons of random accessories. Like we got the, oh, these are actually pretty nice. These are like soft Nerf material and you can have obviously attach them to your Wii. Wow, that's like the cleanest Wii jacket I've seen in years. Uh, sorry, I'm going on, on tangents here, but we got our, uh, <laughs> we got these cool little accessories here. Um, this one is, oh, that's disgusting. Uh, we actually have some, some manuals. And then of course, our Wii here. Again, this is a Wii that looks pretty nice. Like it's not too scratched up. Uh, at least compared to the other Wii's in this lot. And then SD card, nope, no SD card. But other than that, we do have our flaps. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, got it plugged in. Let's go ahead and see if it turns on. Green light. Ooh, I think we have a game in here. Ooh, I can, I can hear it spinning up. Let's see, what do, we, what do we got? Let's see, over under $20 game. I'm going over $20 game. I don't know why, but I'm just feeling it in this one. Maybe Wii Sports? Okay, Scooby-Doo First Frights. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it looks, uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, honestly, a Scooby-Doo game, that might be worth something. Let's look it up real quick. Oh, it's actually like, yeah, not too bad, nine bucks. I mean, that's a lot better than it could have been. There's a lot of Wii games that are worth like $2, so <laughs> $9 is actually not bad. And, ooh, what is that? Oh, is that a is that the Wii U Universal Serial? 
Oh, is this, oh, is this hacked? So I booted up the WAD manager and it froze the console. I had to turn it off and turn it back on. But the WADs, the WAD is like the file type for the ROMs for, for Wii games. Yeah, so just a clarification here, WAD files are actually for like Wii channels, virtual console, WiiWare, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not gonna delve into that in this video, but uh, just know that, I mean, that's cool. It's something different here. But let's go ahead and see when this console was last played. And actually the sad part is that somebody could have left their SD card in here and then we would have had all the games that they loaded up, but uh, unfortunately they did not. Hey, here we go. We got, what year was that? 2016. Hey, again, another one that's like actually somewhat recent. And they played a, oh, they played a lot, six hours that day. Wow. Now, unfortunately the Miis are not very plentiful, but let's go ahead and go back to the main menu and test out a game. All right, well, Scooby-Doo is working. This console is another fully working console. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up we have a black Wii, which is a uh, very much mutilated. <laughs> it looks filthy on the top, bottom, the sides, everywhere. And there is no SD card. Oh man, that thing is just like littered with dust and dirt. Okay, well, let's plug it in and hopefully it works. Oh man, <laughs> there's so much dust on the back of this thing. I don't know, man, I've come across a lot of Wii's in my time and I, I don't know if I've seen one like quite this just destroyed. Oh, there's a game inside. Hey, it's funny after testing this many Wii's, you get used to the sound of a Wii booting up without a game and with a game. All right, let's go ahead and eject. Close my eyes so I don't see what's in there. Wait. Oh baby, we got Wii Sports and it's a little bit beat up, but not too bad, dude, Wii Sports. It's such a jackpot. This game is worth like 20 bucks now. I'm gonna get a bunch of comments down below. They're like, oh, Wii Sports is not worth that much. Well, go check eBay for yourself. It is worth 20 bucks. I can't believe how many free Wii Sports I've already gotten in this lot. Does it actually work though, is the question, because it is definitely not reading up. Ooh, oh no. Now the real question, is the game broken or is the Wii broken? If, if we're lucky, honestly, <laughs> with a black Wii, Wii Sports is worth almost as much as a Black Wii itself because this cannot play GameCube games. Uh, but let's take, test out the Scooby-Doo game and see if it works. Yeah, so it's just the Wii. Okay. <laughs> How lame can a Mii channel be? They all look exactly the same. Whatever. Hey, here we go. February of 2015. So <laughs> this console has not been played in the last eight years. Uh, I'm still amazed that the, the battery in this thing is actually keeping the time. I mean, that's amazing just in and of itself. And to be honest, guys, I'm not sure if I'm going to repair this console because like not only is it a Wii, which is not worth that much, a black Wii that's not game, GameCube compatible is worth even less. If I decide to fix it, you'll see it now. If, you, if I don't, you'll see the profit number on the screen. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, I have a couple of Wii consoles from a few weeks ago that I was trying to repair and had to wait for some more parts to come in, that sort of thing. Uh, just, just know that there were, I don't remember exactly what the issues were on these two. I think one had a bad laser and a bad motor. The other one had bad uh, gear. Years, basically parts that were just too tedious and too expensive to replace versus just getting a new drive. So I bought, I got two uh, refurbished drives from eBay for like 17 bucks each. We're just gonna swap them out and see if that fixes the issue. So fortunately swapping out a disc drive on a Wii is super easy. You just take everything apart. And then once you get down here, all you have to do is to remove these two cables from the old disc drive and then latch them into the new disc drive. And it's just like a, a straight a straight swap. You don't have to do any flashing, none of that, none of that jazz. So those two cables are plugged in, got the disc drive in place. Let's go ahead and just plug it in and see if it works now. That's a good sign. I don't hear any hear any grinding. Let me put a game in. All right, we're gonna try out this Cars game from <laughs> this giant pack of games I have, and it's looking good so far. Oh yeah, so Cars is loaded up. It's working now, and man, as you guys saw, super easy swap. Let's go ahead and do the second console now. All right, so same thing for the second console. We got it plugged in now, and by the way, these two drives are GameCube compatible. Just in case you're wondering, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, we'll try this Goosebumps game from this little pack here. Loads up with no problem at all, and it's spinning up. That's a good sign. So no surprise there, Goosebumps is loading up without an issue. Of course, I gotta put these consoles back together, and they'll be listed for sale. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up is a white GameCube compatible Wii. We are missing one door. Let's see if we have an SD card. Ooh, let's go. We've got an SD card. We got, ooh, 16 gigs. So that means there's either some photos on here, or maybe a modded Wii. Uh, but let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, guys, I'm also filling another free game here. Let's see. Another one, I can hear it. Let's see what we got. I just, I can't wait now. What free game do we have? We have Mario Kart. <laughs> Dude, how many people leave their games in their Wii's, man? This is, this is just like unbelievable. I can't believe this. People are gonna start thinking I made, people are gonna start thinking I framed these videos. I faked them. Uh, <laughs> these are indeed not fake videos. People are gonna claim it now because of how many free games I'm getting. <laughs> this, is, this is wild. And there it is, it already booted up. Wow, man, that is amazing. Now let's see what's on this uh, memory card here. Oop, three photos and seven movies. Santa Buddies. <laughs> what is an AVI file? Does somebody put actual movies on here? We got Toy Story 3, Santa Buddies. Uh, the Return of God, these are like movies. So of course the photos are just some kid's shoes and then the last photo, which I won't show, are just like, it's just like a random eight-year-old sitting in a chair. <laughs> like, I don't know. Oh man, for 2013. 
Good stuff, man. And I didn't really mention it, but this Wii actually looks pretty solid. Like there's not too many scratches on it compared to the other Wiis I've seen. Of course, you have to check out the Mii channel and just, of course, boring, nothing here. I'm actually a bit surprised at how mild the Mii's have been on the Wiis I've, I've tested so far because uh, I thought everybody else was like me where you just create ridiculous Mii's all the time, but apparently not. Maybe I guess that was just me, I don't know. But let's go ahead and see when this was last played. Holy crap, eight hours and 46 minutes of Wii Sports? Oh my goodness. Wait. How does this happen? You go from playing eight hours of Wii Sports one day and then just getting rid of your console. Like August 2015 was the last time it was played. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, wow. But man, we got another working console here, another free game. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next up is another white Wii that's uh, pretty filthy and beat up. Let's see if we have an SD card and we do not. Uh, we are missing a door. Ooh, I didn't even notice that. What is that? That's nasty. Okay, well, let's plug it in and hope it works. Now, just from looking at the outside of this console, I'm gonna guess the disk drive does not work, but Ooh, and the power button is sticky as well. This, uh, this drive sounds iffy. There's no game in there. I can already tell there. Let's go ahead and see if it, uh, it connects up here. And, oh, pretty barren Wii. Barely any channels downloaded. That's sad. Let's go ahead and see if a game works. First, I'm gonna try this Wii Sports that we got for free a couple of consoles ago and see if this loads up. It is a bit dirty. I can probably resurface that. I mean, it sounds okay when it's spinning. It doesn't sound perfect, but it sounds okay. And double jackpot, our game works, our console works. Dude, wow, what a steal. Man, Wii Sports, like such a simple game, but honestly one of my favorites of all time. Um, but I, I'm actually amazed this disk drive works. Like I've seen a lot of, just in this lot, I've seen a lot of disk drives that are just, uh, just have random issues, but I'm actually pretty surprised that Wii disk drive works. But let's go ahead and see when this thing was last played. I love how the most recent thing I find is an update from 2010. All right, let's keep going. Last time this console was played was back in September 2009, and it looks like the, con the game played was Smash Bros. Brawl. So that very well could have been the last time that person played Smash Bros. Brawl. And of course, here on the Mii channel as well now, pretty basic. We got this one guy with a stash named Drew, uh, and yeah, he's a just normal Mii's, man. Like, nothing special, just normal stuff. But let's go ahead and move on to the next console, because this one, this one works. Next up, I want to do another one of these box Wii's, and this one looks pretty solid. Uh, okay, there's a big rip there, but other than that, it looks solid. Let's go ahead and see what's inside. Reveal the top cover. We do have, oh, we got a Wii remote. We've got a nunchuck, a bunch of cords. We've even got some old batteries here, and hey, we have the, the Wii stand, we've got the Wii operation manual in there, and ooh, the console. Console doesn't look too bad, hey. Got both covers here, SD card, nope, no SD card, but yeah, this console, hey, this lo console looks pretty good. But let's go ahead and see if this console turns on. We got life. This drive sounds okay, but there's no free game in there, which is unfortunate. Where's my controller? We, yeah, pretty basic, unfortunate. Uh, let's go ahead and see if the game works. There we go, Wii Sports, it is working. Let's go ahead and see when this thing was last played. All right, November 2011, last thing played was Netflix. Wow, how how lame can you be? Netflix, I mean, that's not surprising. <laughs> the only thing on here is Netflix, there's like no games, no, there's barely anything downloaded on here. But let's check out the Mii channel. I can almost guarantee you there's gonna be like, maybe one Mii, may, maybe two Mii's. Oh, ho, hold on. No, I was wrong. There's like 25 Mii's here. Again, nothing too interesting, but um, there, wow, at least there's a, at least there's variety. Dad. Dude, that's the most genetic, <laughs> that's exactly the same character my dad made too. Like, <laughs> do all dads look the same? <laughs> well, despite being in a box, this console was not too interesting, but we did get a lot of accessories, of course. Um, but yeah, console works, another one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up, we have another one of these black Wii's that can't play GameCube games, and this one might look even worse than the first one. Like, what, what happened here? Why does that look so bad? I don't know, but uh, no SD card, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and plug it in. All right, three, two, one, turn it on, and ooh, free game, I hear a free game. Let's go ahead, I can't wait any longer. Let's see what's in here. Mario Kart, Mario Kart, planes. Oh, lame. It's free though, I can't complain too much. I mean, hey, you never know, planes might be worth something. Let me let me actually look it up real quick. Uh, yeah, never mind. six bucks. So, could be worse. Obviously, could be a whole lot better. And, oh, we got some stuff on this console. We've got, or by stuff, I mean, hockey all-star shootout. Nice. But I mean, let's go ahead and put the planes game back in. And uh, let's go ahead and boot up this hockey, hockey shootout and see if that works. <laughs> I don't know, man, I can't figure this game out. It seems like the, the how hard I'm swinging the remote does not correlate to how hard I hit the puck. I, whatever, man. Let's go ahead and <laughs> go back to the main menu because that game is working at least. And hey, man, the game is loaded up. Uh, I don't, don't want to jinx myself, but I say we're getting pretty lucky today with how many how many disk drives are working. Uh, let's go ahead and see when this thing was last played. All right, so March 2014. Yeah, this is definitely the last time played. Get, get connected video. This person went through like 12 different apps and played them all the same. Okay, whatever. Uh, but anyways, last, yeah, last March 2014, which is actually fairly recent compared to most other Wii's. Um, but yeah, this console is good to go. Everything works. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it off and move on to the next one. All right, next console up. I already have it plugged in. I forgot to show you guys, but it looks pretty normal. Is there an, oh, there's an SD card. Hey, one gig made in Japan. 
Nice, that's enough to do something on. Um, and yeah, it doesn't look too terrible. Let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it works. I got a feeling we got a free game in here. Let's see, nope, ooh, no free game. And the disk drive sounds a little bit sus. We'll check it out here in a second. Now, boom, oh, yes, we have games. We got Punch-Out, Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 3, uh, Mario Kart Channel, that was free. Nice, so we have some of the classic games. That is awesome, I, I love when I see that. Now, first, of course, my first, uh, first question here is, does the game work? Because, like I mentioned, the disk drive sounded a little bit strange. It wasn't that bad, but it was like a, a little bit off. But it is booting up and it sounds normal now, so maybe it's fine. I mean, what can you say, man? Another, another Wii Sports working, gotta love the free games. These are like good free games too, Super Mario Bros, at least, at least like the, the well-known ones. And, I'm trying to remember how much these cost, because I remember surfing through the Wii Shop channel back in the day, and I think I bought a few of these games, and like, I think they were around like, I don't know, four or five bucks maybe, so not too bad, honestly, especially considering how much these games cost like physically nowadays. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out, I feel like this channel's gonna, I feel like this Wii's gonna have some, some interesting Miis, so let's check out the Miis, and we'll see when this thing was last played. Hey, here we go, we got, ah, uh, not too many, but we got a few weird, we got, Char oh, Charlie Brown, nice, I think I had a Charlie Brown as well. We've got the Chariz, I don't know how to say that. Oh, wait, has this guy got horns? El Toro. <laughs> yeah, I love coming across weird me's or interesting me's. Kitty, yeah, it looks like a kitty. Uh, nothing else here. Wait, what is that? Oh, Jason. Okay. Oh, it looks like Jason, like the, the horror character. Nice. Okay, cool. And I forgot we have an SD card here, so let's go ahead and check out the photo channel. And then we'll also check out and see if there's any games loaded on this SD card, because that is a possibility as well. All right, no photos. All right, so SD card menu, and there's nothing. Okay, cool. <laughs> any save data, like anything? Nope, nothing on the SD card here either. I don't know, man, it doesn't really matter. It's just uh, interesting when they have an SD card in here and there's nothing loaded on it. Uh, but let's go ahead and make sure at least one of these games works here. Hey, yeah, it works. I need my classic controller, but it is working. Now, of course, last thing, like I mentioned, gotta check when this thing was last played. All right, so March 2011, and last thing played was, of course, Netflix, because just like, why not, of course. But <laughs> console does work. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, we have a Wii U console from a couple weeks ago that couldn't connect to Wi-Fi. And after a bunch of troubleshooting in that video and after that video, my conclusion was to try to swap out the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi chip with a new one. Um, I, found, I found this one on eBay. It was like the only one I could find, so got kind of lucky that I found it. And we'll go ahead and just swap it out and see if that fixes the issue. So here on the bottom of the motherboard, we have the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi chip, which comes off pretty easily. We'll just snap it off. And it has two antennas connected. So what we need to do is snap off these two antennas and then connect them to the new Wi-Fi chip and then put the new Wi-Fi chip in this port right here. All right, I got those two antennas snapped into place. We'll go ahead and place the Wi-Fi antenna in this little port. And all right, cool, we should be good to go now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put the console mostly back together. We'll plug it in, test it, and see if it works now. So as you can see here, I have the Wii U partway back together and the good news is it is scanning my Wi-Fi network. So let's go ahead and see if we can connect and let's, uh, let's, let's, hope, let's hope it works. All right, we're connected to the network device. Now internet, please, 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 come on. No. <sighs> All right, well, apparently there is a different issue, so uh, I guess I'll keep investigating. All right, guys, the console is working now. It is connecting to the internet. Uh, long story short, I had to manually set my IP address on here, which is very strange because I've connected hundreds of consoles to multiple different Wi-Fi networks and literally never had to do this, but on the specific Wii U, I had to because of, I guess, a bug in the firmware or whatever, but I manually set the IP address, was able to update, and once I updated to the latest firmware, now I can use my Wi-Fi just normally without manually setting the IP address, so that was it. Uh, very strange. Uh, fortunately, I did not need to break down this console, but it's it's no big deal. I learned some stuff breaking it down. But this console is good to go. It'll be listed down below. Let's go ahead and move on now. All right, next up we have another white Wii, and this one is uh, just disgusting. It's got a bunch of sticky stuff on the bottom with like hair stuck to it. Like, oh man, like what in the world happened here? SD card, nope, no SD card. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. I really want another free game here because like, why wouldn't I? Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. And oh, yep, I hear a game. I hear a game. Let's go ahead and eject. What do we have? Mario Kart, Mario Kart, Mario Kart. Wii Sports, the next, the next good, uh, the next, the next best thing is what I meant to say. And ooh, it's pretty scratched up, but maybe it works. Dude, I cannot believe how many people left Wii Sports. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. Like if somebody gave their Wii away back in 2013 when, when Wii Sports was worth like, who knows how much, I don't know, three bucks or whatever. I guess it makes sense that they gave away their Wii and left Wii Sports inside of it, but it's still just, just amazing. And we are booted up here. We've of course got our Mario Kart channel. We've got all the classic channels here. Nintendo channel, internet channel, check me out channel was my favorite. And where's the Everybody Votes channel? That one was my second favorite. And of course, Netflix, because who doesn't have Netflix after like, you know, 20, 2010 or whatever. And of course the game is working. Let's go ahead and see when this thing was last played. 
Oh, oh, wait, 2020? Yeah, they, sure enough, they last played Wii Sports in August 2020 and then just gave away their console because <laughs> they left the game in there. That's, <laughs> oh man, that's uh, that's funny, hilarious, sad. It's kind of funny, but let's go ahead and check out the, the Mii channel. Oh, 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 jackpot. This might be the most Mii's I've seen on a console so far. Dude, I made some like this where I just make a random person and type in random letters. No surprise there, classic Bill. Uh, most of these actually look, you know, like pretty normal, like not like abstract or anything. Mr. Nut. <laughs> what in the world? Super Dad. <laughs> they all look the same. Honestly though, I just can't, I can't believe you got another free game and, and Wii Sports of all things, like just, just amazing. But again, guys, another Wii console good to go. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys, so the number you see on the screen is my budget left for limited edition 360 consoles going forward. This is basically my profit up until now through all the videos, minus the two consoles I've purchased so far with my uh, my, my profits. Uh, I purchased a brand new 360, and I've also purchased a Modern Warfare 2 limited edition Xbox 360 complete in the box. Both of those are coming soon. I'll be unboxing them on the channel. And just remember that the number you see on the screen is not including labor, so uh, I'm not actually quite making as much money as you see here. And honestly, it just gives us more profit to buy cool limited edition consoles for the channel. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. I bought this brand new OG Xbox 360 from eBay for about $400, and in this video, we're gonna unbox it, test it out, and hope we don't get the red ring of death. Now this video is part of the Texas load series where I bought 120 untested video game consoles from Goodwill and I'm using the profit from testing and fixing those consoles to buy cool Xbox 360 consoles. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see what's inside. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Dude, what is this? <laughs> Ooh, here it is. So it is an OG Xbox 360. It's before they even told you how much memory it came with. So I think it comes with 20 gigabytes of storage. And we got this bonus or meteor remote apparently. I love how on the old consoles they used to advertise all of their just random accessories and then whatever games they have. So these are, I think those are all launch games, or at least pretty close to it. Let's go ahead and do the dirty here. Oof, there goes the value. Oh baby, there it is. We've got our OG Xbox 360. Yeah, we still got like that. You got that yellow foam that's down there. Classic stuff there, man. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at when this console was manufactured because that's what I'm most interested in. I'm gonna go ahead and guess. I'm gonna say, well, <laughs> now I can already see on my monitor that it's not got an HDMI port, so I'm gonna guess March 2006. Let's see. Um, it's, no, wow, November 22nd, 2005. Hold on, dude, is this like straight up OG, is this a launch console? <laughs> this, we might open this thing up and it might have Red Ring of Death. Wow, yeah, it, the Xbox 360 was released on November 22nd, 2005. And that is, that is the manufacture date of this console. Wow, that is, that's amazing. This thing wasn't in stores. If it was manufactured on 1122, it, doesn't, it means it wasn't actually sold in stores on 1122, but it's shortly after. But I think it's even cooler that it was actually manufactured on launch. So if you get a 360 that has the launch date on it, I think that's just awesome. And just by the way, guys, after we do this unboxing and test it out and stuff, we're also going to uh, go ahead and test and fix a few of the Texas Load 360s that we have. Uh, I still have a ton left, but we're gonna go ahead and do those in this video. We'll get into that later. But of course we got our, our volume one setup, volume two warranty. I don't know why I always liked these little, little baggies here though. Of course, just straight up sealed. I did not realize they came with a sticker. Hey, that's pretty neat. Put that on your car. <laughs> Congratulations on owning the most exciting product on the planet. Act now to protect your investment in the amazing 360. That's <laughs> that's funny. I love that design. Oh man, it's just so nostalgic. I never actually, uh, when I bought my 360, it was already in like the, it was 2009. So we were already in the Jasper days. So I never bought like an OG Xbox 360, but hoo -hoo, there it is. There's our free remote, bonus remote, I guess they called it. And then of course we got our controller, which is not, uh, it's wireless, nice. We've got our headsets. We've got our AV cable down there. And we got, of course, our power cord in here, which uh, will be the 203 watt. And honestly, I mean, you can see it down there, guys. I'm gonna leave it in there because I have so many other power breaks I can use. I'm gonna pr preserve as much of this console as I can because I just, like, why not? This remote right here is awesome, though. Man, look how white that is. I've seen these, I've seen these in the past. And they're always, they're always dirty, yellow, whatever. This thing is like pristine, straight up white. Hey, that's the cleanest Xbox 360 headset I've ever seen. These things get grimy quick because it's just like such a, such a cheap foam here. But dude, this controller, whoo, I can, I can feel how clean these joysticks are through the bag. And just look in, listen to the, the RB and LB. So nice. I'm not gonna open it up. I wanna leave that as is. Of course, we got our batteries in there too. Energizer batteries, got the high quality batteries. Nice, but let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and pull this console out of the little baggie and see what this looks like. 
All right, so first up inside of there, we got the setup pamphlet there, and it's like themed like the blades. Of course, you got a little uh, plastic film piece on top of the disk drive, um, and also in front of the IR sensor. Man, let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in, and hopefully, hopefully it works. So this console is plugged in, ready to go. And by the way, these three consoles over here are the ones from the Texas Load that we're gonna test out later in this video. And let's go ahead and see if this console boots up. I'm gonna go ahead and film it because I got a feeling this might have red ring. Like there's a there's a decent, there's like a 50-50 chance, honestly. So let's go ahead and try to boot this bad boy up. I really, okay. Three, two, one. Oh baby, here we go. There it is, there's the boot up screen. I can hear the fan like almost rattling, strange. No. There's no way. Oh my gosh. There is no way I just got red ringed. E60, I don't even remember what E67, oh my gosh. I just got like the ultimate fake out because this thing was booting up for a good 20 seconds before it gave me this error. Oh my gosh, what is, <laughs> oh wait, this is just a hard drive error. I, I definitely did hear some weird stuff going on in here, so maybe it's just a bad hard drive. Let me let me pull the hard drive off of here. It sounded like a, a fan hitting something, and it, so maybe it was the hard drive that was making that noise, and it's just a, it's a bad hard drive. Okay, okay, maybe maybe that's the issue. I, I hope so. It seems like it is because it booted up. It, it was booting up to the main screen, and then yeah, that's definitely got to be a hard drive issue because I do not hear the little rattling noise anymore. So it was probably the yes, there it is. Let's just continue with that with that hard drive for now. And dude, this is this is so awesome seeing the. The Blades dashboard here for the first time. This is like this is like back in November, December 2005. You're booting this up for the first time, and I've never had this feeling because I'd never bought the 360 back in the 05, 06, bought mine in 09. But we got family settings, we got high definition settings, and we got Xbox dashboard. Nice. And dude, this is my favorite part right here. How they got the open tray like built in, and it looks like the tray. So nice. But uh, here we go. Oh yeah, Xbox Live games, media, and system. And I'm trying to remember. There's one more tab that they actually did not add until later on, until a later update, I think. Dude, I'm curious, what, are we on like 1.0 dashboard? Like, what is this? 2.01888. Let me just look this up and see if this is the like very OG dashboard, if there's anything uh, before this. Yeah, so this dashboard version is the original one it shipped with. We got create gamer profile, I got Xbox Live Arcade, demos, trailer. I wonder if there's any demos already downloaded. Honestly, if this hard drive works, I bet there's some demos already on there. Um, but let's go ahead and, yeah, let me turn this back off and try to put the hard drive on and see if we can get this hard drive to work. That's wild. It, it is amazing that how many hard drives I've been through on the 360 and tested out, and this is the first one I've ever seen that was bad, and it was straight from factory. Just amazing. So I actually found another OG Xbox 360 hard drive just sitting in the Texas load, which is basically the entire uh, palette of video games that I bought from Texas recently for this series, and uh, you know what I noticed here? Is this thing was never actually removed here, so wow. Nice. Looks a whole lot more pristine now. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. Hopefully it works and hopefully it does not make me update to a newer dashboard. We're taking a little bit of a risk here, but I think we'll be okay. Um, but let's, let's try it out. So now this console is, it's been booting up for like 20 seconds and still, wow. So is this a, what in the world? Is this a connection issue between the hard drive and the motherboard? <laughs> what a random issue. What in the world, dude? Well, you know what? We're going to go ahead and start testing these other Xbox 360 consoles I have here. And I want to stick the, uh, the hard drives on a different console and see if the console is the issue. <laughs> now, in case you didn't notice, this one is uh, basically destroyed on the side. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try to stick a hard drive on here. It might be a little bit difficult. All right, hard drive attached. Let's go ahead and turn this console on. I won't be surprised if this console doesn't work because, I mean, you see half of it's just, it it's clearly been dropped, but it, <laughs> it is booting up and I see the screen coming on. Let me see if, uh, will this drive eject though? Wow. <laughs> Free game called Blow? What, what is this? What? <laughs> You can't make this up, man. What in the world is going on here? I, I actually cannot believe this, this disk drive opened up. Um, but I think we have another, I think this hard drive just is bad because it's not booting. Yeah, we got a, now it's an E68 error. What, what in the world? What? <laughs> yeah, so from my quick Google search, it appears to be the same thing where it's a hard drive issue. Um, so it almost seems like to me, uh, let me just try this other hard drive. <laughs> so this one, so this hard drive is the one from the Texas Load, not the brand new one. Let's go ahead and stick this on and see if it does the same thing here. What are the chances I just found two bad hard drives in a row? Like, that, that would be wild, but I guess that's a possibility. What is going on in this video? This is unreal. How did I come across two bad hard drives in a row? And I've never seen a bad hard drive in my life on a 360. And I've, I've you know, tested like 50 to 100 different hard drives and never seen a bad one until all of a sudden I got two in a row that are bad? This is, what is going on? All right, let's try another hard drive now. All right, got another hard drive here. This one is also an OG Xbox 360 hard drive from the Texas Load, and it says refurbished on it. I don't know what was refurbished about this hard drive, um, but let's go ahead and actually, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on the brand new 360 first. 
and we'll see what happens. All right, so it's booting up, and this is the first first hard drive that isn't making weird noises. We got two bad hard drives in a row, and this one, yeah, it's working straight up on the Blades dashboard. We got this old hard drive. Uh, we got 10 profiles on here. Again, this is just an untested one from, um, oh, actually, this is, this is, I've seen this one before. I pulled this hard drive off of another console that I had from like, I think a video a couple weeks ago. We got Wingnut 1419, Killer Panda, and I Am The Riot. <laughs> this is this is so funny. I I love the uh, the Blades aesthetic where it pulls out the, the thing on the side instead of a little pop in the middle. And dude, there it is, yeah. I Am The Riot. Let's see if we got any dem demos on here, maybe? Uh, yeah, nothing here. And wow, that there's actually heat coming out of this console, so that's telling me the thermal paste is actually doing something, which is amazing considering this thing is almost 20 years old and it's sitting in a box for 20 years. W what in the world? And my guess from the eBay listing, it said that this came from a, an, electron an electronic seller that shut down. So my guess is this 360 might be from Circuit City, which would be an even bigger bonus. Of course, we don't have a receipt or anything. Now I do want to see if the tray opens. I haven't taken off the plastic piece yet, but I think it'll open with the plastic piece still on. Wait, wait, there it goes, there it goes. It's trying to open because yeah, the little plastic piece is actually still stuck on it. Oh, actually, that, that plastic film there is really strong. I guess I'll just give you the guys this little satisfaction peeling off here. And actually, this is, dude, it's leaving behind a bunch of residue. No way, dude. What in the world, man? I guess it's been sitting there so long that it's like, it doesn't peel off as easy anymore. And we left it behind a bunch of residue. Just 20 year old console things. All right, guys, so Call of Duty 2 came in. It is a very beat up game, kind of from Amazon, but we're gonna go ahead and put it in. And this should work because it's a launch game. Uh, well, let's see. Hey, there it goes. That is, wow, that is a loud disk drive. Not surprised, but <laughs> it is loud. All right, yeah, so it booted up. I, these Call of Duty games, I swear, they boot up so quickly. One last thing I want to do here is create a new profile and get the experience of creating a new profile on the Blades dashboard, because I've, I've never done that before. So I'm putting in my profile. I'm going like full 360 gamer tag. Just, just take a look. But man, this, this skull photo is just like an absolute 360 classic. But let's go ahead and move on to the next 360, the one we briefly tested earlier. Let's go ahead and move on, test that one out fully, uh, see if it works, and see if there's anything interesting on it. And by the way, I didn't show you, but this is a Jasper console. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I can't believe how smashed this thing is. But let's go ahead and turn it on again. And hopefully it boots up all the way this time. Hey, there it is. We got J, <laughs> J Smash 72 and that's it. <laughs> see if he's got anything interesting. Uh, doesn't look like a new avatar. Last played in never, because it was always offline. We got Madden NFL 25, which is like 2015. So this console was maybe played about I don't know, eight to 10 years ago, probably. Let's go ahead and put uh, MW2 in here and see if it works. And dude, what do you know? <laughs> MW2 is working without a problem at all. And it does still have the warranty sticker here, so this console has not been opened up. Well, <laughs> not been intentionally opened up, but console works. I'll throw the profit number on the screen. Again, we're kind of getting back into the Texas load part now where we uh, test and fix the consoles and then I'll sell them on my website down below. This one won't sell for too much because it's so smashed up, but it, it does work, so go ahead and grab this down below if you want it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we'll test this matte slim, and this thing actually does not look too bad. Like, all the matte slims look pretty nice because they're not glossy. It is very dusty, but looking on the back, we do still have the warranty seal intact, and this is from 2012. I need to learn my slim motherboards. It's either Corona or a Trinity, and I don't remember which is which. I'll look it up. Um, I really just need to familiar familiarize myself with the slim motherboards, but let's go ahead and plug this in, see if it works. All right, it's three, two, one. Got life, and let's go ahead and test out this disk drive, see if we've got a free game. Come on, come on. <laughs> Dude, how many, how many people leave games in their consoles? It's just like unbelievable. This game looks pretty nice too. We got a few smudges here and there, but nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and connect up our controller and <laughs> see if there's any save data on this thing. I believe this should have four gigs uh, built into the storage. Let's go ahead, oh, nope. It's one of the ones where it came with some storage, so it has no built-in storage. Why is it? This thing is so quiet, but <laughs> but yeah, so no storage here, uh, which is unfortunate. That the really my issue with not seeing storage on these things is because you can't see any of the past history. Like it's just a, it's basically a blank canvas for an Xbox 360, which is how you want it when you buy it just to play it. But when you're buying it to like explore and kind of get a little background on who played this and make up a little bit of a story here, um, it just makes it so that it's not not quite as interesting when you don't have a profile to look at that sort of thing. But the console is working great. I'll go ahead and throw the profit number on the screen. Check it out down below if you want to buy it. And let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up, we have another console that was uh, probably dropped. I mean, there's just a, a massive gash here in the top and kind of smash up on the sides. I'll be surprised if this hard drive works, but I mean, other than the that top piece right there, this one doesn't look too terrible. You can hear a bunch of stuff rattling around inside. This is from 2008. It appears to be a Jasper motherboard. So uh, this is like one of the OG Jaspers. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. And man, it's, it's crazy how many Jaspers I found in this 900 pound pallet. Now this one, for how much it smashed up, I'll be surprised if it works fully, but we'll test it out. Three, two, one. 
Got a green light. Let's go ahead and see if we got a free game here. Nope, no free game, but the <laughs> dish drive works with no issue at all. It is booting up. It's seriously like ridiculous how bulletproof these Jaspers were. And we got Alter, Sophie, and Mama. All right, Sophie, had, dude, Sophie has zero gamer score. At least Mama played a little bit. She got 100. How do you get 139 gamer score? Hold on. To my recollection, whenever you see, like whenever you get achievement, I guess let's just check out her profile and see what achievement she got that was worth like nine gamer score. Like, what? That That is news to me that you could get an odd number like that. Cloning Clyde, is 59, 15, 14, eight and 12. This is like new to me. I, I didn't even know they had gamer scores other than 10, 15, 20, 25. That is, that's so strange to me. What in the world? Sorry, it's going down a tangent there. That was so random. But what, what games did this, did mom even play? Rock Band 3, Halo Reach. So Limbo, we're like all over the place here. Never played online, I guess, because it says offline for all of them. I, hold on, actually, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. It says 2014. So this console was played about seven years ago. Toy Box Turbos. What, what is that? I got to click on that. What is that? Oh, it's a, it's a racing game. <laughs> what in the world? I, mean, I guess that makes sense when you said turbos. And family settings are not turned on. That's good to see. Let's go ahead and open this disk drive up and see if a game works. We'll try out Block, Black Ops. So that's the, that's the free game we got in the last console. And here we are. This <laughs> game read up no issue at all immediately. Another working console. We're kind of on a roll here, so I want to test out a few Wii consoles next, also from the Texas Slow, just untested Wiis. Uh, all three of them are, wow, that, this one is <laughs> really bad. I don't know what happened to this one. Uh, but just like destroyed, uh, but most likely working, maybe a disk drive issue. But let's go ahead and start. Oh, this one has a note that says untested Wii, like I didn't already know that. But let's go ahead and start with this one right here. We'll plug it in, test it out, see if it works, and see if there's some free games in them. All right, let's turn this one on. Three, two, one. Got a green light. Disk drive sounds good, but I don't, there's no free game in there. Uh, no SD card as well. And looks like you're pretty typical Wii. You've got all the classic channels on here. Check me out channel. Everybody votes channel. All my favorites. Uh, let's go ahead and see if there's some interesting stuff saved on here. Come on, man, another lame Wii. We got four Miis on here. It looks like a family of four that just played like played their Wii five times and quit. I, I don't know, man. Let's go back to the main menu and see when this thing was last played. Okay, so this is weird. I'm in March 2016, and I have a note that this person made their debut in Wii Sports, but there's no evidence of playing. Like, there's no timer here. Maybe there's some, maybe that's a common thing. I don't know. I've never seen that before, but uh, we'll, go, we'll call it March 2016, the last time this thing was played, which is actually fairly recent in terms of the Wii. And next we'll test out this random copy of NBA Live 09 I have. Make sure it reads games. So yeah, surprise, surprise, game is loading up and working. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up we'll test out this really dirty Wii. Do we have an SD card? Ooh, we got an SD card. Hey, so it's got two gigs, plenty for a Wii. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what's on it. All right, three, two, one. Ooh, the buttons are sticky. Ooh, there's a game inside. I heard the click. Let me eject it. Come on. good. Dude, another another copy of Wii Sports. You've got to be kidding me! Like, <laughs> this is like my what, like tenth copy of Wii Sports I've gotten in this lot so far. Uh, again, I'm not too surprised, but it's just it's crazy to see. Let's go ahead and see what's on this SD card. Probably maybe some photos. Let's check it out. Oh wow, 732 photos. Oh, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's see what's on here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, I'm, I, I can't show you what was on that card because, like, I've seen some interesting things, things on these cards. Usually it's, like, a kid's photos. He's, like, got his first camera and is, like, taking just random photos, whatever, nothing crazy. Um, this one had, uh, I'll just say... It's cold! That's by far the the worst one I've seen on the... <laughs> just like, I don't know what to say. I'm not surprised. I got this. I got almost 50 Wii's in this lot. I'm not surprised this was on one of the consoles, but like... <laughs> okay, uh, let's see what kind of Miis are on here. Yeah, this person definitely did not use their Wii to play games. There's three Miis on here. Did they Did they just use their Wii to store those photos? Like, <laughs> it's just amazing they stored those photos on here and just like forgot to remove the SD card before they got rid of the console. Like... Ooh, I don't know if I want to touch this console now. Like, where has this thing been? Well, in other news, the uh, disk drive is not working. Might be because of the disk, though, because the disk is destroyed. I'm not going to say destroyed, but it's very scratched up. Let's try NBA Live 09 and see if that works. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> it was just the disk because it's reading up NBA Live 09 now. You can see this thing is scratched up like crazy. I'll put it in my, in my uh, resurfacing machine and see if it fixes it up because, like, I don't see any super deep. I mean, a few of those are pretty deep, but... I don't know. We'll try to resurface it and see if that fixes it. But if the console is working, otherwise, uh, this 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 whole lot, this whole video is something else. Like the ridiculous things that I've seen and happened, things that have happened in this video. Just uh, I don't even know what to say. But let's try. We got one more Wii to try. Uh, let's see if it works. No SD card in this one. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And no free game either. Man. And hey, we got Wii Fit Plus channel on here. Oh, that's a new one. 
mean, I've seen it before, but you don't see that very often. And then Hulu Plus is hidden at the very end of the channels. Why? Oh, and this one's got a few few uh, me's here. We got, oh, what is that one in the middle? All right, so you got Squidward here. We've got Vampy. Oh, what is that name? Mom. Nice. So all pretty normal stuff except for Squidward. That was pretty funny. Uh, let's go ahead and see if the game works on this thing, though. So actually, first I wanted to boot up the, the uh, Wii Fitness channel, and it feels wrong because, like, Okay, so some of them have locks on them, so you have to have a, have a passcode to see like your weight and stuff. We'll try out Home Dog. <laughs> Let's hear the last recorded. This is your 5,000th day. What in the world? Let's see what's recorded on here. What? <laughs> Home Dog's goal weight is 84 pounds. It's definitely a kid. Actually, the funny thing is, this is a kid like back in, what did it say? I think I saw like, uh, who knows what date it was, but it's probably a kid back in like 2010. So this kid is not a kid anymore. Definitely like in a full on adult with a, you know, full time nine to five. <laughs> There we go, January 2011, Wii Sports Resort. Played. <laughs> it always amazes me when these, these games are played for like three hours one day and then just never played again. Like, I guess they're trying to get their fill before they sell it or get rid of it, but I don't know. You never know when your last day is playing one of these consoles. Uh, crazy to think about, but this console, actually, I didn't even test the game yet. Hold on. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, I'm not gonna boot it all the way up, but it looks like it's working. Uh, so this console is working as well. But guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, there's so much just ridiculous stuff happened in this video. I, I can't believe those. I thought those photos were gonna happen at some point in this journey, but uh, still kind of wild to see it. But thanks for watching, guys. And of course, we'll take all the profit from this video, add it to the rest of our profit. And we're gonna save us some money and keep buying some cool limited edition consoles. Let me know down below what you wanna see next. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. I bought 120 untested PS3s, Xbox 360s, and Wii's, and in this video, we're gonna go through and test and fix about 10 of them and see if we can turn a profit. Guys, welcome to the Texas Load. We're actually gonna start with this $500 Xbox 360 that I bought using profits from previous Texas Load videos, and then we'll test the untested consoles, so let's get into it. And I gotta say, this console was not listed as brand new, but from the photos, it looked almost brand new. So let's go ahead and take this plastic wrap off and just take a closer look at this box. Uh, of course, it came with the game. It's got some cool graphics here. Uh, got your cool, you know, MW2 graphics on the side. And then looking at the other side, it is a 360 Elite. Um, it comes with two controllers, apparently, a 250 gigabyte hard drive. So it's a, it's a beefy boy. But let's go ahead and see what's inside of this thing. And whoo, man, I mean, it looks <laughs> like almost brand new. You've got the, the cool pamphlet there, little startup guide. And here's the console still in the plastic wrap and everything. Let's go ahead and pull it out. So you even got your little, your little black cardboard panels here. I mean, everything, and here's the, even got the game now. Oh, the game is broken. Um, oh no. Oh, that kind of sucks. I guess that probably happened in shipping uh, because I don't think it was like that when I bought it. Oof. Now this is like a $10 game, so it's not a huge deal, but it is unfortunate it got smashed in transit. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully nothing else got smashed. It's surprising though, because this thing was packaged so well. Next up, we have our little pamphlets here, and these are actually in black and white. I feel like these, were these really not in color? That's so strange. And then of course, coming down here, you've got your, your two controllers your uh, you know headset, AV cable, all that good stuff. So let's pull everything out. All right, now of course the first thing I really want to look at here is the console and ooh, that, that is a pretty sweet design and it looks to be in very nice condition. I mean, there's some, there's a few small scratches on the top. Wow, that is not bad at all. Now flipping to the front, looks very good as well. Again, a few scratches here and there, but like, look at this, even the spring is intact. That's, that is, uh, that's amazing. And then here on the bottom, you've got a little bit of debris that I can just wipe off real quick. But other than that, few scratches here and there. And then of course you got your 250 gigabyte hard drive. Now flipping to the back, the manufacture date is August 2009, so it should be a Jasper. Uh, yeah, power port, definitely a Jasper. It could be on an NXC dashboard. Hmm, maybe, probably not, but maybe. Let's, we'll of course check when we test it out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the accessories here. So the things I really wanna look at are the headset and the controllers. And dude, this headset, how does it look that good? This headset looks better than the brand new one I bought in the video last week. Wow, <laughs> wow those things usually deteriorate very quickly. And the controllers here look like they've barely ever been used. Like the thumbstick, yeah, the thumbstick has like a little bit of wear, but not much at all. And it looks, it's even got the sticker here, got the sticker on the back. It looks like a third party, wait, that is interesting. It looks like a third party battery pack, but it's got the little new sticker on it. That is, wait, that's strange. Now the second controller is a little bit different. The uh, thumbsticks are pretty beat up. Uh, but other than that, it's a nice controller. Now let's go ahead and plug this console in and hopefully it works. Got the MW2 console plugged in. And by the way, I have a stack of untested consoles over here that we'll be testing out and exploring later in this video. But let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Hopefully we don't get the red ring of death like last week. So three, two, one, there it is. Okay, got a green light. Let's check out this disk drive. Any free games? Nope, no free games. And man, that thing, hey, it looks really clean in there. I don't see much dust and dirt at all. Open really smoothly. Now let's see, NXE? Nope, not NXE, NXE. That's, that's unfortunate. That's not what I expected, but I was just, you know, had a little inkling, like maybe we'd get NXC, but no. 
nothing there. Now scrolling through here, it does look like the seller factory reset this thing, which is obviously good for the seller. You don't want to send your personal information out to the buyer. Now let's go ahead and, and test out a game. So, you know, as we should, we're going to test out MW2 that came in this package. So here we are, guys, booted straight up in the game. No issues at all. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is this console does not make a cool boot up noise like the Slims do. If you're familiar on the Slim Limited Edition 360s, they do make like a cool, like special boot up noise when you turn it on. This one doesn't, which is kind of unfortunate, but um, of course I knew that going in. But guys, let me know down below what your favorite Limited Edition 360 is. Personally, I think this is one of the best looking ones. Now it is unfortunate the controller is not special at all. It's just a black controller, uh, but it is a very cool looking console with cool designs and that sort of thing. But let's go ahead and move on to the untested consoles now, test them out, uh, see if they work and we'll fix any issues they have. We're gonna start here with another 360 and this one is uh, pretty beat up just like all of them. We've got this nice little puncture here in our memory unit. The bottom almost looks like some stuff was spilled on it, uh, like Coke or something. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. We have a 120 gigabyte hard drive. And yeah, looking at the back here, it's from 2008. And it appears to be a, a Falcon motherboard, which is actually a first in the Texas Load series. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. So Falcon 360s are kind of reliable, kind of in between, obviously, between Xenons and, and Jaspers. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works. So green light, hey, that's a good sign. Disk drive, surprise, surprise, the disk drive is stuck. Let's go ahead and... <laughs> Do our classic here, let's, let's, let's give it a little slap on top and see if it'll open up. And wait, what? <laughs> Dude, as soon as I booted this up, it goes straight to the Windows Media, why did it go straight to the Windows Media Center? Uh, okay, let's, let's test this out. All right, so let's go back, open tray, and of course the tray is not opening at all. We've got Kivo121 on here, already signed in. Let's go ahead and sign out and see if there's any other profiles here. We got, nope, just the one profile. And hey, he's got an avatar here. Let's go ahead and see the last time this got played. Uh, 2015, okay, yeah, not too bad. So and it's just a, a random, actually not very many games on here. We got Pac-Man, MX vs. ATV, Shift 2, Uno, <laughs> just a random mix of games here. Let, let me go ahead and see if I can get this disk drive open. The, the strange thing is that disk drive is making a really weird noise. Oof. I just popped the faceplate off and this whole piece came off. And the, uh, yeah, the warranty seal is broken, so it's definitely been open before. There it is. Okay, wow, that thing is, that band is super loose and I can see all the dust and dirt inside of this disk drive. Uh, so that, yeah, that makes sense that it wasn't opening. Let's try it. Once you get it open one time though, it usually starts opening more frequently. Sometimes, not in this case apparently. But uh, I guess let's go ahead and just try out a game here. We got MW2, of course, the classic testing game. And hopefully it doesn't get stuck in here considering how bad this disk drive is. Um, I got a feeling it's not gonna read because it just like, I don't know, disk drive just sounded off. Yes, yeah, so this disk drive is definitely not reading games. Um, it's been trying to read. Yep, there it is, open tray error. That's not good. But let's just go ahead and see if there's anything else saved on this console for now. Uh, we got just some random games and apps. Yeah, so it looks like this 360 was just not used much, which is surprising considering it's broken. But this is one of those consoles where it's like, should I repair it? Because it's, it's not a very valuable console. It's a Falcon, it's not even a Jasper. If I do decide to repair it, you'll see it now. If I don't, we'll go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, so next up, we're gonna test out a Wii, and I finally came across one of the black Wiis that is GameCube compatible. Like, I think this is the first one I've ever seen in person, but they do exist, apparently. Now, let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it works, and ooh, I hear the sound of a free game. Let's go ahead and see what's in here. I'm gonna guess Wii Sports, but let's see. Oh, wait, wait, just Dance, wait, hold on. Just Dance 2014 for the 360. Dude, what? <laughs> what? The console's working, though. Let's go ahead and test it out. <laughs> Dude, the things I find in these Wiis are just unbelievable. Like. A 360 game in a, uh, let's move on. But uh, we got a, we actually have a lot of channels on here, but they're all basically useless channels now, like Amazon Prime, Hulu Plus, YouTube. Of course, we gotta scroll to the end to see if there's any, any hidden channels. Uh, but let's go ahead and see when this thing was last played. Hey, March 2016, we got Michael Jackson. They played Just Dance 2016. <laughs> and I guess after they played Just Dance 2016, they decided they wanted to try Just Dance 2014 for the 360 on it for whatever reason. I, <laughs> I don't know why. Let's go ahead and try out this. Xbox 360 game, Just Cause 2. One of my favorite 360 games. And dude, another Wii that has only four Miis. Do people just like not create Miis back in the day? Like uh, maybe I was the only one, uh, I, I don't know. But only four Miis. Let's go ahead and check out, uh, let's go back to the main menu and play a game now. All right, we'll test out this copy of Zelda Skyward Sword I found in a Wii a few weeks ago. See if that works. And there it is, Skyward Sword is booting up, so this console is good to go. I'll throw the profit on the screen, and let's go ahead and move on to the next console now. I already have my Wii cords out, so we're gonna test out another Wii here, and look, looking at the top of this thing, it looks like somebody took a knife to it and just like scraped it multiple times. I don't know what's going on there. Do we have an SD card? We do not. Let's go ahead and plug this console in and see if it works. All right, so turning on the Wii, we, oh, no free game. I can always, <laughs> I've turned on so many Wiis now, I can tell from the noise it makes when it turns on if there's a free game in it or not. 
Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, see if this thing works. All right, and this thing looks super basic. Wow, it's, it's got all of the standard channels and that's it. Did, did somebody factory reset this thing? They honestly might have. <laughs> Okay, it, it definitely was not factory reset because the console nickname is Pooh, which is just like Winnie the Pooh. So it's probably some kid that played this thing, which is not surprising at all. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out the Me channel. I got a feeling like if, if a kid was playing this, my assumption is that if a kid played this a lot, they probably made a lot of Wii's, a lot of Mii's I mean, but like uh, clearly I was wrong. There's literally two Mii's on here. This console, dude, this console was just not played at all. The save data says differently. There's like, what is that, nine games saved, which is not too bad. Strange, but let's go ahead and put a game in, see if it works. Oh, <laughs> so this console is so old that it needs a system update. Wow, I, I mean, I guess I don't have a choice. I guess I can eject it and I don't have to do the update. Yeah, okay, if it failed. Let's go ahead and see when this thing was actually last played first. Wow, so I finally found it. March 2009 was the last time this console was played. Wow, they played the forecast channel, the Wii Shop channel, the Mii channel, the news channel, Mario Kart Wii. It, it honestly looks like this person just booted up every single channel possible before they sold their console or something along those lines. I don't know. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and test out the game again. And yep, there it is, guys. NBA Live 09 is booting up and playing without an issue at all. So another working console. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one now and see if we can get lucky again. So I haven't done a PS3 in a while. Let's do a PS3 Slim next. And there's not much to write home about on the outside of this thing other than the fact that it's just very dusty and dirty. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom side. And yeah, you get all the rubber feet. Well, it's missing one. Why is everything? I feel like every single PS3 I come across is missing one rubber foot every time. Like, whatever. The warranty seal is still intact though. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and uh, see if it works. And we got life there. Any free games? There's no blue light, so probably not a free game, but we'll, we'll check anyway. Nope. I never get free games in the, in the PS3s, which is unfortunate. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if it boots up. All right, console booted up, and of course it appears to be factory reset. I don't know why, but every single, almost every single PS3 I come across is factory reset, whereas 360s and, and Wii's are just like never factory reset. And we're here on the home screen, and man, this this console is super quiet. Like, I'm trying to feel, trying to determine if there's even air blowing out of this thing. Like, it's, this thing is so quiet. Maybe it's just the PS3 Super Slims are quiet, but let's go ahead and test out a game first, and then I'll investigate the, uh, the fan a little bit more. And man, like, <laughs> so far, so, ooh. This sounds a little sketch, but it, it pulled it in just fine. And yeah, it's, de it's definitely blowing out air. I guess it's just a super efficient console. So we are booted into the game and it's working with no issue at all. Now this console will be opened up, cleaned out, the whole works. It'll be listed down below on my website. Go ahead and check it out if you want to. And we'll go ahead and do the profit on the screen and move on to the next console. Next up, we're going to test out an Xbox 360 Slim. And the first thing we'll check is if there's a hard drive here. Nope, it is empty. So we'll find out if there's some built-in storage. But looking at the back, uh, the warranty seal looks like it's... Uh, it looks like it's intact. Um, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. Of course, as always, I have my ghetto power supply adapter here. I always like to show you guys that because I think it's just funny. And we got a green light here. Let's check out. I feel like I heard a game in there. Free game? Nope, I did not hear it. What did I hear? I don't know what I heard, but uh, the disk drive is opening just without an issue at all, which is amazing. Um, and the console is turning on, which is good to see. Let's go ahead and connect up a controller. And we do have some profiles on here. We got uh, Ganon, Haley, Harley is Rich, we got Heath. Rycraft 101 and Rylan. So we actually have, yeah, we got six profiles here and ooh, Har oh, Harley is Rich has 10,404 gamer score. Uh, that's like probably the highest I've seen on one of these 360s that, from the Goodwill lot. Let's go ahead and click on this guy. And he's got, he's definitely got the clothes on to look like he's trying to act rich. Um, now let's go ahead and see what's what's going on with Harley here. And dude, this guy definitely is rich. I mean, look, look, at his, look at his avatar. He's got a whole scene behind him. That means he paid some money for a scene, I think. Maybe you can get some for free, but in my eyes, that looks like he probably paid money for that scene. So I guess guess Harley is indeed rich. Now we got Minecraft was the latest game played, and Super Com Supreme Commander 2, Dark Souls. Let's go ahead and see if we can find the last time this thing was played online. All right, so despite there being 51 games, this uh, console was never played online, at least never connected to online. Let's go ahead and actually, I wonder if any of these profiles are even connected to Xbox Live here. Nope, yeah, none of them are. They're all local profiles, so not connected online, so I don't know when this thing was last played. Uh, let's go ahead and try out a game real quick, and we're, <laughs> we're gonna try out Just Dance 2014, which we found for free inside of the Wii. <laughs> I still can't believe there was a random 360 game inside of a Wii console. And Just Dance 2014 is booting up, but I guess it's a Kinect game because it says I require a Kinect sensor. So we're gonna go back to the dashboard now since the Kinect sensor is not uh, connected up here. Uh, but let's go ahead and go through all the profiles and just see if we can find any more interesting stuff. Yeah, so nothing really to write home about about the rest of the profiles. So we're on the storage devices now and you can see there are four gigs built in, which is cool to see. Uh, but yeah, this console is working. Let's go ahead and uh, eject the game first so I don't give away a free game. And uh, let's move on to the next console. So next up, we're gonna do a PS3 Super Slim and like pretty much all of the Super Slims in this slot, it's pretty dusty, dirty, whatever, but um, honestly, it's not too dinged up and this, the warranty seal is still intact. Let's go ahead and see if the disk drive will open up here. Yep, still got that 
Nice little sliding mechanism. And let's go ahead and turn it on and, oh wait, hold on. Oh no, <laughs> the power button is broken. I guess if I plug a controller in, I can turn it on that way, but that's unfortunate. So I guess I cannot turn on the console with a controller without turning on the console first via the power button. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this console up and see if we can fix it. So I have this PS3 opened up and you can see uh, we are basically on the right side of the console where the disk drive is and our power button is right there. So let me just uh, show you kind of what's going on. So you actually probably can't see it, but there's a little piece here on the circuit board that seems to be out of place, uh, where basically where you press the button. So let me, let me take this uh, circuit board out and let's take a look at it. So it's gonna be hard to see here on camera, but you can see we have our circuit board here and the little orange film and this metal piece both fell off of the power button somehow. Usually they're mounted kind of like in the middle right here and that's where the plastic piece, where the power button presses down on and activates the power. Um, so it looks like, to me it looks like this metal piece presses down on a bunch of contacts in the middle and basically uh, completes the circuit and it tells the PS3 to turn on. So that thing was out of place and it's not turning on anymore. So let me see if I can just put that back in place and at least get it to turn on temporarily. You can see now I have the metal piece and the orange film on top of it kind of mounted in place. Now it's gonna fall off again if I mess with it too much, but if we can at least temporarily get it there and turn the PS3 on, we can see, uh, see if there's anything else going on here. All right, got the power button back in place, got the top cover on temporarily back in place as well. Go ahead and plug it in and see if this thing can turn on now. So we do have the red light, let's go ahead and, there it is, nice. So I don't quite trust that piece because I just kind of stuck it on there and it's, it's sitting there for now, but I assume at some point it'll fall back off. So I'll either have to find a better way to secure that little metal piece or I'll have to buy a replacement, which is probably cheap on eBay, but I'll, I'll check. But let's go ahead and boot this console up and see if the rest of it works. What in the world? It says, cannot start the appropriate, appropriate system storage. Oh, <laughs> I'm a moron. <laughs> I still got the, all right, let's do it. Let's try this one more time. So now that the hard drive is plugged back in, let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it'll boot up. Hey, there we go. It is starting up and let's go ahead and I'm hoping this thing's not factory reset. It is. Dude, why is every single PS, not every single PS3, but most PS3s that boot up in the Texas Loader factory reset. It's like, it's like Goodwill tested out all the PS3s and nothing else. Like, it's so strange. Now I probably should have checked when I had the hard drive out, but I'm curious what what size hard drive we have in here. I'm gonna guess 500 again, because that's what we've gotten lucky uh, the last few times we've tested out a PS3 is super slim. So let's let's see here. Got, yeah, baby, another 500 gigs. And then of course, the other thing to note is that we're on version 4.81, which is fairly recent. Uh, let's go, to put a, go ahead and put a game in and see if it works though. Dude, sure enough, game is working. So we got another working console here. Again, I'll have to uh, fiddle with the power button to make sure it's secure for, for good now and not gonna fall off again. Um, but pretty easy fix there, got lucky. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we're gonna do another Wii console. And this console is pretty beat up, just like all of them. We got one flap, no SD card. Flipping over to the other side, it yeah, looks about the same. It's got some weird dots on it, but I'll just go ahead and boot it up and see if it works here. Oh, what? Wait, wait, wait. That disk drive made a really weird noise. Hold on, hold on. It almost sounds like there's a game in there, but it didn't want to eject. Okay, now it sounds normal. That was strange. Now looking at the Wii, it looks pretty normal. I don't see any, yeah, it's like all the standard channels. Check me out channel, everybody votes channel. Uh, we got the photo channel randomly over in the corner. Who knows why? And there's nothing in the disc channel. So let's go ahead and put a, let's go ahead and put a game in and see what it does because uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. So it's working fine. I, that was so weird. I've never seen that happen with a Wii. Basically I booted it up and usually when you boot up a Wii, it like kind of makes, the disc drive acts like it's checking to see if there's a disc and it kind of like makes some noises for about five seconds. This time I made a noise for like one second and then just completely went silent. So I thought there was something wrong, but I mean, it's, it's working. Let's go ahead and just make sure it boots up though. Yep, game is working. Weird. Uh, let's go ahead and just explore and see when this console was last played. Here we go, March 2012, Just Dance 3 for half an hour and then sold the Wii or donated it or whatever. <laughs> it's always funny to see what somebody's last experience was on their Wii. Now, last thing we'll do here is check out the Mii channel. Nothing, <laughs> nothing crazy to write home about on this console, but it is working despite the uh, lack of noise and it booted up, but console works. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And I mean, we already have all of our, uh, our Wii stuff out. So let's go ahead and test another one out here. And this one, hey, it's got both the flaps. Now here on the front, we, we have an SD card. Let's go 32 gigs. Wow, that's actually a pretty large SD card for a Wii. Let's, uh, let's plug it in and see what's on it. Now to be completely honest, I highly doubt our SD card here is gonna be as interesting as the one last week. Just uh, if you guys remember, we saw some, some special stuff on that SD card that I can't describe. It's cold. Hey, we got a free game in here. All right, three, two, one, let's go ahead and see what's in it. Mario Kart, Mario Kart, Mario Kart, Mario Kart. <laughs> Dude, another Wii Sports. <laughs> This is just unbelievable. <laughs> this is like my 12th copy of, of Wii Sports I found in this lot. Like the number of people that leave Wii Sports in their consoles is outrageous, but I love it. It's like a $20 game. And uh, I know there's gonna be a bunch of comments down below saying Wii Sports is not a $20 game. Yeah, well, it, it is. And oh, we got some we got some games, dude. We got 
Mario Kart 64, Super Mario World, two of the absolute classics. Got Netflix. Hey, man, this is shaping out to be a nice console. I bet there's some... I bet there's some games on this SD card. Let's go ahead and check it out. Yeah, never mind. It's empty. Uh, let's go ahead and, first of all, we'll put this disc back in. Make sure eSports reads up. And yeah, there it is. I'm not going to boot it up here. It, I'll, of course, do a full test later. Um, but what, what I really want to do is see if there's anything saved on this SD card. So let's check out the Photos channel and see if there's anything here. Nope, nothing here. So what, why do we have 32 gigs in here? Like, that's what a, what a waste of... What a waste of storage. There's no no save data on the SD card, no... Actually, I guess I didn't check the save data, but there's no games on the SD card, no photos. Uh, so maybe maybe it was a smart person that actually wiped their SD card before they sold the Wii, but um, let's, let's check some more. Yeah, straight up nothing, but we have 243,000 blocks available on the SD card. Amazing. And coming here on the, the Me channel, again, nothing to write home about, uh, but all right, let's go back to the main menu and uh, see when this thing was last played. Here we are, March 2011, we got the Me channel and Wii Sports. So yeah, they... <laughs> They played an hour and a half of Wii Sports and then never again. <laughs> oh, amazing. April of 2011, that's 12 years ago. Wild stuff. Uh, but this console is fully working and it is an awesome console because it's got all these got all these two free games here. Came with Wii Sports. What a what a great console. And man, I'm feeling the, the Wii power right now. So let's go ahead and do another Wii real quick. So next Wii up, I found another black GameCube compatible Wii, which is like a very rare console. This is the, the two I've seen in this video are the only two I've ever seen in my life. And uh, yeah, it's got one flap here, uh, very beat up and dusty. No SD card, but let's plug it in, see if it works, and hopefully we get another copy of Wii Sports. All right, do one, turn it on, and oh, there's a game inside. Let's see, Wii Sports, Mario Kart. Dude, <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's a clean copy of Mario Kart. And here on the home menu, it looks pretty standard. Let's go ahead and scroll over to the end. Nope, no channels over there. And uh, yeah, there's Mario Kart. Let's go ahead and make sure it works. Because last time, last time I got a, car, uh, a free copy of Mario Kart, I booted it up later after the video and it didn't actually boot up. So that was unfortunate. But let's, let's see if this one actually works. Hey, there it is, dude. <laughs> I got Rob and Jin on here. I mean, <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Let's go ahead and see if there's any, uh, any me saved on here. Really? Got Hayden, Jenna, and Rob. Come on, man. I've, I've been really disappointed in the Texas load and how many Wii's just have like so few me's. Like, it, I've talked about this before, but myself personally, me and my family, we were, we were making Miis all the time back in the, the Wii days. Like I had, I don't know, probably 50 plus Miis on my channel, on my, my console. Oh, I'm looking at November 2018. Wow, this is, that's fairly recent. <laughs> what? Dude, did they just leave Mario Kart on all day? 20, <laughs> they played 2359, 23 hours, 59 minutes of Mario Kart. Uh, if they just left the game on and left Mario Kart on, you would think the Wii, you know, maybe it was, was maybe left on from Monday through Tuesday or something, but or through Tuesday through Wednesday, but it's literally only has playtime on Tuesday. So it's like they booted it up at midnight on Tuesday and let it run for 23 hours and 59 minutes and then turned it off. <laughs> what in the world? That's, it doesn't really matter, but it's just so random. And it's pretty recent, November 2018 for a Wii. Another working Wii, another free game, just like crazy stuff. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, next up we have another 360 and I just noticed it's uh, missing the eject button there. That's that's nice. Let's go ahead and see when this thing was... Oops, there's some stuff rattling around inside and wow, it's got a giant dent on the back. When was this thing manufactured? We got a service date of 2012. Looking at the power port, it does appear to be... A, I think that's a Jasper. Yeah, it's definitely a Jasper, but it has a service date. So I wonder if it had a disk drive issue because you just don't see red rain on Jaspers that often. But let's go ahead and uh, turn it on and see if it works. All right, so I'm, am I gonna get my first red ring uh, Jasper here? No, sounds good so far. I gotta take this this uh, faceplate off so I can actually open up the disk drive. Dude, is this NXE? Wow, this is, this is not NXE, but it's like, this is like the, this is, I think they call this the Connect dashboard, which was technically between between the NXE and the Metro. It's, ba it's basically Metro, but I think they called it the Connect dashboard, I think. I'll have to check. Let's go ahead and check the system settings. I have not seen this dashboard in a hot minute, man. It's been a long time. Yeah, 14699. I'll have to look up when that, that date was, but hey, it's 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 always cool to see a different dashboard. And we have um, yeah, we got some memory built in. It should have, yeah, it's got like 256 megabytes built into this console. And dude, that's that's awesome. I don't I don't know if I've ever seen this dashboard, at least not since I had my since I played my personal 360. But let's go ahead and see if the tray opens. And it does, although pretty slowly, and it's got a bunch of dust in there but it is it is opening now let's go ahead and put a 360 game in here we'll try out uh mw2 now of course the unfortunate thing here is there's no profiles which is always sad i always like to explore the old profiles and that sort of thing and yeah this thing booted up playing a game just fine now but let's go ahead and move on to the next console now so last but not least we're going to do a little bonus console here which is a fat ps3 yeah this one's weird because it has a giant x on the top and it does have the warranty seal intact and you can see here on the back is a cech ko1 which i think is either 40 gigs or maybe 80 gigs? I don't know, but we'll, we'll plug it in, see if it works. 
Um, I don't have much hope for it. If it doesn't work, I'm honestly probably not even gonna bother trying to fix it, especially if it's yellow light of death. All right, so we're plugged in now. Let's go ahead and flip this, the on switch on. We do have a red light, three, two, one. Ooh, oh, okay, it's still green. Okay, any, no free game. Okay, but, oh, it's booting up. That's a good sign. Oh, really tricked me there. Hmm, it was even booting up to the main. Okay, let's do it one more time. Yeah, so I've tried it three times now, and every time it boots up to a very specific part of the home screen, and then it dies. After I turned this thing on and off like 10 times, it finally got to the point where I was able to restore the file system. So something's happening now. Maybe it was a bad hard drive. Let's, let's wait for that. Hopefully it makes it through this, uh, this restore here and we get to actually play. Hey, we made it to the main screen. Let's go. All right, let me, let me check this uh, hard drive real quick before it dies again. I, I mean, it seems to me like it was a bad hard drive, maybe. All right, we're on 4.9. 4 That's pretty recent, isn't it? And then um, 70, yeah, so we got an 80 gig hard drive in here. And it's, I mean, it's staying on now. We got Black Ninja 4, we got Hard Try and High. So it's, uh, let's go ahead and check out uh, what these people had saved on here. We got some, some titles in here. So we got FIFA Street Demo, we got the Super Stardust HD. And Little Big Planet, the full game maybe? Hey, that's kind of cool. Now, do oh wait wait, do we have any messages? Dude, we have messages. Yes, let's. Go. <laughs> it's all gonna be a bunch of spam, I bet. We got a link, Hot Girl X. One. <laughs> we got this is from 2019. Wow, this thing was actually played fairly recently, 2019 and 2020. Hi, if you would like to have multiple games with half the price of single game, you can have that with cracked accounts. We post new games like FIFA 20. <laughs> Come join my Telegram channel. Dude, this is so much, it's a bunch of spam. We got, hey, hi, 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 hello. Totally working PSN codes, click this link. Yeah, no thanks. I'm surprised it still saves all of these messages from that long ago. I wanna play, tell me when done, dinner, <laughs> with, with a million ends, you mad? <laughs> that's like a classic, that's like a classic 2012 message when you, you play somebody online and they beat you or you beat them and they just say, you mad? So many messages. Oh, you can see the scrolling bar on the left hand side. Look how many messages are scrolling through. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the very first message is, you have too many accounts. All right, now we gotta, oh wait, wait we gotta check out the scent. What was this guy sending people? You guys, I can't show the words that are on the screen, but I, you guys can probably guess what kind of, what kind of messages this, this guy or girl is sending people. Now, we saw there are three, uh, three profiles here, so let's try out the, uh, the other one. We got Hard Try. All right, so Hard Try has some stuff, but it's mostly just, yeah, friend request, game invites, so nothing to write home about. Now, the other, there's one more here. We got Black Ninja 4. I, I wish you guys could see these messages because they're exactly what you th you'd think they are, but <laughs> I, I cannot show them to you. <laughs> There's no photos or anything. It's just uh, just all the text you would expect from probably 12 year olds. There's a message called "I live in Texas." How how cool is that? Because this is this is the Texas load. Oh, this person lived in Texas. Their PS3 broke in like 2020. They gave it to Goodwill, and now I picked it up from Goodwill in Texas. Hey man, we're making some connections here. Not that it not that it means anything, but it's just just interesting to see. And the amazing thing here is, guys, the last save on here was May 14th, 2023, which is only three months ago, which means this guy was playing his PS3 two months before I picked it up from Goodwill, which is just wild to think about. Like in that span of two months, this guy's PS3, I guess, broke. He took it to Goodwill and Goodwill gave it to me. Just uh, crazy to think about. That's definitely by far the most recent uh, console I've seen in this lot played. Um, and just uh, a yeah, ton of stuff on here. Madagascar 3, Lego Marvel Avengers. And of course, as you can see, the save data goes all the way back to like 2011. I'm glad this thing booted up and I, I just realized we haven't even, have not even tested out a game. Let's go ahead and see if the game works here. And yep, there it is, booting straight up. Oh, wait. Oh, I think it's just loading the multiplayer. I, th I thought it died for a second. It's just loading the game. Yeah, okay, so, so the game's working. This console is fully working. Of course, we'll probably do a more extended test on this because it was just odd how it had red light of death. I'm assuming it just needed the uh, the hard drive to be reformatted and now it's, I mean, Africa was reformatted. It's working fine. But man, just crazy to think about how recent that was. But I'm glad this thing is working now and I'm actually gonna swap out the hard drive since I don't trust this hard drive now. We'll clean it up, everything, and uh, get it listed on the site down below. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, we'll take all the profit from this video and the last video and all the other videos that we still have left. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep saving up some profit to buy some cool limited edition 360s. So let me know down below what you, want me to, what you want me to buy for future videos. And guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. I spent over $3,000 on untested video game consoles from Goodwill, and in this video, we're gonna test and fix about 10 of them and see if we can turn a profit. Guys, welcome to the Texas Load. Also, by the way, I have a $500 mystery Xbox 360 that we'll go through later in this video, but we're gonna start with this untested one right here, and right off the bat, this thing is, uh, of course, very filthy. And yeah, flipping to the back here, we actually have a, wow, we have a Falcon Xbox 360, not a Jasper, manufactured in 2008. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. Plugged in now, and of course, being an older 360, there is a chance of red ring here. But let's go ahead and turn it on. Three, two, one. Oh no! <laughs>
This is actually the first red ring I've seen in this entire lot. Wow. I'm so confused here. That was like an immediate red ring. Like I didn't even get time to even attempt to boot up. Now something we can do here to get a more specific answer on what the issue is, uh, we can press the eject button and the sync button a few times to get the secondary code. So let me go ahead and get that. Now hold on, this might actually not be an issue. A 0001 is apparently a power supply issue. And looking over here, my power supply is red. So maybe, okay, hold on. Let me just try another power supply real quick. All right guys, let's try this again. No, still red. Okay, what is going on here? Oh, oh, wait, it's, hold on, it's booting up. Oh, 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 oh there it is. <laughs> oh, we're on NXC, yes, let's go. So what I'm thinking is there's either too much dust in here, there's some blown caps. Uh, we're gonna get into that later, but for now, we're just ex let's just explore this and see if we can find anything interesting here. We got player one, super creative. Uh, anybody else here? <laughs> oh, wow, we have, oh, we have 10 profiles, nice. We got Enzo, Enzo 23. Jebediah, nice. So first we'll start off by going to the system settings and seeing what dashboard we're on. So we're on 2.0.12.4.16. I'll put some info about that on the screen here. But next up, let's see what kind of games are saved on this console. So we have the classic ones, some trials. Uh, I think these actually, a lot of these I'm pretty sure actually came with consoles, some consoles. All right, so back to the, the OG player one. We've got Connect Sports, <laughs> Tiger Woods 09, EA Sports, Fight Night 3, that's a throwback. Um, yeah, so not too much on here, but it looks like this guy played Call of Duty 4 and got most of his gamer score from that. Um, let's go ahead and see if this disk drive opens. I'm guessing it probably won't. Okay, or it will, <laughs> just perfectly. Let's put a game in and see if it works. Well, no surprise here, game booted up, no issues at all. So this console is kind of good. We're gonna go ahead and uh, try to troubleshoot it some more and open it up and see if we can fix the actual issue. So I have this console stripped down. Let's go ahead and take off the top plate here and see if we reveal some uh, balloon capacitors or something along those lines. And oh yeah, wow. That'll do it. Yeah, I see one, two, three, four, five capacitors that are all blown. Um, yeah, let's take it apart a little bit more and take a closer look. <laughs> all right, yeah, so you guys can see here, there's actually more than I thought. There's one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, they're all leaking. The problem is by the time this video needs to go live, I don't have time to order these, have them shipped to me and actually replace them. So we'll, we'll do this replacement in a future video. Um, let's move on now. So next up, I wanna do another 360. And this one is uh, interesting. You can see the top is pretty smashed up on this grill grate. And then on the back is the really interesting part. It's got a target service plan, which I forgot about target service plans. Like I remember them offering it to me back in the day, but never, never bought one. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it turns on. Also, by the way, I did check there's no hard drive. So hopefully we have some internal storage. The power button is loose. Ooh, but it still works. Um, all right, let's see if the disk drive opens free game maybe. Nope, but it does open. And let's go ahead and see what uh, what dashboard we're on. All right, we have some memory actually. Wow, oh wow, we got some some people with some uh, decent gamer scores here. We got Christy, we got fellow Dust124 with 5,400 gamer score. We got player two, player three. Let's go ahead and check out fellow Dust here. Let's go ahead and see if we can find out the last time this guy played. And oh, last played game, GTA 5. Hey, that means it's played at least at least 2013 or newer. Oh wait, here we go. We got Hexic HD last played in 2015. And that's like scrolling back 30 games back. So my guess is GTA 5 was probably played. I'm gonna throw 2017 out there, no idea. And we actually got instantly 14 on here, which is, that's an expensive game these days. Um, but hey man, yeah, last played in 2015. So nothing too interesting on the other consoles. Let's go ahead and open the disk drive back up, put a game in and see if it loads up. So the game's working and yeah, the console is fully functioning despite the fact that it was clearly dropped or somebody hit it with a hammer. I'm guessing the target service plan did not cover that, which is why I have it now. Uh, but yeah, this console and all the other consoles in this video will be listed on my website down below. So go check that out. And guys, let's move on to the next console. Now next up here, we're gonna test a white Wii, which is GameCube compatible, as you can see. Let's go ahead and check if there's an SD card in here and there is not. Um, now let's go ahead and turn it on and hopefully we get some free games here. Nope, ooh. This drive does not sound good and there are clearly no games in there. Um, but hopefully it, uh, hopefully it reads games. That'll be the real tr real predicament here. And boot it up, looks pretty basic. I don't see any hidden channels or anything. Let's go ahead and put a game in and see if it works. Oh yeah, so we got grinding, we got clicking, we got the whole works here on this disk drive. Now guys, to be completely honest, I'm probably not gonna work on any more Wii disk drives in this series because uh, there's so many tiny little issues that could be going on and it's so cheap to just buy a new Wii or just mod your Wii and not use a disk drive that it's just not worth it for me to try to fix these little tiny issues here. This console will still be for sale, of course, and you can buy it for pretty cheap with a, a broken disk drive. But let's keep exploring here and see if we can find some more interesting stuff. All right, and we have two me. Is this a record? We have two Mii's. Dude, no, nobody played this Wii. Like what, how does this even become bro? I, I guess, okay, I guess somebody could have used it, resold it, the other person deleted all the other old Mii's and then made their own. Wait, this console was actually played pretty recently. 22 minutes back on, what was this, September? No, June of 2021? Two years ago, somebody played this console. Dude, this person made a Mii 
played one time and then never played again. Like, <laughs> well, let me check out the save data as well, because I'll be interested to see how much save data is here. Yes, yeah, Wii Sports, Wii Play, Netflix, not much here. So this Wii was not played much uh, and doesn't even read discs, so kind of a, a crap of a Wii. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, next up I have a black Wii here, and this thing is absolutely filthy. Barely, I don't even really want to touch it. Uh, ooh, and there is an SD card though. Hoo hoo, eight gigs, that's pretty big for a Wii. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what's on it. All right, guys, turn it on, free game, free game. No free game, this drive sounded a little bit weird. We got all the classics downloaded here. We got the internet channel, the check me out channel, nothing on the SD card for photos. Let's check out the uh, save data. Maybe there's some secret games downloaded. All right, so we have, we have save data for two games on the SD card. Great use of space, uh, but at least, wow, at least there's some save data on the SD card. So it was used. Um, now let's go ahead and see when this console was last played. All right, March 2015, we've got Wii Fit Plus, and wow, they played a bunch of channels for like one minute each. I guess that's funny to try to use the the news channel and forecast channel back in 2015. Did, I wonder if you could still use the news channel and, and forecast channel back in 2015. We got a we got a memo as well. This looks like something I would do when I was like 10 years old. It's just make a memo of like random letters and numbers and stuff. Here's another memo of just random stuff. And we got what is that? Six me's. We're stepping up our game a little bit, but but not G68 colon. Whoever uses console had an obsession with just typing in random. <laughs> random numbers and letters. <laughs> so yeah, this console is fully working. Again, it'll be listed down below on my website. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up, we're gonna test out this PS3 Slim that has a giant uh, Sharpie X on it. So I'm assuming it doesn't work. Um, now I'm already making the call now. If it doesn't work, I'm not gonna repair it. I'm just gonna sell this one as is in case somebody wants to pick up a, a console to repair themselves. That's just, I don't know, just making the call. That's how I feel on this one. But let's go ahead and uh, plug it in and see if it works. I mean, oh man, oh no. This thing is filthy, holy crap. Dude, there's so much dust in this. All right, well, let's turn it on and see what it does. We have a red light here, that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and turn it on, and wait, free game! Yes, oh, okay, that was really strange. First of all, there's definitely a free game stuck in there, and second, it uh, turned itself off after like three seconds. All right, so clearly it doesn't work. Uh, now, it still really irks me that Goodwill tested out some of these consoles and then put a giant X on them when they didn't work and said untested, but uh, moving on from that, I am gonna open this console up and see what game is in here because I'm just, Extremely curious to see what game is in this disk drive. So I have a feeling this PS3 is going to be dirtier than the uh, Desert PS3 from DK Oldies, but we're about to find out here. So let's remove the top. And oh, actually, that part is not too bad. Now, the underneath part looked really, really dirty. Um, but of course, we are down here to the, the disk drive. So I'm going to pull the disk drive out. And uh, oh my goodness, like the front of the disk drive is just caked in dust. Wow. But we'll, we'll pull the disk drive out and uh, get the disk out of there. So see what we get for free. All right, remove the top. And hold on now. There's not even a disc in there. My disappointment is immeasurable. Hmm. And my day is ruined. It wasn't that much work, but it looks like I just took the console apart for no reason because there's no disc in there. Like I said, this console I'm gonna sell as is. I'll put it back together, obviously, and anybody wants a shot at, at fixing this thing, then go ahead, I'll sell it for pretty cheap, but all right, guys, let's move on to the next console. So next up, we're gonna do a PS3 Super Slim, and of course, it's missing one of the trim pieces here. I don't know why so many Super Slims miss the trim pieces, but they do. Now, any free, well, I was going to say if there's any free games here, but the latch doesn't work. What? <laughs> All right. Well, no free games. Latch is broken. Awesome. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right. Let's turn. Oh, I just realized it's, an, it's missing the side piece as well. Dude, why? Why are PS3s missing so many random pieces? All right, it's turning on. Latch is still not working at all. Nice, so it, uh, it did boot up, so it says cannot start. The appropriate system storage was not found, so um, I guess let's investigate. Well, that, that'll do it. What is going on here? Dude, okay, so many questions. First of all, the hard drive is gone, so that explains why it's not turning on. Second, somebody put tape on the bottom, I guess, to hold the screws in for the next person. I guess that's kind of nice. And man, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Goodwill at some point in time took the hard drive out and like separated it from the console because I got a comment on one of my recent videos where somebody said they bought a large lot of consoles from Goodwill and they had actually removed every single hard drive from the console. I think they were all PS3s and all the hard drives are gone, which is super sketch. But um, I think I have some spare hard drives, so I'll try to load on the firmware and put it in here and see if it'll work. All right, guys, there we go. It took about five or 10 minutes, but we are booted up to the main menu now and it's working without an issue. Of course, our eject button is still broken, but let's go ahead and put a game in, see if it loads up. So even though the eject button is broken, it should be able to still read the game because, well, I say that, but it's definitely not doing anything. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, I guess our next step is to open the console up, see what's going on here and see if we can fix it. So I have the Super Slim torn down and I can already see part of the issue. Let me just show you here on my camera. So here's the PS3 in question. So that little piece right there, there should be a switch that when you pull push this uh, the cover there, 
that little tab will hit the switch and it'll tell the console to read. Now I have another PS3 over here to show you what it should look like. Um, so basically, you can see on this PS3 there is actually a tab or a, excuse me, a switch that's in place. So when this pushes over, the tab hits the switch and it tells the console to read the game. This is not here, so this console won't even, won't even try to read the game. Um, so that's the first issue. Now, of course, the second issue is the console, the, the disk drive tray, whatever you want to call it, doesn't even slide open by itself. So we're going to keep going down further here and see if we can figure out that issue as well. All right, guys, so I had quite the time with this PS3 Super Slim, um, but it is working better now. It's not perfect, but let me just explain what I did. So I didn't film it because it was just an absolute pain in the butt taking apart uh, these gears and the springs. But basically, I reseated everything and kind of spring-loaded the, the springed gear a little bit more because it just wasn't acting properly. Um, so this took a while to do. Finally got all that back together. It still wasn't acting quite right, so I spent like five or ten minutes just cl cleaning off the rails here on the sides and everything, basically everything around here, just uh, blowing it off with my electric duster, compressed air, using Q-tips and alcohol, and it is working better now. Um, it still needs a little bit more work, uh, but it is at least opening on its own now. The main issue now is just uh, getting that, I need a buy replacement piece to swap out the PCB board so I can get the switch in there. We'll save it for a future video and I'll finish the fix then. And also actually there's one more thing I wanted to show you that I found inside of this console that was probably part of the issue. I found this like little wooden piece here. So it almost looks like somebody stuck a toothpick or uh, they, they stuck something in here trying to mess with the disk drive or the, the mechanism, and I think that's what caused the start of the issue. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and open the $500 Xbox 360 that I bought from eBay, and this is supposed to be a Resident Evil limited edition Xbox 360. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. All right, guys, so here it is, and right off the bat, that call, that uh, the box is pretty sweet. It is banged up a little bit, and by the way, this console was purchased using the profits from the Texas Load, um, and that's kind of the, t the goal of the Texas Load in general, is just to buy some cool, 360 consoles using the profits we make. So you can see here on the side, it comes with the console, game, controller, and what is, oh, it comes with like a, a download for the Resident Evil 5 theme. Of course, a 120 gigabyte hard drive. It actually has a date here on the side. Don't open until March 13th, 09. I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky and this thing hasn't been updated and it's still in the NXE, but here it is, guys. All right, so I really don't know what kind of condition it's in. Um, the, the pictures were like, the pictures were decent on eBay, but nothing crazy good. But yeah, we got the power brick, we got the AV cable, we have a controller here, we've got headset, and oh wait, is that two controllers? I could have sworn it only came with one controller, but well, okay. This came with a connect power cable. I, I don't think it actually came with that originally. I think the guy just threw it in there. Now, let's go ahead and put all this stuff to the side and take a look at the controller and consoles. Sorry, I meant controllers and console. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is probably in the listing. I, quite, I bought it quite a while ago, but it looks like it came with a, what is this, a, a Gears of War controller? All right, yes, yeah, so looking inside of there, that's definitely like rust on the battery pack. Okay, hopefully the, hopefully the other one is, is okay. But yeah, this is, oh, this is nice. I was about to say it's in nice condition, but the X button is stuck, so it's definitely been used a good bit. Yeah, I don't see rust, but I see a ton of gamer juice here. Oof, oh no, this thing is filthy with gamer juice all on the sides, wow. Okay, all right, let's, let's take a look at this, this uh, console here, and hopefully, that looks okay. Oh yeah, that that is a nice looking console. That that red looks a lot better in person than it does in, in, in pictures. I mean, it looks good in pictures, but it looks even better in person. And you even have the red faceplate, power button, everything. Let me go ahead and pull the front faceplate off and let's see if this thing's ever been opened. All right, cool. So warranty seal is still intact. And then this thing was manufactured on January 16th, 2009. So this should be a Jasper. Yep, that's definitely a Jasper. Um, but yeah, looks pretty good. The console looks good at least. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, got it plugged in. Three, two, one. This better be another power supply issue. Hold on, <laughs> in case you haven't, guys haven't haven't noticed yet. Um, yeah, that's a that's a red ring. Okay, hold on. Let me let me do my little trick here to see what their code is. Now I'm starting to think it's something wrong with like my my power strip or something. Okay, let, let's try some other stuff here. Now it's doing the same thing that the console earlier did, where I put in this other power supply, it's 203 watts, and the first couple of times I pressed it, it wouldn't actually boot up all the way, and now it's what? Okay, what is going on? I just got some magic smoke. A cap or something busted. This can't be real life. <laughs> okay, so just for sanity's sake, I went back to the original 360 I started with in the beginning of the video and just plugged in my 175 watt power supply again and it's working fine. So, dude, I'm so confused what's going on. All right, plugged in again, let's try it again. See what it does. So now it's booting up. I'm so confused. I, I'm gonna have to open up this console regardless and see what, what busted in there, because I, I guess it's a capacitor just busted. The next funny thing is I guess whoever sold me this console on eBay didn't reset anything. Still got all those, 
all the saved data on here. Dude, this has been a wild like five minutes. Um, holy crap, there's a lot of profiles. We got Evo 9 GSR. Just a bunch of letters here that I don't can't put together. Um, we got S Splat in 28 with 4,000 gamer score. Let's try out that guy because he's got the most gamer score here, dude. <laughs> See if the tray opens. Yep, the tray does open. That's good to see. Dude, like that, that was so weird. We got a bunch of games downloaded. We got, they're most, uh, mostly trials and stuff. Um, let's make sure we got a 120 gigabyte hard drive here. Yeah, here so. Let's go ahead and put a game in and make sure it works. All right guys, so I just want to make note here. Um, this is the power supply I used earlier when the capacitor or whatever in here went up in smoke. And uh, you can see it's 203 watts. And you'll also notice it's just an AC adapter. This is a third party power supply. I did not realize I was using a third-party power supply, so that third-party power supply might be the reason why this thing just went up in smoke. Uh, it, it was clearly still having some issues before that, but so weird. Um, but yeah, you can clearly see game's loading up. I'm not really gonna do it. Actually, I wanna explore those profiles a little bit and see when they were last played, and then we'll open this thing up and see what's going on inside of it. Um, this goes profile, he says, L4D2 almost here. I have no idea what that means. Um, we'll see when it was last played though. It might maybe recent oh no not at all 2009 wow this console at least this guy has not played in ages <laughs> forza motorsport 3 in 09 okay hold on let me check out some of these other profiles all right this guy's profile says i regret nothing no bio let's see when this thing was last played um 2010 yeah so it, it I, my guess is that the guy that sold me this didn't even test it he just assumed it still worked from the last time he played a little dirty for how much I, I paid for it all right guys i got the console down to this piece right here got the screws out let's go ahead and take the top off and <laughs> reveal what's going on inside of this thing because i can't imagine it's anything good three two one and lift off oh yep there it is i can see Wow, dude, I see like one, two, three, four blown capacitors. Let me strip it down a little bit further and, and get a close-up view of that. Yep, guys, so that'll do it. You can see the four blown capacitors here. You got one, two, three, four. And that one right there is probably our culprit that was that was smoking, if I can focus on it. Yeah, that that is really bad, leaking really bad. Um, that was definitely the one that was smoking out. You can just see it coming out of this corner here. And we'll, we'll replace it in maybe a future video or something. Um, honestly, should not be too difficult. Pretty simple soldering job there. All right, so next up, I'm gonna do another 360 here because I wanna, I'm curious if my third 360 of the day will have another power supply issue. And this one is about like all the other ones, just a black one, has no storage on the side. And it looks like it's from 2007. So, oh, <laughs> dude, that's a spider. <sighs> dead spider in the power port and it looks like it's a oh this is a xenon or a or excuse me a zephyr because it has an hdmi port so that's great it honestly might have a red ring just like unrelated to power supply but let's, let's plug it in and see what it does yeah so definitely don't trust these 360s right now so let me film this as i turn it on i mean it's already made it farther than the last two 360s i think it's gonna boot up Okay, that's definitely a dead GPU. So we got zero, one, zero, two. Yeah, zero, one, zero, two is CPU, GPU, or memory. Yeah, so it's, it's basically, you gotta reflow this console and it's not gonna last very long. It's just, there's no point in even trying to mess with this, which is unfortunate. At least it's a, again, at least it's a Zephyr. It's like, it's not a very valuable console anyway, but I guess let's move on to the next console. All right, one more 360, because I want to end on a positive note on 360s. This one is pretty filthy, missing the door, no hard drive and uh, warranty seal is still intact and of course it's a slim let's go ahead and plug it in and hopefully this one does not red ring i was plugged into a power supply that was not plugged into the power outlet okay there we go it turns on free game please usually i get lucky with free games but no free games today so far and it's booting up so <laughs> finally 360 without the red ring okay that's that's a name uh, let's see when he last played here uh yeah 2013 okay so 10 years ago pretty long time ago not many games here we should have four gigs built in and we do, oh wow, it's got the cloud save, so it's pretty updated, pretty recent. Um, but yeah, four gigs here. Let's go ahead and put a game in and make sure it works. All right, yeah, and boots right up, no problem at all. Let me actually just check real quick and see if there's any other profiles other than Mr. McGiblet. <laughs> I'm so glad I clicked on this. Yeah, okay, looks like a, the ultimate Chad. Last played in 2013. Uh, yeah, so not too much on here. Definitely played a little bit more than the other guy, but <laughs> so nothing crazy. <laughs> oh man, finally, glad to get a 360 that did not red ring. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next console now. All right, next up we're gonna do a Nintendo Wii. We got a white GameCube compatible one here. Of course, it's pretty beat up and dusty as per usual. No SD card. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works. I really hope you get a, th oh, yes, there's a game inside. Finally, a free game. Wii Sports. Hey, Animal Crossing, that's a pretty good one. Now, this one is extremely scratched up, so it might not even work, uh, but we'll, we'll give it a try. 
<laughs> but then we got games like this that are scratched like crazy and works without an issue. So, hey, that's a good score. Animal Crossing is probably like a $15 to $20 game, I would assume. Now, the cool thing is this console has a lot of save data on it. Let's go ahead and see when this console was last played. Hey, April of, wow, April of 2020. That is, hey, fairly recent. And yeah, they played Animal Crossing City Folk for seven minutes. Oh no, it's horrible. <laughs> She's gone, what is this from? Uh, last thing we'll check here is the me situation. I'm hoping we can, I still haven't found a console in this entire lot that has like a ton of Mii's downloaded. Most of the time it's like two, three, four Mii's, which is disappointing in my eye. Finally, here we go. Okay, we got like 25 here. So this is this is sufficient. I'll, I'll count this as passing. We got, <laughs> we got Dweeb here. This is what I like, like people create, getting creative and making weird stuff. We got, oh, fat, <laughs> fat G-Paw, fat, fat grandpa. <laughs> that's hilarious. Mom, that's like a classic mom look. Mr. Normal. <laughs> Dude, that looks kind of like my me. Hey, let's go. And of course, another news, the game did boot up and is working, so awesome. The game is worth almost as much as the Wii itself, <laughs> but this console's working. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, we got another white GameCube compatible Wii, and this one is, it actually has both flaps, which is a pretty rare occurrence in these days, and no SD card, but overall, this is actually a pretty clean Wii. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. Ooh, and we got a game inside. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess Wii Sports again. I mean, Wii Sports is the most popular game to come out of these consoles, so... <laughs> And second most popular Mario Kart. So what, what do you know? This one's a bit scratched up, but I've seen worse, dude. Again, another game that's arguably worth more than a Wii console itself. I love getting into these, uh, these mystery games in here. And boot it up, we got the internet channel, Netflix. So this console was actually used fairly recently if it has Netflix on it. And yeah, Mario Kart Wii is opening up. Let's go ahead and see when this console was, was last played. Wait, another one in 2020? Wow. Mario Kart Wii for 50 minutes, and then that was the last time. Hey, two in a row with a bunch of Mii's. That just warms my heart. Hot Dog 2. I love I love the names people give their Mii's. Dude, I found Dad, and it's like the classic Dad look, as always. So yeah, Matthew here looks kind of like my Mii. Man, they're stealing my style here. Mm. And last but not least, you can see the Mario Kart is booted up and working. So uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you think. And hopefully we hit our profit goal. I'm not actually sure right now if we did. I'll throw it up on the screen if we did. Hopefully we did because I want to pick up that cool console. Um, so guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. I bought 24 untested PS3s from Goodwill and in this video, we're gonna test and fix about eight of them and see if we can turn a profit. Guys, welcome to the Texas Load. By the way, my profit goal is $700 because I want to buy these two limited edition Xbox 360s, so let's get started. So we're going to start with Mr. PS3 Slim right here, and <laughs> as most of the consoles in this lot, this one is filthy, covered in dust and dirt, uh, and the warranty seal is removed, so I won't be surprised if it's not working, but let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. So the console did boot up, it is clearly factory reset, now we're booting to the main menu now, but let's go ahead and put a game in, make sure a game works, and uh, yeah, this thing is purring, like it is super quiet. Some of these Slims, man, they run, they run great. All right guys, so this game is working and let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right guys, so fast forward, I just tested three PS3 Slims. They all worked fine, we're all factory reset, so nothing interesting to see. We're gonna move past those and actually go straight into a 360 now and see if we can find something interesting. And right off the bat, I can tell you this one's gonna be uh, sketchy because it has a service date of 2009. It appears to be a, um, a Xenon motherboard, so it probably is red ringed, but we'll plug it in and see if it works. I also just discovered that there's a bent pin inside of the AV port. I'm hoping that doesn't mess anything up, but let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see if it red rings. We'll video it here because I don't trust it. So three, two, one. All right, it's booting up. Okay, I think it's gonna work. Okay, okay. Disk drive. Let's go, big game hunter. Best game of all time. Um, surprisingly, it's, no, no, never mind. It's, it's pretty dirty. Um, now, I don't see any picture here. Like the console clearly booted up. There's no red ring. You got a free game, but there's no picture. So um, that's cool. Oh, wait, <sighs> what just happened? Okay, so <laughs> there was no red ring when I turned it on and then I unplugged the AV port and realized that I actually had the AV switch on the HDTV instead of just regular uh, TV. I plugged it back in and now it's got a three rings. Like, <laughs> All right, let's get the secondary code here. Zero, zero, two, two. Let's see what that is. So I looked up zero, zero, two, two, and it looks like something I can't repair. It's either a bad GPU, bad HANA chip, bad CPU, um, or it could be some broken traces, or if somebody JTAG this wrong, there could be an issue. Uh, basically a bunch of things that are, you could fix, but would be a temporary fix, but let me go ahead and take this faceplate off and see if this thing's been open recently. All right, so we can probably rule out it being a, a bad JTAG or a broken trace because the seal is still intact, so nobody's opened it up since it had a service date. It probably just has a you know bad GPU, bad CPU, whatever. Um, unfortunate. Now what I'm gonna do here is take the hard drive off and we'll try the hard drive on a known working console 
and see if that works and just see what's on it. So I have the same hard drive into a different console now, a known working console, and we can see we do have some profiles here. We got AZN Pride 17, KC51, Lindahl 15, and we're gonna put up KCM because uh, they got a 4985 gamer score, which is decent, um, better than most of the ones I see. So let's see what's the, uh, see when the, see when it was last played. Oh, that's legendary. What a legendary statement, just straight up Kmart. That's, that's funny because Every day I'm hustling, let's go. This is another uh, epitome of a, of a 360. And of course, the last game played is Big Game Hunter, which is the one that was left in that console. So this person was playing Big Game Hunter, really getting it on, 590 gamer score, and then boom, Red Ring of Death. Um, and you can see that the, the last time it was online was in 2013. This, place, this person was playing NBA Live 07 in 2013. It's a, a bold move. Um, <laughs> Which is funny to see. But going back to the Kmart thing, I think it's funny because I actually posted on my community tab like less than a week ago about buying GTA 5 from Kmart back in 2013. I just thought that was kind of funny. But let's go ahead and check out the, uh, the other profiles here. There's no way. I just booted up AZN Pride 17 and it says, let's go. Like, <laughs> that is that is the, oh, that's like that's like what mine is. That's what mine should be. And the last, last played game was NCAA football 2010 back in 09. Uh, so nothing too crazy. Got a little mix here of games. Um, let's go ahead and check out the last profile here. And after those last two, I really hope this one has something legendary on it. We got, nope, nothing. That's unfortunate. Uh, last played in 08, wow, 15 years ago. All these people though have decent gamer scores. Um, let's go ahead and see what games are saved on the hard drive. It's nothing much, just a bunch of trials. And I think it's a 20 gig hard drive, but let me check. So indeed it is 20 gigs, so the console didn't work, but we got a cool hard drive. That's always good to see. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we have another PS3 Slim, and uh, surprise, it has all the rubber feet. That's, wow, just amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and boot it up and see if it works. Well guys, surprise, the console works. It was factory reset, and uh, the game works. The only weird thing is that the buttons like don't make any noise, but it doesn't really matter because it works otherwise. So uh, let's move on to the next one. So up next is another PS3 Slim, and it looks like it's been snowed on because it's like all white up here. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, but we do still have the warranty seal intact, and we got a ton of just grimy stuff around the edges. And actually, all four rubber feet, rubber feet are intact. But let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it's factory reset. This is unreal. Another PS3 that was factory reset and works fine. All right, on to the next one. Well, guys, you can probably guess what happened with this console. Booted it up, works, factory reset. Uh, just unreal. All right, guys, so I just went through three PS3 Slims that were all factory reset and working fine. Uh, it was almost like I'm scamming Goodwill at this point because of how many working factory reset consoles are giving me, but we've, we finally hit a PS3 Super Slim that is working as well, but factory re it's not factory reset, and we have a, uh, a free game here. We got Call of Duty Black Ops, which is cool to see, but let's go ahead and explore this one. Oh, yeah, we can see their messages. Let's go. This is the, my favorite part. We say, what part of Texas are you from? I live in Temple. And surprise, surprise, this console's from Texas because I bought it from Texas. All right, so we got, that should be like 250, I think, version 4.8, but let's go ahead and go back to this message box and see if I can come across anything interesting here. Message me when my dad wakes up. Well, shouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> what? All these messages are from 2014. <laughs> we got this PS3 scan right here. We got a message that says, Dear PSN users, we are still very, feeling very sorry about PSN being down. Because of this, we are not only giving away two free games, we're giving away $50 funds. Yeah, sure you are. Of course, all the game invites are for Black Ops 2. Not surprising at all. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here's the, this is like classic 360 and PS3 messages right here. Let's go ahead and put in this Black Ops game and see if it works. All right, well, surprisingly, Black Ops is working despite it having a bunch of scratches on it. Um, it's not worth that much anyway, but let's go ahead and go back to this main menu and I kind of want to see if there's any, anything else interesting saved on here. All right, guys, so this is just Blu-ray drive data utility, but we got this guy, he watched some Curse of Chucky and the Wolf of Wall Street. Um, doesn't do us any good, but just interesting to see. The user's name is Little Texas. That's amazing. All right, so checking out the last time this, wait, wait, okay. That's when I just played. <laughs> I just booted that up and I guess it, it made a pro, pro, player profile. Uh, but before that, it was last played in 2016 when they watched YouTube. How much you wanna bet this guy watched my channel? Probably not, but that would be funny. We got FIFA 11 back in 2015, ya yeah boy. Unsurprisingly, we got GTA 5 back in 2014. Only played to 1.6% of the game. That's kind of lame, not gonna lie. So I just connected to the internet and updated the console. I'm gonna try something a bit sketchy here. Um, under the chat room, this guy still has this login info saved here. So we're gonna try to sign in and see if it works. Yeah, so I have to scan this QR code and sign in on my device, uh, which is not gonna work because I don't actually have this guy's password info. So. Uh, and now his password just disappeared. So that's, that's actually a good security feature by Sony because you don't want randos like me signing into people's accounts, especially people who are gonna actually like steal their info. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess, good for this guy. I really just wanted to sign into this guy's account and message his friend and be like, hey buddy, I got your friend's PS3 here. 
and see what he, uh, just see what would happen. But uh, yep, no dice. Let's go ahead and turn this console off and move on to the next one. So unfortunately, I'm fresh out of PS3s for today, but I have some Wii's and 360s still to test. And we have this Wii in a Just Dance 4 box, which I think looks pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside of the box. And of course, this is still part of the Texas load and it looks pretty basic. We got like one piece of cardboard. We have a Wii sensor bar, a AV cable, and wow, it's one of the very rare white Wii's that does not have uh, GameCube compatibility. Now, is there an SD card? There's not, but this console is, hey, it's pretty clean compared to most Wii consoles, and we do have some stuff down here. We have, you know, the, the manual, the inserts, the uh, my Club Nintendo advertisement, and of course our power brick, but nothing else. I'm really hoping Just Dance 4 is inside of this Wii. So Wii is on, but no free game, which is unfortunate. I always like to get some, <laughs> some free games in the Wii. Oh, we got a lot of channels, nice. Uh, first thing we'll do here is We'll put a game game in and see if it works. All right, cool. So Wii Sports is working, and next up we're gonna check when this thing was last played, which is honestly my favorite part. Oh, here we go. June 2013. We've got Dangerous Hunts 2011. What a <laughs> random game to play. Oh, okay. So we got a we we also have a note about the Wii U on this page. So this person probably transferred the Wii U stuff on June 1st, 2013, which makes sense. But honestly, if they transferred their stuff, I don't think there'd be any like save data left. So I, maybe that didn't happen, I don't know. And of course, last but not least, you have to check out the Miis and another lame one, we got three Miis here. We got Bubba, we got Kayla with a big smiley face and Sid. All right, cool. Well, uh, let's move on to the next console now. All right, next up, we'll do another Wii here. We have a GameCube compatible Wii this time. Very dirty and stuff, of course, uh, no SD card. And uh, yeah, let's plug it in, see if it works. Let's go, baby. We got Punch-Out, we got Super Mario, we got Ninja, Ninja Gaiden, we got uh, Ghosts and Goblins, King of the Monsters, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, <laughs> Double Dragon, and Life Force. Hey, man, like, I cannot complain about that. So just a little background for you guys, in case you didn't know, back in the day, you could download classic games from the Wii Shop channel, and that's why they're all on here, which is awesome to see. And uh, yeah, we got a game in here, and it's working, and the last two Wiis are actually, like, they sound perfect. Like I come across a lot of Wii's that work, but they're kind of loud. The last two, pristine. And yep, Wii Sports is working with, without an issue. Now the one thing about the classic games is I think a lot of them you actually have to have a Wii Classic controller, I think, if I remember correctly. But let's go ahead and check when this thing was last played. All right, August 2014, we got Wii Sports for 38 minutes. And then we got Smeghead put in some Wii Fitness results, which is odd because it's not under the play data. Okay, whatever. But unfortunately, they did not leave Wii Sports inside of the console like everybody else does. But let's go ahead and see uh, how many Miis we have on here? And we got f four, dude, come on. We got Wes, Smeghead, D, and Mace. Macy, I, I don't know, lame again. This console's working fine. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, guys, next up, we got a PS3 Slim, and this is a matte one that looks pretty nice. We got the warranty seal intact, and ooh, it's GameStop certified pre-owned. Uh, it was reformatted on 9-3, so September 3rd. I wish it had a year, because that'd be very interesting to see, probably like 2010, who knows. See if we have a hard drive here. All right, no hard drive. Hopefully it has four gigs built in, but let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. Probably gonna jinx myself here, but the 360 Slims have been super reliable in this entire series, run really well. Let's see if there's a free game, please. Oh, dang it. I was hoping to get Wii Sports in my 360 here. And yeah, we got some saved. Oh, this guy's this guy's got 12,000 gamer score. Hey, so we got ATX Deception, we got Got Stars, we got I Am The Butthole 1234, just a great name. OG Dora, Yo Daddy 360. Uh, so we got somebody, this is like a full family or a, a dorm room or something. Just a full, full suite of people. We got some mimes here. Let's go ahead and log in as uh, I am the butthole because we just, we just got to. So checking out this guy's profile. He last played in 2017, which is actually fairly recent. Now let's check out the more interesting profiles now. All right, so ATX Deception. Yes, his, his message is your mom. Let's go. I live in Texas. Dude, perfect. Your mom and I live in Texas. Like, I can't ask for anything else there. This is... This might be the best profile I've ever seen on the 360. All right. Uh, last played in 2016, Modern Warfare 3. There's not many games. It, wait, hold on. This is the guy that had a bunch of gamer, like a large gamer score, right? Oh, yeah, never mind. This is the guy that had 850 gamer score. I thought I booted up the guy that had 14 or 12,000 or whatever. Let, let me check out the guy with 12,000. Okay, here, here we go. Yeah, we got Got Stars is the guy with 12,000. Drizzy, okay. L yes, lick my nuts. Let's go. Perfect, perfect bio. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, that last played in 2016. And yeah, he's got uh, 70 games he's played. Which, which makes sense. Um, let's see the first time this guy played. First time he was online was 2012 with NBA 2K12, but it looks like he got no gamer score at all, so that's interesting. Le hey, Lego Indiana Jones. I played that game a lot back in the day. I don't know why, but it was. I always loved Lego games. Always cool to see the uh, the mix of games here. Let's go ahead and boot up to the, uh, or, or sign out and get to the other profile now. All right, I have high expectations for Yo Daddy 360 considering 
what the other profiles had on them. This one's got to have a good bio and message. I really hope so. Oh, come on, man. You got the name Yo Daddy 360 and you don't have a message on your profile or anything? God, lame. Let's go ahead and put a, let's put a game in and see if it works. All right, sweet. So the game is working. Of course, this console will be listed on my website down below, so check it out. And uh, man, what a great console. What a, some great profiles on here. Let's move on to the next one now. So next up, I have probably the dirtiest we have ever seen. That looks like insect stuff. I don't know. But there's no SD card in here. It is a blue console, though, which is cool. But let's plug it in and see if it works. My prediction for this console is there's a free game, but it doesn't work. And let's see if that comes true. Ooh, we got, yeah, X-Men Origins Wolverine. I don't think that's worth hardly anything. And oh, man, that con that game is like mutilated there, but we'll put it back in and see if it reads up. And yeah, we got all standard standard channels here. What? I don't know if I've ever seen that message before. Yeah, so this drive is definitely broken, not even spinning up at all. I think I mentioned this in my last video, but I don't even bother fixing Wii disk drives anymore because there's so many tiny little issues that could be wrong. And you can buy a working Wii with a working disk drive for like very cheap. So it's not even worth it for me to fix these Wii disk drives because of, you know, how many I have in this, this whole lot. Let's go ahead and find when this console was last played. All right, apparently this Wii was just never played because there's no data on it at all. <laughs> Let me check the save data real quick. So there's actually a lot of save data here. I'm not sure why it's not showing up um, in the, you know, the calendar or whatever, but let's go ahead and check out uh, the me situation here. Oh, jackpot. Finally, somebody, a man of culture here. We got a butthead. Heck yeah. We've got, uh, we got another butthead. We got Kale, Dad. We, 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 pee pee. <laughs> All right, guys, well, this Wii at least partially works. It'll be, again, for sale down below if you want to get a cheap Wii, but let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, next up, we'll do a 360 because this one seems very intriguing. Uh, we have a Turtle Beach sticker on top, and, of course, the console's dirty. And then here in the back, we have a manufacturer date of 2008, and it appears to be a Falcon motherboard. And, of course, it's a white console with a black hard drive, so it's a, a mismatched console here. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. So my prediction here is the console turns on, but it, the disk drive is stuck. All right, three, two, one, let's plug this console, or turn this console on. Got a green light, but that doesn't mean much because it could red ring. Got any free game? Hey, well, I, <laughs> it's stuck, of course. I haven't seen a stuck disk drive in quite a while, actually. And hey, it's, it's booting up. That's a good sign. Oh, I tried the disk drive a second time and it opened up without a problem. And we got, hey, we got some profiles here. Let's go. What is going on? We got Fatal Draken. He's got 17,000 gamer score. Nice, looks like a surfer or something. I rove, I rove Roo. Add me on PS4, Fatal underscore Dragon. All right, guys, go ahead and do it. He said to. Uh, we got Black Ops 2 is the last game played. Skate 3, oh, man of culture. All right, last game that was played online was Titanfall back in 2017. So, yeah, it looks like this, this guy definitely got a PS4 in 2017. I was like, all right, screw the 360 onto the PS4, which is, I think, what a lot of people did. Uh, Dark Souls, Skyrim, Roos, and, of course, GTA 5. Like, you can't play 360 without GTA 5. And first game he ever played here was Ultimate MK3 back in 2010. Uh, so this is definitely like a secondhand console here. And oh dude, we have a lot of profiles here. Wow, okay, let's go ahead and surf through here and see if we can find something interesting. Keep it 300. <laughs> All right, last played in 2016, Modern Fair 2. He's got 106 games played. Wow, that's that's impressive. Next up we got Connor Witt 1. Uh, step up and do something. I got those hands. <laughs> these are These are gold, man. This is like, oh man, there's so many profiles on here. I, I bet every single profile has some ridiculous saying here. Next up, we got Crazy Height, with a Minecraft character. And all of them like actually have a decent gamer score. Like even the, the worst one I've seen so far is 6,000, which is nothing to sneeze at. It's, it's nerf or nothing. <laughs> You're not leaving till someone tells me. Last game played was 2K15 in 2015. All right, makes sense. Next up is Fire Skater with 6,000 gamer score. Got a Halo uh, helmet on here. Lame. No message, no bio, no nothing. Come on, man. Last played Minecraft in 2016. Oh man, you're letting me down here. All right, we got Forfeit Light 18 next up, and this guy is like a ghost. 8,000 gamer score, 117. What does that mean? Last played in 2015. All right, strange. Next up is the Texan Ninja. Let's go. <laughs> yes. No bio, no message. Come on, man. Oh, he had so much potential. All right, but next up, of course, we'll of course uh, test out a game here, see if it works. So surprisingly, the game is reading and loading up. Now it's making a kind of strange noise. My guess is the rails need to be re-greased because it's just making like a squeaking noise. Um, and of course we need to replace the rubber band. So let's go ahead and open this console up and see if we can get these uh, this thing like cleaned up a little bit. All right guys, so I just opened up this 360 and <laughs> my goodness, it might be the dirtiest 360 I've ever seen, at least in the past, you know, three or four years. Like, look at the side there. Holy crap. Like, the, the camera does not even do it justice. It looks even worse in person. Um, I'd say it rivals the Desert PS3. I don't even know why I don't have gloves on right now. At least I can wash my hands. But, like, wow, this thing is just covered. It's the Desert 360. I mean, let's, let's go ahead and open up the disk drive, though, and see 
what's lurking in there. So between what we just saw and what I'm looking at now, I can definitely see why this 360 was having issues. You can see just like inside, filthy all along the rails on both sides. And then I, I would imagine these clumps right here of hair uh, are probably the main culprit for why this console was having issues reading games. So I have this disk drive mostly cleaned up now. We'll, we'll finish it up later, but I have the main components cleaned so we can do this demonstration here. But uh, basically what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do three things. I'm gonna replace the band that goes right here that makes the disk drive open and close. I'm going to re-grease these three rails and I'm gonna clean the uh, laser right here. So we'll start with the band. I just have a little bag of them here. Um, some are better than others, but we'll try this one. And uh, you can either use your hand if your hands are clean or you can use a, you know tweezers or whatever, but we're just gonna try to thread it in here, basically along this, uh, this little wheel and this wheel. So that's in place now and you can see it's running nice and smooth back and forth. The next thing we're gonna do is clean the laser. So I have some 99% ice purple alcohol on this Q-tip. We're just gonna lightly do some swirls around here, get off any dust and debris and then switch the other end and just dry it off. And that should do the trick if there's any, you know, any dust or anything on the laser. And then last but not least, we're gonna take another Q-tip, take our white lithium grease, um, get a little bit on the Q-tip or you can squeeze it right on the rail and we're just gonna, you know, spread it lightly across the rails. You know, you don't want too much and you don't want too little either. It's kind of a kind of a balance. So I have those rails greased up now and we'll put everything back together, well, partially back together and test it out. Hopefully it works. There is a chance that, you know, there's just a bad laser, bad motor, uh, you know, a few different things that could be an issue here, but we'll plug it back in and see what it does now. All right, plugged in now, let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, so does the tray open? Let's see. Definitely better, still still not perfectly smooth, but. Yeah, that's, that's pretty darn good for how <laughs> for how dirty this console is. And then next we'll put MW2 in and see what that does. All right, so the console is working. I think it's loading faster than it was before. And actually before I couldn't even make it to the multiplayer menu, like it just like kind of stalled out and froze. Uh, so it's definitely doing better now. It's still making, sometimes making that weird noise, like squeaky noise. Uh, so my guess is that it's just like a, it's a laser going out or a, a motor going out, but it is working for now. But yeah, unfortunately I don't have a motor or a laser to replace with this console right now before this video needs to go out. So we'll just leave it as is right now, but it is fully working. Um, just a little bit loud, but that's just kind of how 360s are. But let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up we have a GameCube compatible Wii. Of course, missing the flaps. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works though. And ooh, we got a game. All right, Wii Sports, probably. Let's go ahead and check. <laughs> Dude, you can't make this up. Another copy of Wii Sports. Just ridiculous. This, this game itself is almost worth as much as this console. Just amazing. But, um, <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. Channel's pretty basic. Wii Sports is loading up. I'll assume it works. We'll test it in depth later. But let's go ahead and see when this console was last played. All right, March 2014. We got something on the screen. Oh, pfft, useless. Here we go, February 2013. Yeah. Netflix for three hours. Wii Sports for about an hour. And then... That was it. Of course, next up, we gotta see if there's any me's here. We got a few, solid number. We've got David, Donna, Leslie. Dude, these are like normal me's, like normal people with normal names. <laughs> oh, except for that one, okay. Yeah, other than that one guy, it's all pretty normal me's. Uh, so the console's working, which is good to see. Free copy of Wii Sports. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Next up, I have a black Wii. It's got a torn sticker on top, very scratched up and no SD card, but let's plug it in and see if it works. I accidentally press the eject button and there's no disc in there, so that's unfortunate. All right, boot it up to the main menu. No free games. We got all the standard standard apps on here. Let's go ahead and see if a game works. And yep, Wii Sports is working. Let's go ahead and see when this console was last played. January 2017, we've got, <laughs> what a good dog. <laughs> Why is this here, but there's no record of how much was played? Oh, that's strange. Anyway, the, uh, oh, Skylanders Trap Team for three hours. Wii Sports Resort for an hour. Wow. This person played for seven hours this day. Played all day. But uh, 2017, so hey, that's kind of recent for a Wii. Let's go ahead and check out the Miis now because <laughs> after seeing that Mii that was saved on there, uh, I bet we're gonna find some interesting ones here. Oh yeah, here we go. Literally every single person except for like two Miis have beanies on. <laughs> Why? Ninja Seven, oh wait, there's, <laughs> there's Ninja Seven, Ninja Nine, Ninja Eight, Bank Robber, <laughs> Ninja 3, Ninja 4, Ninja 5. Well, hey, the console's working. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, I have a 360 Slim. It's a glossy one, so very beat up and no hard drive inside. So I'm not sure if it has four gigs or not, but we'll check. I'll just go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, three, two, one. Got power, disk drive. Ooh, get, hey, baby, let's go, GTA 5. Uh, but it's only disk two. So what is that worth? Like maybe 10 bucks, probably not, but that's kind of funny to see GTA 5 in there. There must have been a hard drive in here at some point because you gotta download a bunch of data to play GTA 5. So there's definitely not gonna be any storage built in. Yeah, there's no storage at all. The game is loading up. It's gonna give me an error code here though. Yep, there it is. All right, so you gotta plug in the uh, disc one to, to install it, but at least we know the disc drive works. Let's go ahead and go back to the main menu, turn this thing off. And I luckily found another hard drive we had just lying around in the lot. So I'm gonna plug this in and see if there's anything on it. 
Like, what are the chances? I just put in this hard drive, it was formatted. But the console does work and we got half of GTA 5, which is kind of cool. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully we hit our profit goal. I'm assuming we probably did because we got a bunch of working PS3s and those are pretty valuable. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. I bought 95 Xbox 360 and Wii consoles from Goodwill, and in this video, we're gonna test and explore about 10 of them and see if we can turn a profit. Guys, welcome to the Texas Load. So my profit goal for this video is only $50 because I'm planning to sell all these consoles as is for pretty cheap prices, so let's go ahead and start with this first one. So starting off, we got a Black Elite Xbox 360 with a 120 gigabyte hard drive, and it appears to be a Jasper motherboard, nice. So uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and turn it on and see if it works. All right, our console's plugged in now. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it does. And there it goes. Hey, we got life. Any free games? Nope, but the disk drive works perfectly. Let's go ahead and see if it boots up. And hey, we got some profiles here. We got backwards, I don't know how to say that. Frontwards Panda, Hooters, <laughs> Player One, Waffle Sauce, and Waffle Sauce. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we do have some profiles. Let's go ahead and explore a little bit. So just a note here, uh, Danny seemed to have figured out the whole <laughs> the whole naming convention here. It seems that the first one is backwards bear, and the other one is frontwards panda. I, I, I don't know what's going on here, but that, that seems to be the answer. I, I don't know if there's a deeper meaning behind that, but uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting, I guess. And yeah, like I showed you, this tray actually works perfectly. Like, that's the best one I think I've seen in the entire Texas Load lot. Let's go ahead and check out this guy's, guy's profile. Nothing special. Last played in 2011, playing in some Halo 3. Nice. I also got MW3, FIFA 12, so... Uh, pretty standard, you know, probably dumped his 360 once he got to the Xbox One and, and uh, PS4, that sort of thing. Got some random just game trials. Actually, there's a lot of trials on here. Yeah, huge mix of stuff. TMNT, 1989 Classic Arcade, uh, Switch Ball, just tons of stuff on here, more than I usually see on consoles. Now, of course, next up, we'll check out these other profiles as well, see if there's anything interesting going on. So here in front where it's Panda, uh, I don't know what to make of this avatar, but all right, uh, 35 gamer score, played some Halo 4 and castle crashers back in 2011 so not much to write home about yeah it definitely looks like a that looks like a hooters profile like i i'll leave it at that always offline same games uh, nothing special <laughs> all right and waffle sauce and actually played back in 2013 so uh, he's by far the most recent here. So I actually decided to check out this guy's game videos and it's always funny looking at these thumbnails because of how blurry they are. But this is like straight up, you know, 2010 kind of stuff. Fallout 3 trailer, Halo 3, couple episodes here. Announcement and Halo 3 Believe. We've got E3 from 2007, just uh, funny stuff. But let's go ahead and boot up this game and make sure it works. All right, cool, so the game is working, the console is working. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. And of course, Profit will be on the screen and we'll list it down below on the website. So next up I have a 360 Slim and it looks like somebody beat the crap out of it. It just looks awful. Uh, we do still have the warranty seal intact partially maybe. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we have a hard drive in here. And we do not. Uh, let's go ahead and boot it up and see if there's any memory. All right, console's booting up. Any free games? Nope, but the disk drive works perfectly. It is booting up and we have no memory. So there's nothing to explore here. Let's go ahead and put a game in though and make sure it works. All right, well, this console is good as well. We'll go ahead and list it down below and let's move on to the next console. Now, next up, I have a console I've been wanting to open for quite a while because it looks like, it appears to be a complete inbox 360 Slim. It's got a little sticker here on it like they tried to sell it in the past. Yeah, nothing special to write home about here. Let's go ahead and open the box up and see what's inside of here. And, oh yeah, there we go. So we actually, <laughs> we have the two foam pieces on here, which is extremely surprising. We've got an AV cable, wow. We even, wow, we have the connect in like the, the foam wrapping. That's super surprising. We've got a power cable, a controller. Ooh, this controller looks disgusting, but it is there. Actually, it's not that bad, it's just dusty. Wow, this feels like it's never been used. Ooh, it's got, it's got some batteries in it, but it's not corroded. That's good to see. Let me go ahead and dump those batteries out. And then last but not least here on the bottom, we've got a manual and no game. So we're, we pretty much have everything except for the game. And actually one more thing, I forgot to check the hard drive here. Uh, no extra storage, but it should have four gigs built in. And this console does indeed look really nice. It looks like it's not beat up at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. All right, so three, two, one, got life. Now I really want a free game here. I haven't gotten a free game in a 360 in quite a while. And hey, hey, let's go. We got Call of Duty. And wow, it, uh, it looks really clean. There's like one finger, finger smudge on it. But other than that, it looks perfect. And Dude, it's on NXC? What? So now this console is really interesting because there's not much overlap between the NXC dashboard and the Slim console because as soon as the Slim came out, the, the Kinect came out pretty quickly after that. And the Kinect, when you got the Kinect, there was like a Kinect dashboard update, which is a slightly modified version of the NXC. So like the chances of getting this is super slim, but here it is. And we got a profile on it, got, got Don, D-O-N, I guess that is. And uh, yeah, last game played was World of War and he, he left it in his, in his console, Halo Reach. 
Wanted Weapons of Fate. Now, of course, we got to check out the game library, see if he's got anything interesting on here. We got Peggle, Kingdom for Keflings, Hexic HD, and Pinball FX. I think these are all games that just came on a lot of 360s just like by default. So I'm not surprised to see that. Let's go ahead and see if we have any other uh, any other uh, profiles here. Nope, literally just Dawn, which is fine, uh, but cool. Let's go ahead and put the game back in and make sure it works. All right, so the game's working and I got a few more things to explore because I'm really curious about this whole dashboard thing now. So let me do a little bit more digging and I'll come back. All right, guys, so this is actually pretty wild. So first of all, I did check the serial number of the box and the console and they do match up, so they are a pair. Now, next thing I'll show you is looking at this box again, it says, do not open before November 4th, 2010. So presumably that's when it was released and that's when you could buy it from the store. Now I checked and the first connect, the first version of the Connect dashboard was November 1st, 2010. So presumably if you had ever connected this console to the internet, it would have updated to the Connect dashboard, but apparently it was actually from factory on the older dashboard and this person just never connected to the internet. So uh, this is like a, an extremely rare console to come across a slim that came with Connect that's not on the Connect dashboard, like such a weird circumstance, but that's actually, that's pretty cool. And it kind of explains why this console is so clean. Like it, it's barely beat up at all. It's got some, got some dust in it, but of course it's been sitting in the, in that Goodwill warehouse for who knows how long, but just amazing. This person bought the console, never connected to the internet and it's still on the NXE dashboard, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So for a little variety, we're going to go with a Wii console next. We have a white GameCube compatible Wii and I accidentally just turned it on. Do we have an SD card? We do not, but I do hear a game inside. So, Hey, let's see what we got. I bet it's probably Wii Sports. It's Wii Sports Resort. Ho oh, ho. Oh baby, that might be the most valuable game I've come across yet in this lot. Uh, Wii Sports Resort is like 30 bucks, I think, something like that. Hey, that's that's pretty dope. Let's go ahead and put that back in. Let's go ahead and explore this console. We got all the standard channels here. We've got no hidden channels. Last time we have a message is on March 23rd, 2019. And yeah, last played Wii Sports Resort and then tossed the console. Got a ton of just random messages here. Uh, Golf Bennett, congratulations. Uh, but let's go ahead and back, go back to the main menu and make sure Wii Sports Resort works. And the funny thing is Wii Sports Resort gets, gets us like halfway to our profit goal just on its own because it's basically free profit because I didn't factor it into like what I paid. Uh, but yeah, the game's working. Let's go back to the main menu and check out a few more things. So here, oh, oh dude, no way. Oh, the jackpot. Finally, somebody that made Mies, man. This is like, this is more Mies than I had. Like give this guy credit. Holy crap, that's like what? 150 Mies maybe? Maybe 100, I don't know. But there's a ton here. We got Young Girl, <laughs> Playa. This is awesome. <laughs> Fish Eye. This person definitely took advantage of the Check Me Out channel. Um, definitely downloaded a bunch of stuff. Probably uploaded some stuff too. I don't even want to guess what that name is there. Naruto. This looks kind of like my me, but like a, a, a lot worse. I guess I'll just put it. Crazy Eyes. All right, this is awesome. I, I love seeing people being creative with their Mies and stuff. So uh, cool to see this. It's not very often I see that many Mies on the channel or, or, or ever, but let's go ahead and move on to the next console now. So next up, we'll do a white Wii here. And this one surprisingly has both flaps intact. It's not often you see that. Now, is there an SD card? There is not, but this, ooh, this thing's got tons of dust. Well, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and loud disk drive, nothing inside, unfortunate, but let's go ahead and uh, see if it works. Spoon up here, pretty basic. We do have a Wii Fit channel. Actually, I like checking out the Wii Fit channel because you can p see when the people like last, you know, played Wii Fit. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, let's check out B Fizzle here. It's been 5,351 days since I last saw you. How many years ago is that? That's like, wait, that can't be right. Okay, I guess it is right. 5,000 days, that's like 13 or 14 years ago. So yeah, 2009, 2010. Uh, <laughs> that, is, that is a long time. All right, so I wanted to check this person's Wii Fit age, but it won't let me go back past like 2021. I don't, I don't know why, but oh well. So I put a copy of Wii Sports in and it is working. I'm not gonna boot it up right now, but we'll do a full test later, of course. Let's go ahead and hop over to the calendar and see when this thing was last played. All right, July 2015, we've got a message on here. Wii Sports Resort news. We got <laughs> Wii Sports Resort for three minutes. Nice, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we got a decent number of me's here. Nothing too crazy, but uh, yeah, that was P Peter, Peter, Peter. I, don't know, I guess that's Peter. But you know, you got your classic dad, mom, Adam, you know, just the standard Joe Jack. <laughs> All right, well, this console's working. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, another GameCube compatible Wii, and this one's got something nasty on the front here. I don't know what that is. That's nasty. And then let's check the front. Any SD card? Nope. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works. And, ooh, there's definitely a game. Mario Kart, maybe? And, <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> Straight up is Mario Kart. Now, this one looks pretty beat up and dirty, so I won't be surprised that that doesn't work. But honestly, none of those scratches look too deep. So let's put it back in and we'll try it out. Can't believe I just guessed the game though. Straight up guess. Like 75%, actually more like 90% of the time it's either Wii Sports or Mario Kart. But uh, that's just, just funny. All right, so here's something weird. I think the sensor bar jack might be 
slightly jacked up. Um, I have to stand really far back for it to even register. And I'm using the same sensor bar I've been using for all of the consoles. But another news, surprisingly, the game is loading up. Let's go ahead and go back to the main menu and see when this console was uh, last played. All right, so here in August 2012 is our last icon. There's no play data, and somebody explained this to me recently why that occurs. Apparently, these icons here don't actually mean play data. It just means there's a message. So uh, technically, there could be play data in, you know, say, August 2013. Uh, but there's basically no physical way for me to find that out because I'd have to scroll through every single day for the last, you know, 20 years here, which I'm not going to do. But we do see some play data on 731. It looks like they last played Wii Sports here. And, hey, we got a decent number of me's here. Mr. Luke. MJ. Oh, that looks like... Michael Jordan, but really short. <laughs> and of course, classic dad. <laughs> All right, but minus the weird sensor bar thing, this console is working. We'll put the profit on the screen. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, next up, we have a 360 Slim here, and this is a glossy one, of course. Looks like it was beat up again, and it's definitely been opened before. Now, is there a hard drive? Let's check. And there is not. But let's go ahead and uh, turn it on, see if it works. All right, we got power, any free games? Okay, the disk drive is not even trying to open. All right, so I was trying to read something, so I don't know. There might be a game in there. I'm not sure, but it, it like it won't try to open at all. Like there's, I don't know, like something's just disconnected. I, I don't know what's going on there. But I'll try to see if I can manu manually open it in a minute. But let's go ahead and check out our storage. Yeah, there's no storage here at all. Um, so nothing going on here. We really can't test anything unless I get the drive open. All right, so I got a toothpick, and there is a hole in the side of the console where you can actually do a manual eject, so let me try that. All right, there we go, got it out enough. And, oh, there is a game. We got Assassin's Creed 2, and the game is super clean. Now, clearly the game is not working because, yeah, like, what is going on? Dude, I, I swear, they must have just, like, did that, disconnected the cable and they opened it up. But we got a free game, which is solid. Um, again, like I said in this video, I'm, I'm selling all these consoles as is, not doing any, any repairs or anything. So I'll just sell this console for cheap on my website down below. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, we have this white 360. And it doesn't look too bad from the top, honestly. But we have these, like, tire marks on the bottom almost. And then here on the back, let's see what motherboard we have. So it's so 2009, and yep, definitely a Jasper. So we probably have some onboard storage. But let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, so let's turn it on. Three, two, one, and we got life. Any free games? Nope, but the disk tray, disk tray works without an issue. And we've got one profile, G, JP5 with 40 gamer score. All right, Call of War. <laughs> what? What a random. All right, okay, okay, cool. Let's see how much memory this thing has or how much storage. Uh, yeah, so it's like a 256 probably. Oh, no, 500. Uh, we, got, we got 500 megs on here. Yeah, so nothing special here. Let's go ahead and put a game in and make sure... Oh, now the disk is stuck. Wow, okay. There we go. <laughs> Just give it a couple hard, hard slaps. Let's go ahead and put in uh, MW2 and make sure it works. Yep, so the game booted it right up. Uh, no issues at all. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console now. So next up, I have a pretty intriguing Xbox 360. First of all, I think the faceplate is not OEM. It just like the power button is weird. It's got a 60 gig hard drive, which is not right for an Elite. And then here on the back, we've got a GameStop sticker on it, which is funny. It says, remanufactured unit from GameStop. We have a sticker here that appears to have a date where the first two fields are not filled out, but it looks like it has a 2015 date. So I'm going to assume that GameStop did something with this in 2015. Um, it appears to be a Jasper. It even has a Jasper sticker, but let's go ahead and plug it in and See if it works. All right, three, two, one. We got life and... Okay, yeah, GameStop definitely was in this console because they put the 12-volt the fan model on this thing because it's immediately blasting air like crazy. Open up the disk drive. Do we have any free games? Hey, we got Skyrim. Nice. It doesn't look too bad. Just going to put that back in. And yeah, this faceplate is definitely not OEM. It just feels slightly off. doesn't really matter. It's just uh, interesting to note. And then booting up, we have a few profiles already on here. We got ALS52292, <laughs> got Racy R, Salsa, and yeah, so not much here. But let's go ahead and log in and see what they got. All right, so this person played some Skyrim, some Fallout 3, Left 4 Dead 2, 1, uh, Fallout New Vegas. This person seems to be a, a Beth Bethesda fan. All right, so both Salsa and Racy R have only played Left 4 Dead 1. Um, and that's it. So not much on this console. Let's go ahead and uh, try out Skyrim and make sure it works, though. And I'm actually really curious to see what GameStop did on the inside of this console because you can, like I said, there's definitely the 12-volt fan mod. Uh, they probably did a bolt mod as well if they're doing, like, what GameStop used to do. So I might... I might open this up in this video or maybe a future video because like I said in this video I just want to do everything as is so I'm just too curious Let's go ahead and open this console up and see what it looks like on the inside and actually first I just want to show you this faceplate and oh gosh Yes, yeah, definitely third party it just like it looks very similar, but it's slightly off um, Just strange, but uh definitely been open before and I actually forgot GameStop always puts this refurbished sticker like right on the inside there uh, So you know, it's definitely not been open since GameStop opened it all right, yeah, there's definitely a bolt mod here because you can see there's no screws here. Usually there's eight, like, small black screws, 
like along those holes right there, right in the top covers, the metal pieces falling off. Now down here you can see, wow, they actually put a they put a sticker on the heat sink. That seems wrong. Like if that heat sink gets hot, it's gonna melt the sticker, I would think, or that can't be good. And there's <laughs> a giant number four on this. It's what in the world? Why would they do that? That's so strange. And of course, down here you can see the the fan mods. So let me just like uh, pull this out a little bit, a little bit more, and I'll show you what's going on here. So of course, down here are your fans. And back in the day, people would do 12 volt fan mods for the 360 all the time because it, it was pretty common because you were trying to get your fan to spin as fast as possible to keep it from overheating. Now, what they would do is, is splice the fan wires into the disk drive wires that can that supply to constant 12 volts of power so that it's basically giving full power to the fans all the time. So that's what all these wires are here. And uh, yeah, so I guess uh, it was pretty common knowledge that GameStop kind of did that as like a standard procedure in the refurbishing process. But let's go ahead and keep breaking this down and uh, let's take a look at the bolt mod. All right, now pulling the motherboard out. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. And oh yeah, there we go. Got that nice bolt mod. Not even, there's not even any kind of uh, like plastic washers between the the screw and the boards. It's the, the screws are just bolted straight to the board. That's just not ideal. Now we've gone this far, we might as well go ahead and take the screws out and look at the thermal paste as well to just, just to see what that looks like. All right, got that off. And yeah, I think the, the white stuff is definitely their new paste. It's so old at this point because it was put on so long ago that it, well, actually it's still kind of mushy. Um, not too bad, we'll, we'll replace that, but we got some, some tape here covering up your, you know, your capacitors there. Let's go ahead and take off the other one as well. All right, now that one, oh, that one's actually got a bit more thermal paste, but the good news is they actually, <laughs> at least they, at least GameStop back in the day actually refurbished these. Like they took them apart and applied a 12 volt fan mod and they replaced thermal paste. It's like, it's a lot more than what a lot of people do um, when they say they refurbish stuff. Now I haven't looked into the whole bolt mod thing in quite a while, but I think the conclusion now is that it's basically useless. Like the, cause the core of the Red Ring of Death issue is not even related to what the, the bolt mod was doing now, but back in the day we thought it did something. And the other thing I'm curious about is if this console ever actually had Red Ring of Death because it is a Jasper console. It's very slim chance of it getting Red Ring of Death. Now it could have, but I wonder if GameStop just went to every single console they refurbished and just did this bolt mod and fan process on every single console. I don't know, um, but just interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, next up I have another 360 Slim and this one looks pretty good. It is a matte one, which always, they always look better than the glossy ones. Now, is there a hard drive? Nope, but we probably have four gigs built in. Let me go ahead and check out the back here. Manufacturing 2011, warranty seal still intact. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, console's booting up. Any free games? Nope, but the disk drive shoots out. Let's go ahead and put a game in uh, prematurely here so we can test it out. And yep, console booted up. We got <laughs> the bomb killer junior, which is cool. Uh, dang, it's got 9,000 gamer score. Solid. Any, nope, no bio, no message, no nothing, but we got a, oh, got a little jazz background. That's pretty cool. Live jazz, he's got the swag on. Let's go ahead and see when this guy last played. We got Barbie Puppy 2015, all right. Tecmo Bowl throwback. Uh, 20, oh, wow, 2018, so this is fairly recent, five years ago. Got a bunch of, you know, Call of Duties, NFL 10, um, actually a ton of games on here. It goes up to 57 games, so this guy's been playing for quite a while. And yeah, going back to the very first game played, which was uh, Madden NFL 13, so yeah, and Far Cry 3 was played in 2013. So this person played from 2013 till, uh, what was it, 2017, 2018, I think it said. Um, so we got about a five year span. Let's go ahead and boot up the game and make sure it works. So yeah, game is working and this console is super quiet. I've come across a, a lot of slims that are very quiet consoles, which is cool to see. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up I have a glossy slim, which of course, as always, very beat up and warranty seal is still intact. Manufactured in 2010, so a pretty early slim. Now, is there a hard drive? Nope, <laughs> again. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, got it turned on, it's booting up. Any games? Nope, oh, man. 360s, man, I just want some more free games. Not many, not many today. And now I booted up and of course, no storage. <laughs> Let's go ahead, and put a, go ahead and put a game in and make sure it works. Dude, it, there's definitely something wrong with this disk drive. It just, for some reason, it recognized the, uh, the game as a DVD. Let me try that one more time. It's recognizing the game as a DVD, that is so odd. Let me try, let me try this Skyrim in here. All right, well, Skyrim is booting up. I feel like I've seen this issue before though. Like it's been a long time, but I'm pretty sure when it's not reading games, but it is reading DVDs, that means the laser is going out, like it's just dying. Uh, you can either turn, you can either, uh, you know, turn up the power or swap out the laser. Again, like I said, I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm just testing everything and selling as is. So we'll have this down below for sale for pretty cheap. Um, might we might read games, might need some work. I don't know, but uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, so next up we have two Wii's left and they both have our GameCube battable white Wii's. This first one, no SD card, let's go ahead and check. Ooh, wait, <laughs> there's a dead spider attached to that Wii. Uh, second one actually has both flaps and looks pretty clean for a Wii. Surprising, and there's no SD card there. Let's go ahead and plug in the first one in and see if it works. All right, three, two, one. 
We got power and oh, it's definitely a game. I really want something other than Wii Sports or Mario Kart this time. Super Smash Bros. Brawl, hey. The game's actually worth, I think, less than Wii Sports, but good to finally see a different game. This one is a bit beat up, but it looks like mostly smudges, not scratches or anything. So let's go ahead and put it back in and disk drive sounds pretty loud. <laughs> but here on the main menu, ooh, ooh, we got some games. We got Cave Story, demo. It's just a demo. Oh, okay, well that's lame. But the game is loading up. Of course, we'll do a more in-depth test later, but let's go ahead and check out uh, the last time this console was played. All right, so June 2013 was the last time I could play, find some play data, and of course, it's just Netflix and a ton of messages. <laughs> Wii Network service partial discontinuation. I actually did not realize it was, was it really 2013 when they discontinued the Wii Network? Wow, that's actually surprising. And then, hey, oh, we got a lot of Miis. Yeah, Garfield, it looks like, it looks kind of like Garfield, definitely from the Check Me Out channel. We got an alien, spelled incorrectly, that's awesome. <laughs> we got Crazy, yeah, he does look pretty crazy. Batman, okay, this person, this person lived on the Check Me Out channel, because I remember seeing all of these. We got E.T., uh, we've got Lion, yeah, there's Garfield. Stewie, yeah, this person literally just downloaded everything off the Check Me Out channel, because I had my <laughs> Quagmire. <laughs> I had a lot of these as well. Charlie Brown, let's go Darth. Peter. <laughs> I'm actually surprised it took me this long to find a Wii console that was like that was like this because this is how mine is. I have a ton of just Mii's that I made, but also a ton of Mii's I downloaded from the Check Me Out channel because it was just people would, people were so creative and came up with these really cool Mii's like Harry Potter, Scooby, like these are awesome. Like the the Joker, the creativity here is just unmatched. Best Buy, <laughs> this guy does actually look like a Best Buy employee. That's funny. But anyways, this Wii is good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next Wii is plugged in and I'm really hoping we get another free game because we've been on a, on a roll today. And there's definitely another game in there. I can hear it. I want some variety here. Give me another game that's not Wii Sports, please. Please. Well, I, I can't complain. Wii Sports, I mean, this is a $20 game, and this one looks like it's in pretty nice condition, which is not surprising given the condition of this console. But, <laughs> dude, we actually hit the jackpot today on free games. That's, that's wild. Now, the console itself looks super basic. Not much on it. Um, Wii Sports is loading up. Let's go ahead and check out the last time this console was played. All right, November 2012, we got some messages here. We got, yeah, Wii Sports. Yes, the person played Wii Sports for a couple hours, and then just, uh... Never played again, apparently. So we got, got Alexander played some bowling. Uh, you know, Saul played some bowling. But let's go ahead and head over to the Mii channel and see how many Mii's we find. So only six Mii's on here, so not much here, but we got Bobby Dumb, which is funny. It's probably like a, a kid making fun of his brother by calling Bobby Dumb. I don't, I don't know, that's just my guess, but uh, console's good to go. But overall, this ended up being a really good lot of consoles. So I'll go ahead and throw my profit on the screen from this video and all the previous videos, minus the consoles I've already bought with the profits. And uh, like I usually do, I'm gonna spend these profits on more limited edition Xbox 360s, and we'll show those in future videos. But guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I spent over $3,000 on untested PS3, Xbox 360, and Wii consoles from Goodwill, but there's a problem. You see, some of the consoles have giant Sharpie Dexes on them like Goodwill knew they didn't work, so in this video, we're gonna test them out, see if they work, and see if we can turn a profit. Guys, welcome to the Texas Load. And you can see right off the bat here, a giant Sharpie Dex on top, a pretty disgusting console, and it is also missing the warranty seal, so not a great sign, but let's plug it in and see if it works. So I have everything plugged in, and the other thing I noticed here is it actually has a BD written on here, like there's a problem with the Blu-ray drive, so we'll find out here in a second. Let's go ahead and boot it up and uh, see what it does. And yeah, it did boot up. Let's go ahead and put a game in. That'll be the true test here, since we have that BD written on the console. And it started out decent, pulled the disc in. Okay, yeah, there's definitely a problem. It's like, it's trying to spin the disc, but it, it can't for whatever reason. Honestly, it might be because the thing is so dusty, it might just, wow, look, whole, look what it did to my disc when it spat it out. It just made lines all over it. Dis Ooh, that's disgusting. Yikes, okay, so that console definitely does not read games or do anything with games. We'll try to open it up and see what's going on inside. All right, guys, so I'm taking this PS3 apart to get inside, and <laughs> look what I found with these three screws right here. It looks like somebody, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like somebody might have drilled them out and then basically carved them out so you can use a flathead here. So that tells me that I don't trust anything that's going on inside of this PS3 because somebody uh, probably stripped the screws and had to get them back out or in or whatever they had to do with them. But uh, this is, yeah, pretty sketch. Let me try to use a flathead on this now. Yeah, that, that is, that's pretty messed up. I don't, I don't know what we're, gonna, what we're gonna find on the side of this thing. We got those screws out, let's go ahead and take cover off and see what's going on inside. The, the like dust inside of here is just disgusting. I don't know, this thing is just pretty nasty. Dude, wait, you can't make this up. All right, so basically the power supply goes here, that's the fan, that's the disk drive, and this ribbon cable goes from the disk drive to the motherboard, and it's one of the cables is just straight up smashed underneath this metal piece, so uh, it would not surprise me if that one cable is what controls, uh, give, basically gives power to the disk drive to spin, um, or something along those, those lines and this cable is now just smashed. 
So let's go ahead and see if we can pull this thing out and see what's going on. Oh yeah, that's not good. We've definitely got like two giant cuts in that wire. All right guys, so I have this console partially back together now and I have a couple notes to make. First of all, I did test out um, with a multimeter this little uh, crimped <laughs> cable here and it is it does have continuity so I don't think it's the issue. Now it could be crimped enough and kind of torn apart enough that not, not enough current's getting through there and that's causing an issue, but I doubt that, but maybe it's the issue, I don't know. I have everything plugged back in minus the, uh, the basically the top cover, the disk drive is not here so we can kind of see what's going on. Let's go ahead and turn it on and just see what happens here when we try to put a disc in and just see what it looks like. All right guys, so the console booted up, it's still not reading the game, but it is actually spinning. For some reason earlier, I thought the disc was just not spinning at all. Um, but so what the problem is, is it's probably a bad laser. Uh, we could clean up the laser. It's probably not gonna fix it in this this case. But we might as well try. The other, basically the other solution is to turn off the power or, um, actually I don't even know if you can do that on the PS3, but uh, what we'll probably have to do is replace the laser. Unfortunately, I do not have a, I don't have a laser replacement right now. I can order one and maybe we'll do it in a, in a future video, but let's go ahead and just try to clean that laser first and see if that fixes it. So usually I would take the console all the way apart for this, but I'm a little bit lazy right now. So uh, by the way, I'm using a Q-tip with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna squeeze in here and I can actually get to the laser without taking it all the way apart. So basically I just clean it in circles with the, with the clean, or with the end that has isopropyl alcohol. And then I'll either get a new Q-tip or use the clean end to dry it off a little bit with the same process. And if that is gonna fix it, that should do the trick. That doesn't fix it in most cases, especially a console that's this old, but let's, let's try it now. Yeah, so it sure is trying hard, but it's still not reading. So uh, pretty sure our issue is with the laser. We just need a new laser here. Um, like I said, I don't have a new one to replace it with right now, but I'll order one and we can replace it in a future video. So let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So this console I find pretty funny. It even came with a sticky note telling me the issue. It says powered on, but LED lights don't work, but parentheses works. So, <laughs> I mean, they're not even trying to hide it there, but let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Well, first of all, yeah, warranty seal is gone as well and pretty dirty. This one's almost identical to the last one. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And yeah, they're right. So I got it plugged in and there is no light there, but it's turning on. That should be as simple as maybe a ribbon cable unplugged, maybe. And of course it never fails with these PS3s. It is <laughs> factory reset. So yeah, the interesting thing about this one is that the blue light does work there. It's just the power button is literally the only light that doesn't work. I mean, the, the console works, it booted up. The game is working now as well. But anyways, this console is at least working very dirty, but we'll, we'll list it on the website down below. So go ahead and check it out if you want to buy one. Let's move on to the next console. Now, next up, I have a PS3 Super Slim. And again, this one has a giant Sharpie Dex on it and also says BD in the corner for Blu-ray, uh, presumably. Now, this one, the easier thing is that we have the laser exposed. So maybe we can clean the laser and see if that does something, assuming it doesn't actually work. Uh, but the warranty seal is still intact. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. Oh, okay, so this one power button doesn't work. It, it literally will not turn on. So this definitely happened on another PS3 Super Slim from a few weeks ago where the PCB for the power button was just messed up. I had to replace it and it just, the console worked fine. So let's go ahead and take apart the PS3 Super Slim, see if we can get the power button working. I'm pretty confident we can, but let's go ahead and take it apart and see what it looks like. All right, got the 400 screws out. Let's take the top off here and it's a bit dusty, but not bad at all. All right, so typically you press this power button and the plastic piece will touch a metal piece, which then makes contact with the PCB board, which connects the circuit and or completes the circuit and makes it turn on. Now, uh, the last time I saw this, there was a little like metal piece that was basically falling out. Let me see if I can get down there and see if that same metal piece is gone. All right, guys, hopefully this will focus, but sure enough, same situation as last time. We have this PCB right here. So basically the plastic piece touches that button right there, but it doesn't work unless you have this little tiny, um, basically metal piece that's covering it and completes the circuit. So what I need to do is temporarily get that piece onto there and it should work temporarily, but the better solution is to order another PCB and just replace it, which is what I'll do. But for now, we'll at least get this working temporarily so we can test the console out. All right, so there we go. We can see the little yellow metal piece is now stuck to it. And uh, so if you click down on it, it does physically press and it'll complete the circuit. So we'll put that back in there for now and just try to boot the console up and see if it works now. And just a quick test, you can, yeah, it's definitely clicking now, so that should be good to go. Let's go ahead and plug it in. All right, guys, so the moment of truth, three, two, one. Hey, we got life, let's go. It's such an easy fix too, but it's super satisfying to get it to work. Well, <laughs> let's hope the console turns all the way on now. Let's, let's wait. Even the broken console is factory reset? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and well, the best part is the disk drive is not working. It won't spin at all. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I think it's unplugged. There's a ribbon cable loose in there. Okay, I'm, I must have accidentally taken a ribbon. Ribbon cable must have come loose when I went in there. I didn't put it back. All right, let's, let's fix this real quick. That's actually really strange because that's not even a ribbon cable I touched at all when I came in here. Like this ribbon cable was just pulled out itself because uh, that's not even related to the stuff I pulled out. So mm, let's keep going down here and fix that. All right, now I think it should be good. Let's go ahead and turn this thing back. No, 
I fixed the ribbon cable and the power button thing came out of place again. Oh my God. All right, let's try this one more time. There we go, it's turning on. Let's go ahead and put a disc in here and see what it does. All right guys, so I finally got this console on, shown on the screen and the game loading up. So this console is good to go. Of course, I will have to buy a new PCB for the power button and just replace it, but it's literally just a swapping out that PCB that you saw. Uh, otherwise, this console is good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Now for a bit of variety, we're gonna do a 360 Slim next. This is a matte Slim that actually looks really nice. And ooh, I just noticed we have a GameStop certified pre-owned sticker on the back, or on the bottom, excuse me. It says MBT, I guess is the one that tested this. Oh, it actually has a date. Tested on 7-5-2015, so tested eight years ago. Pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and see if we have a hard drive here. We do not, and this piece is like falling off. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, plugged in, it's three, two, one. We got life, now disc tray. I feel like I heard a disc in there, let's see. Ooh, we got, dude, no way. We have I, the third season of iCarly, disc two. That is so random. Wow, it looks terrible on the back, but that is, that's hilarious. I love how half the games I get in 360s are not even 360 games. Now let's go ahead and scroll around this menu because are there four gigs built in? I don't know. Yeah, there are, okay, it's cool. So let's go ahead and see if we have any profiles here. We have, wait, how do we have zero profiles? I don't even know you could play your 360 without a profile. All right, no profiles, but I think we can see some, nope, there's just no games or anything. Okay, I'm really confused now because it says 1.5 gigs free, but these came with, if it has memory, it has four gigs built in, but it shows nothing under games or apps. There's literally no, no storage taken up here at all. So I don't know what is going on. The only thing I noticed here is that the <laughs> initial setup is grayed out. So that means we have family settings turned on, which is just awesome. Let's go ahead and see if we can guess the password. <laughs> There's no way I just guessed that. <laughs> the code was XYXY. All right, I'll take it. All right, I'm curious what the <laughs> favorite person from history is Alan. Who is Alan? All right, let me turn this off. I can't believe I guessed that. Actually, the funniest one is like, I don't know, a year ago when me and, me and Danny somehow guessed pizza as the password and it was correct, but that was, that was hilarious. Let's go ahead and see if this, this arc, iCarly disc works though. <laughs> yep, so despite that disc looking terrible, iCarly is sure enough on the screen. That's pretty funny. Let's go ahead and see if a, an actual game works now. So the game is working. Now I'm still kind of, kind of confused how we only have 1.5 gigs available when four gigs are built in and there was literally nothing saved on here. Very strange, but let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Now this PS3 is a bit strange because not only does it have a giant X on it, it also has a three. Don't know what that means, but let's go ahead and see warranty seal. No, oh man, I did not even notice the bottom of this console is just mutilated, wow. Scratches everywhere, but the warranty seal is still intact. So let's, uh, yeah, let's plug it in and see what it does. We have a red light here, let's go ahead and see if it turns on. All right guys, so it appears that this console unfortunately has the green light of death. So basically I turned it on, it's green, but there's no video, no audio, I can't do anything. I tried both HDMI and AV and neither of them do anything. So what I'm gonna try is to take the hard drive out and see if the console will boot up and then tell me there's no hard drive. That means it's a hard drive issue. If that doesn't fix the issue, it's probably a board level issue that I'm not sure I'll be able to fix, but we'll still open the console up and see what's going on inside. But let's go ahead and take the hard drive out and see what it does. Oh, and the other thing I just noticed is that the button doesn't even respond. So it basically turns on and it responds that way. But other than that, it won't turn back off. Okay, so in the process of taking the hard drive out, I just like, I heard something inside and so I'm shaking it a little bit. Yeah, this the, hard, the motherboard is straight up shaking inside of the console. So I don't think this will do it, but let's, let's try. Yeah, so still nothing, I turned it on. Um, just nothing on the screen. I can't even turn it off anymore. So the hard drive is not the issue. Or <laughs> to be fair, it could be an issue, but there's definitely bigger issues. And uh, we'll open it up and see what's going on inside. I don't think I'll be able to fix anything because it just sounds like the motherboard is bouncing around inside. All right, let's go ahead and open this console up. Got the screws out already. Let's see if we can pop the lid off. All right, there it goes. Yeah, actually not too dirty, a little bit of dust there, a little bit of dust in the fan, but nothing too crazy. Now this is the console that we heard, just some major like rattling around inside. So let's keep digging down further and see if we see anything obvious. All right, now time for the thermal paste reveal here. Let's see if that'll reveal any secrets, not really except for Wow, that actually looks, that's a lot more coverage than I usually see on these PS3 Slims. Usually like, usually it covers like half the chip and it clearly has not been replaced because the, the uh, warranty seal is still on it. And just looking at this board, there's nothing obvious, like the board is not bent at all. I don't see anything out of place. Um, obviously this is likely a internal board issue where I'd actually need to pull out like uh, my multimeter oscilloscope and <laughs> do a lot of measurements, which I don't have the tools for to do that and I don't know how, have the know-how to get into that right now. I would like to do a video kind of delving into this kind of stuff more in the future, but frankly with the number of consoles I have in these videos, I just don't have time to, to delve into 
deep dives in some of these consoles. But um, so yeah, nothing obvious. Clearly there is an issue though. And also I am curious if you guys have any experience with Greenlight Death. So let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas um, what the issue may be, just let me know. So I'll just go ahead and put this console back together off camera and we'll get back to it. All right, now next up I have an Xbox 360, which I already took the front off just to look at it. And we do still have the warranty seal intact and it is a Xenon console, so I don't have much, much faith in this one. Uh, manufactured in 2006. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. All right, hold on a second guys. I was actually wrong. The power port is for an Opus, the, the very rare Opus, which is basically the same thing or similar to Falcon, except that it's uh, only has an AV port, no HDMI. So that's really interesting. I've only seen like one of these in my entire life. And from what I've seen online, these are only 2007 and later, but this is 2006. So I don't know what's going on here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We got life. Let's check out the disk drive. Is it stuck? Wow, the disk drive is not stuck on a console this old. It is booting up. We are on one of the latest dashboards. This console has actually been used fairly recently. I don't know how recently, but let's check out the, the dashboard number. So yeah, 17349, that's pretty recent. Surprising, but let's put a, put a game in and see if it works. Oh, and of course, now the disk drive is stuck. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, game is working, which is great to see. Now, one other thing I wanna do here, um, I have a bunch of just miscellaneous 360 hard drives from the Texas Low that were just not attached to the console. So I'm gonna plug a couple in here, see what we find. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and plug one in. <laughs> wow, this one actually has one of those hard drive covers. I. I've literally seen one of those one time. So starting off with a 120 gigabyte hard drive, we have Kivo 121, Kevin, <laughs> and that's it. Let's go ahead and see what he's got in here. All right, so selecting Kivo's profile, achievements. Last game played was MX versus ATV Untamed in 2015, so that's about eight years ago. But we got Uno Rush, Shift 2 Unleashed, Sega Superstars Tennis, uh, a bunch of games I never played, but it looks like he played anywhere from 2013 to 2015. So other than the one profile and a few save files, that's about all it's on here. Let's go ahead and turn the console off and put this other hard drive on as well and see what's on it. I love how it's just grease, fingerprints, and grained here. Some dude is probably play, probably eating pizza and just playing his 360, swapping out his hard drive for whatever reason. It's just, I, I don't know. It's always funny to make up stories about these old, old consoles. This is actually a console I've taken off another hard drive because I rec recognize half these. Yeah, I definitely recognize Kill a Panda and Linus. So this is actually a hard drive I took off another console. Let's try another third hard drive. All right, here we go, got another one and hold on. <laughs> I think this is another one I've tried before. <laughs> Wait a second. I definitely recognize AZ and Pride. Did I just put all the consoles, all the hard drives are tested in a box? What in the world? All right guys, one more hard drive, let's try it. And of course the fourth hard drive I try out just has absolutely nothing on it, which is great. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next console because this one works fine. So next up, we're gonna repair a PS3 Super Slim from a previous video, probably from about a month ago, uh, where I needed to order a new switch for the disk drive, and it finally came in, so let's go ahead and fix that. And let me just explain the issue first. So basically, the first issue I had here is it wouldn't, uh, the disk drive wouldn't open all the way because it was super dirty, so I cleaned that out, and that's working fine now. Now the issue um, that we're having now is when it closes, uh, basically this piece right here hits a switch that tells the disk drive to spin, I read the game, that sort of thing. And that switch is just broken. All right, so zoomed in a bit, you can see the PCB we're gonna replace. It's this one right here. There's supposed to be a black plastic piece that sticks up and basically gets hit by the disk drive cover that tells the disk drive to start reading. Um, and you can see this is a re the replacement one that actually has the black piece. Um, and you can see like when it slides over, it presses that down. So let's go ahead and take this piece out and replace it. So basically I just remove literally one screw. I take the PCB out. It's got a ribbon cable attached to it. I'll detach the ribbon cable. It just slides out and then this one will slide in like so. And it should be good to go when you put the screw back on. All right, so as you can see, new PCB is in there. And so when it slides over now, it'll press that. And yeah, let's put the top back on. All right, console is on. Let's go ahead and first make sure it's still opening properly. It's mostly good. These things are just kind of finicky in my experience. Um, as long as it opens most of the way, you should be good to go. Not a really big deal. Put the game inside now. When we close it, it should start spinning. So we have a slight issue. It is working when you press it with your finger. You can see it'll start to spin in just a second. There it goes. But when we close it, it doesn't spin because it's not actually pressing down quite far enough. So I think we need to move the PCB up like a millimeter. Let's, let's try this one more time. Okay, there it goes. It is spinning up now. And it's all because basically there are two screws I hadn't put back. These two screws right here essentially push the case far enough down so that now when this slides over, it is far enough down to depress the switch all the way, which is good. Um, let's go ahead and actually make sure it reads games now. All right, sweet guys, so the game is working without an issue. I am pretty pleased with this repair here because not only did we have to replace that PCB, but we also had to clean out the gears here. We also had to take the gears all the way out from the disk drive 
and reseat them because they weren't in the proper spot. And if you don't know, the PS3 Super Slim uh, disk drive gears are an absolute pain in the butt to work with. Uh, yeah, we're good now. All right, so next up, we're gonna test out a Wii console. I already got it plugged in here, and we have a white GameCube compatible console, one flap remaining. And let's see if there's an SD card in here. There is not, uh, but let's go ahead and turn it on, see what it does. And ooh, there's definitely a disk inside, dude. Never fails, probably Wii Sports. And oh, hey, Super Mario Sluggers, Mario Super Sluggers, excuse me. And it's a bit beat up, but actually not too bad. It's actually a really fun game. Uh, one of my favorite Wii games, had a lot of fun with it. And uh, <laughs> dude, it just, it never fails to find free games in Wii consoles. And every time, the console or the game is almost worth more than the Wii. And we got some channels on here. We've got pretty much the standard channels, photo channel, Wii shop channel, uh, the YouTube channel. That's actually, I think, fairly recent in terms of the Wii. We're gonna flip things around here this time and we're gonna check out the Mii channel first. As you guys know, I always love to check out the Mii channels and see what's on them, kind of what Mii's people have created, anything interesting. So let's let's see. And ooh, hey, wow. This might be the most Wii's I've ever seen on a, on a, on a Wii. Most Mii's I've ever seen on a Wii. <laughs> Bob, Bob dead. Oh, fat bacon. Wow, that, that actually does look like a pig. That's funny. Now, the interesting thing here is these all look like custom. I don't see any of the Mii's you'd usually see from the Check Me Out channel, uh, like Garfield or Snoopy or anything like that. It's just all randomly created Mii's, which is actually pretty funny. Like, what is this big fat bug? <laughs> and next up, we're gonna do something I don't do very often, which is look at the save data and kind of see what the what the last games this person played was. So go to Wii, we'll check this out. Here we got Wii Fit, of course. Mario Kart Wii, of course, um, other typical stuff, eSports Active, Rio, oh, Donkey Kong Country Returns, nice. Of course, yeah, Wii Play and Wii Sports. You can't have a, can't have a Wii without Wii Play and Wii Sports. And of course, Mario Super Sluggers, which we, which we saw here. And speaking of that, let's go ahead and boot it up and see if the game works. Oh, and we can see the, the last time these files were saved. So we got a couple 2015s and a 2012 here. Was it just me or did anybody else actually like stand up when they're playing baseball games like this? Oh, crap. All right, well, the game is definitely working. Let's go back to the main menu. One more thing we'll check out is the last time this console was played. Okay, so I just came, I basically came back to December 2015 when I, when I know I saw that save data from uh, Super Mario Sluggers. And there it is. Yeah, so 26 minutes in, yeah, December 2015. So that was probably the last time this came, console was played. Not surprising considering the game is in here. Man, always interesting to see that people just play these games for the last time, put their Wii away, and then somebody donates it at some point to Goodwill. <laughs> and it ends up in my hands. So uh, yeah, let's move on to the next console now. All right, next up here, we'll do another Wii. And this one's got some really weird, how did that happen there? It looks like it was rubbed on the road. I, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But other than that, it looks almost exactly the same as the last console. And it also has no SD card. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And there's definitely another game in there. All right, let's see what it is. Dude, it's unbelievable how every time Wii Sports Resort, another $20, $25 game. And uh, looks not too bad. It's gotta be like, 75% of the Wii's I've, I've tested have games left in them. It's just crazy stuff. And it's always like a pretty valuable game, like 15, 20 bucks most of the time. And hey, we got a, we got the Wii Fit channel on here, which I love checking out to see the last time these guys like actually used Wii Fit. So let's boot that up first. And half of them are locked. <laughs> I remember that you could, back in the day, you could lock them with like a pin or something. Uh, let's check out Kathy, why not? This is your 1,999th day, so it actually, was that like six years ago that they last played? So not not too terribly long ago. Okay, never mind. It says <laughs> it's been 5,158 days since you last last played. So like a decade plus. So the thing I always try to do here is zoom out and go to the Wii Fit age, but it only goes back like two years. So I can't see these people's Wii Fit age. So it's not really useful to see anything. So this is really interesting. I just booted up Wii Sports Resort and it actually gives me a date and time on here, which is July 1st, 2022, which is a little over a year ago. And I know the date and time on this Wii is correct. So yeah, this is this is interesting that it's actually showing me a date and time this thing was played and let me go check the Wii calendar and see if I can find some play data on that same date. Can, yeah, sure enough, on July 1st, 2022, there was 57 minutes of Wii Sports Resort play time and actually the next day as well. And then again on July 23rd and again on August 9th. Wow, that's actually amazing. So this console was played just over a year ago, very rare for a Wii and they left the game inside still. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead and check out the, the save data as well one more time. And yeah, plenty of random stuff on here. We got Zuma Fitness 2, you got Bass Pro Shops, The Strike, Tiger Woods 09, and then we fit. All right, guys, just realized I forgot to check the Me channel, so let's do that. And yeah, nothing to write home about. Pretty basic. Kira, Denise, Rob. It's like, it's like normal Me's that normal people made. Gary, Hans, and Kathy. Yeah, normal stuff. This console works, which is great. It'll be listed down below for sale. And let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, let's test one of these untested PS3s. They have a giant X on them. This one even says bad disc on it. Untested my butt. 
and uh, the warranty, <laughs> oh no. Yep, that's a great sign. If you have a, if you have a GameStop warranty seal there, and uh, yeah, okay, uh, 120 gigabyte. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. And what do you know? It is factory reset. <laughs> okay, and I just put a game in and it's loading up, so I'm not sure why this is bad disk. Let's boot it up and make sure it boots all the way. And yeah, sure enough, the game boots up all the way without an issue, no hiccups or anything, so <laughs> not sure why it says bad disk. Now, there is a possibility that dirty games or scratched up games don't work where the laser is like on its way out, which is not surprising for a console this, this old, but as of right now, it is working, so of course, it will be sold down below. And uh, let's actually, one more thing, let's check out how much storage space is on this thing. It said 120 on the back, but you can't ever trust what GameStop puts on a console. Yep, definitely 120, cool. All right, well, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, next up, have another untested PS3 that's got a giant X on it. Doesn't have any specification of what the issue is, so I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Um, and the warranty seal is definitely ripped off. You got a rubber foot missing. I think literally every single PS3, PS3 Slim I've gotten this lot has missed has been missing at least one rubber foot, which is just crazy. But let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. Oop, it looks like we have another green light of death console. Great. Power buttons do nothing, nothing on the screen. I guess I'll try out the AV cable and see that see if that does anything. Wait, hold on. <laughs> as soon as I unplugged the HDMI cable, the console just powered straight off and the light is gone. All right, same thing again. This one just turned off after like 30 seconds. Let me try one more time. All right, so yeah, after about after about 40 seconds each time, this console just, pew, just, just turns off by itself. Uh, I'm gonna try it without the hard drive and just see what it does. Oh, this thing is, dude, am I have another desert PS3. This is, I've never seen so much dust in my life on the hard drive. Wow. Yep, so again, after about 40, 45 seconds, turned off by itself. So definitely something going on either board level, maybe the power supply. If we get lucky, it's just a power supply. So depending on how much time I have before this video goes live, I might try to actually swap the power supply and see if that does something. Um, but for now, I'm gonna move on to the next console. And if I do try something here, you'll see that segment now. So next up, let's do another 360 Slim here. And this one for being a Mac console is actually pretty beat up. Got a ton of white marks on it. And flip into the back. We do still have the warranty seal, manufactured in 2012, so actually a, a more recent slim, at least compared to the 2012 model or 2010 models. And ooh, there's a hard drive, a 250 gigs. It's not not been too often in this lot that we've seen hard drives inside of, inside of slims. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. All right, two, two, one, got power. I feel like I heard a disc in there. Let's see what it is. Hey, Stu, Skate 3, let's go. This is one of my favorite 360 games of all time. This one is, it doesn't look awful. It doesn't look great either, but hey man, Skate 3, that's worth like, I don't know, 10 to 12 bucks nowadays. Loggy doggy. <laughs> all right, here's our skater. This is actually funny. I've never acquired another profile that had a pre-made skater on here. So this is what this dude looked like, or at least that's <laughs> what his skater dude looked like. And, uh, oh, this is awesome. Oh, crap. All right, so we're gonna see some more skaters here. We got Lake, Logan, and another Lake. Let's go back to the main menu though and see what other kind of profiles we got here. And actually, 14 profiles? No, okay. We got Dawson, we got that, we got King Nom, we got Loggy Doggy, Maleficus, Miles, Monarch, Optimum Killer, Planet Aether, Planet Oblivion, Player One, Sergeant Maroc, Shakeable Hades 89, Willow. Wow, okay, let's, let's go check these out. And no pain, no gain, hey, that's a nice motto. League of Legends for the win. Location in, wait, wait, how do I see the actual location? All right, but first, uh, last played Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in 2015 and played a ton of games, actually Skate 3 as well. Um, yeah, he's got 77 different games with achievements. Let's see the first game this guy played. All right, so first one played was Soul Calibur 4. Don't know what year it was because it was offline. The first time played online was 2011, so actually not a very long span, 2011 to 2015. Um, again, let me see if I can figure out how to find this guy's <laughs> location that's published there. <laughs> there it is. Location in your face. I knew it was going to be something like that. That's funny. All right, back to Loggy Doggy. Let's check out this profile here. No motto, no name, no, no location. Let's go check out the last name I played, though. All right, ooh. So Loggy Doggy was definitely the one that left Skate 3 in here because that's the last game he played. And he also played Call of Duty Black Ops back in 2020. So this is interesting. It's definitely like a hand-me-down kind of thing where... Because uh, some of the games are the same, like Skate 3 and Black Ops 2 were the same played between profiles, but the other profile hasn't played since 2015. This one played in 2020, so it's like it was passed down to a little brother, little sister, I don't know. Or maybe just passed down to a relative, who who knows. There we got Optium Killer's got, ooh, boom, headshot. Okay, um, and this guy's in Austin, Texas. That's not surprising considering this whole lot came from Austin, Texas. It's just always so funny to see that. And uh, just guys, just imagine, you saw 900 pounds worth of consoles just from like the Austin, Texas area. Imagine how many of these consoles are just being donated goodwills. If this is just one location 
in the U.S. Imagine all over the world, just crazy. Uh, this guy last played online in Justice in 2018. And, oh, the first game he played online was 2010, Mortal Kombat versus DCU. <laughs> Planet Aether, live for lax. I'm assuming that's lacrosse. Lax, dolphins, chicks. <laughs> what he was playing in Minecraft last? Come on, dude, come on. And last but not least, we got Planet Oblivion with 4,000 gamer score. Planet 2030, oh, that's kind of cool. Got some stars and arrows there. And we shine at different things, and ours is sniping. I guess that's from a game. Uh, is that from Oblivion? That would make sense, considering all, yeah, okay, I'm, I don't know. Uh, Halo 14 was the last, or Halo 4 was the last thing played in 2013. And first game played was Guitar Hero Aerosmith back in 2010. And Viva Pinata, <laughs> nice. It's nice, a lot of cool stuff on this, uh, this console. Of course, we had 250 gigs. I bet there's actually some interesting games downloaded here. Yeah, I think we actually have a decent number of playable games here. I saw Minecraft, and I think that's a symbol, meaning you can actually play it directly off the console. A lot of these are just games that are downloaded, but you need the, the disc to play. But like Spelunky, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Let's just try this one out and see if it loads up. Okay, now that's pretty cool. We got Star Wars Battlefront 2, plays without an issue. So yeah, every game with the little symbol, the full controller symbol back down at the bottom right-hand corner, um, it looks like this are games that are playable. So Star Wars Republic Commando, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD, Trials Evolution, which is a fun game. Actually, did I play Trials Evolution or Trials HD? I think Trials HD is the one I played a lot. Uh, we also got Worms Revolution and WSOP Full House Pro. Wow, this is actually a kind of like a jackpot of a console. All right, well, cool, guys. This console is good to go. It'll be for sale down below. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, let's test out a Wii console. This is a white one, and it actually has both flaps intact, GameCube compatible. And there is no SD card, but this console for a Wii looks pretty good. And I'm willing to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess this console has a free game inside because they just mostly do. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to sell this thing for $8 on my website, super cheap. So um, let's hope there's a game inside. Uh, there's not, just my luck. But um, the console might not even work because it made a weird noise. Oh, wow, this is the <laughs> extremely rare Wii console that is actually factory reset. Dude, I, I think this is the first one I've ever seen that was factory reset, maybe, maybe like the second one. Well, since it's factory reset, there's not much to check here, but we will check and see if the game plays. So let's go ahead and pull out Super Mario, or Mario Super Slug. Let's keep mixing that around, see if it works. This drive is pretty loud, so I don't know if it'll work. All right, and sure enough, despite the weird noise, the, con the, the game is working, so this console is good to go as well. It will be listed down below. And guys, thanks for watching. That's the end of this episode. And uh, not much left in the Texas load, but we'll, we'll finish out these consoles strong in another episode or two. And guys, thanks for watching. Let me know down below what your favorite console is, and I'll see you next time. I bought pretty much every Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii in the state of Texas, and in this video, we're going to test and explore about 10 of them and see if you can turn a profit. Guys, welcome to the last episode of the Texas load. So we're going to start out strong here with an Xbox 360 Elite console that is absolutely filthy. And flipping to the back, it was manufactured in 2008 and appears to be a Falcon motherboard uh, 360. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. All right, three, two, one, let's turn this thing on. Green light, does the disk drive open? <laughs> Unsurprisingly, it actually opened a little bit. Open up. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Uh, oh, we do have some profiles here. Well, <laughs> we'll try to open the disk drive later. Let's go ahead and check out these profiles. So before I touched anything, I just started booting up a game or a DVD or something. So there's clearly something inside of here. I think it's a DVD. There it is. Oh, oh, we got Star Wars The Force Awakens in here. Hey, that's pretty neat. And checking it out, pretty clean. But let's go ahead and check out these profiles here. I think we have two. We have JMJ9876 and Player One. So let's check this guy out and see what he's got going on. So, wow, 70 gamer score. This console was used a whole lot by this guy. Uh, let's see the one game he has in here, actually two games, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in 2017, and then Batman 2014. Dude, that's some be odd behavior. Three years between these two games, and those are the only two games on this guy's profile. We do have some games here. We got Assault Heroes, Call of War as uh, Cloning Clyde, a bunch of just demos here. Actually, a ton of demos. What in the world? Dude, this guy was actually, like, now that I think about it, this guy was kind of like me. Like, back in the day, uh, I used to download 360 demos all the time. That's what I... I probably spent more time playing 360 demos than I did playing actual games. That's probably not true, but I just feel like I had so many demos downloaded because it was just like, it was free and an easy way to play games without spending money. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to put a game in if we can get the disk drive open and see if it works. And yeah, dude, I know exactly why this disk drive is not working because it's just covered in absolute filth. Ugh, disgusting. All right, yeah, so we got MW2 booted up, playing without an issue. And is there any air coming out of this thing? Hold on. The fans are definitely spinning, but I think this thing is just so choked up by dust that it's just like you can't 
feel much air coming out, but it is it is warm air. All right, guys, so we're gonna try to fix this Xbox 360 disk drive and get it to actually open without having to smack the top, but we're gonna go full jank method. You know, the right way to do this is to open the whole thing up, clean it all out, clean the disk drive out, replace the band, all that good stuff, but we're gonna do a full jank method. This is fairly easy to do at home if you wanna try it. So first thing you're gonna do is plug your Xbox in, turn it on, obviously. We're gonna go ahead and get the disk drive open. So it's stuck. I need a little smack, there we go. All right, now we're gonna turn the console off and just hold this thing open so it doesn't close on us. And I also took the faceplate off as well just to give us a little more room to work with. Let me just show you the inside of this disk drive right here. It's just filthy. Basically what we wanna do is remove that rubber band right there and, and swap it out and that will fix the issue in most cases. Uh, so let's try it out. All right guys, zoomed in on the disk drive here. It looks, as you can see, just how nasty it is. Uh, the rubber band is right there and basically what you wanna do is get your tweezers and kind of get in there and pull the rubber band out. It's, it's basically spooled around this little uh, wheel right there and then one back to the right. So if you just grab it, you should be able to kind of like uh, just move it out of the way and pull it out. So I grabbed it, kind of lift up and out. And then, oh, fell back on me, but there it is. That thing is just like disgusting. And yeah, we'll put that to the side. And what you, one thing you can do, if you don't have another band to replace it with, I, I recommend buying one on eBay or Amazon. They're like 10 bucks for a 10 pack. Um, but you can just clean this one and put it back in and try that. But this one is already already very stretched out, so it probably won't work. You can, I mean, you can see the difference here between the, the brand new one on the right side and the old one on the left side, just how stretched out this one is. Uh, first thing we're gonna do here is take, an, uh, take a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and just clean off the wheels a little bit, which we can do also through reaching uh, through the disk drive. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's gonna be really hard to show you this guys here, but basically you take your Q-tip and kind of just spin the wheel while also cleaning it off. Um, you can use your other hand as well to help but let me just, uh, I'll do it off camera here and, and we'll come back. So clean off the wheel and some of the dirt around it. Uh, we should be a little bit better now. You can just see right here, a lot of that dirt's gone. Again, not perfect by any means, but let's go ahead and basically do the same process we did to start with where you take the band and try to stretch, stretch around the two little uh, wheels there. Again, it's really hard to show on camera. Oh, sweet, I got it on there first try. I have it spool around, you can't see it, but let's, let's go ahead and plug it back in and see if it works now. All right, plug down, let's go ahead and try this out and Hey, there it goes. It's super, this is part of the problem with buying a new band is they're sometimes they're so tight that the, the, the disc drive comes out really slowly, but as long as it comes out all the way, it's okay. It'll stretch out over time, but you can see now it is at least opening. So that was definitely the biggest issue. Again, it'd be best to go in there and clean everything out, but this is the jank fix. If you want a quick fix to, and you don't want to open your console all the way up, definitely try this at home. Um, it should, it'll probably work for you. So next up I have this absolutely filthy PS3 Super Slim. Like this is just, it barely opens because of how dirty it is. Like, wow, okay, that's that's bad. We're gonna at the bottom, the warranty seal is apparently still intact. <laughs> Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, three, two, one, and we got power. Do I finally have a PS3 that is not factory reset? Oh, <laughs> dude, there is no way. We have, what is this, like 15 profiles? We got the, the Parcini family, Denali 2002, Crisp, Ash, Super Weird, Money, Shark, all right guys, let's just start cruising through these and see what we find. And the first thing I'll do is check how much storage we have here. So we have 232, so it's probably, what are they, like 250 probably, that's what they call it. And yeah, let's just go ahead and scroll through and see what kind of stuff we find. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, we got a Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies Reveal trailer, nice. <laughs> that's awesome. I love when people used to store like trailers and videos and stuff on their consoles. Um, oh, we got some games. Oh, that's a demo. We got Walking Dead demo. Terraria demo, Far Cry 4, oh, that looks like a full game. Sack, run, sack, boy, run. Uh, I also got Uncharted 3, free to play. Defiance, uh, Terraria, Walking Dead, Last of Us, manual. <laughs> so we actually, I do have some full games here. Let's go ahead and see if we can see the, find the last time this thing was played. All right, so last save data was from 2019. So actually pretty recent for a, for a PS3. That's cool to see. Oh man, this is so bad. This is why, this is why I recommend people, especially for like PS3, um, and newer consoles, especially newer consoles like PS4 and Xbox One, Series X, definitely recommend signing out of your profile or in fact resetting because here, here we are. I have this person's email uh, message box. We can go ahead and, oh, dude, <laughs> there is no, <laughs> oh my gosh. These messages are so bad. Anybody, a girl that is <laughs> that wants to date. Oh, okay. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> Asking people to date on the PS3 message is a wild move. Dude, th these, these messages are like by far the worst I've ever seen. These are worse than the than the pictures I saw on that Wii a few months ago. I have just have no words. All right, I finally scrolled down far enough to find Modern Warfare 3 invites. <laughs> the rest of them are just super dirty messages. Okay, to be fair to this guy, I, I was looking at the received, not the sent. So the person that was sending sending messages from this account was not too bad. The received messages though were 
filthy, just bad stuff. Let's go ahead and check out these other profiles. Yeah, hold on one more, th one more thing. I was looking at the game data utility instead of the saved data utility. So this thing was actually played last in 2020. Some YouTube in 2020 and then Terraria in 2020 as well. Um, so it was actually more recent than I thought. What's up, Tiger? I saw you getting um, something in the car. Okay. Dude, the crazy thing is I've been through like four profiles so far and they all have save data from 2019 or 2020. So like these are all profiles that were being actively used. You can even see their, their trophy collection here. Uh, you know, yeah, Skyrim 10%, Terraria 55%, Diablo 3, 44%, a bunch of just random games played and you know, we still got like 10 more profiles to look through. Yeah, here's another one that was played in 2020. It's, it's, it's like a, a whole, whole family, a, a I don't know, a group in a, a dorm room or something, just like a group of people that were just all playing at the same time and using separate profiles, just uh, funny to see. This is hilarious. I found one of the profiles that has no same messages, but it has a few and received, and they're all like one guy that was clearly playing him on online and got killed and messaged him some, some profanity <laughs> Oh, classic. That was like classic 2013 kind of stuff, even though Exodus is 2020. Uh, it was just 2013 is when I experienced it. I actually found some messages that are that are nice. Like this person says, nice to meet you. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. So I went through every single profile on this console and there was two profiles that were played in like 2017, 2018. All the other ones were played in 2019 or 2020. So all super recent, pretty crazy to see. And I'm back on this first profile because it's just so interesting. And I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at these messages where this guy was sending some other guy messages and he was trying to do some kind of glitch in Call of Duty, which is just like awesome classic. Of course, people were on here trying to trying to glitch while they play. So considering the dirt on this console and then <laughs> the dirty messages on this console, I thought for sure I was gonna, the game was not gonna read, but here it is, we're loaded up, uh, good to go. I am I could clean this console, but this thing is filthy. I'm probably gonna sell it for cheap as is on my site down below because I don't wanna clean this thing up right now. Uh, I have so many more consoles to go through. So I'll list it down below, check it out if you wanna buy it and let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, next up we're gonna do another Wii and this one is very clean. Like <laughs> it might be one of the cleanest Wiis I've ever seen. No SD card. It is GameCube compatible though, but let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. All right, turn it on and, oh, there's a game inside. <laughs> Literally almost every time. Oh, wait, it's stuck. Is it? No, it's not. <laughs> you can't make that up. It has Wii Sports, but Wii Sports was upside down. <laughs> that, is, that is hilarious, uh, but it looks pretty good. So <laughs> that's one of those situations where you're, you're kind of concerned. Like, did this person get rid of their Wii because they think it doesn't work? because they put the game in it's upside down. Like, I think that's very possible. But let's go ahead and just uh, make sure that, yeah, the game's loading up. Let's go ahead and see when this Wii was last played. September 2016, we've got some play data in Wii Sports. So <laughs> at some point they had it in the correct direction. Maybe later on they flipped it around and decided that Wii didn't work anymore. I, I don't know, that's, that's pretty funny though. The console is working, this one's good to go. Let me, let me just actually boot up Wii Sports and make sure it actually loads up all the way. All right, cool, so boot it up, console's good to go. Let's go ahead and turn it off, move on to the next console. All right, next up I have a PS3 Slim, which actually looks pretty good uh, compared to the other PS3 Slims I've seen in this lot. And it does still have the warranty seal intact, of course, missing three rubber feet, because they always are. And the good thing is there's no X on the top, like half the other PS3s I got. But let's go ahead and turn it on, see what it does. And surprise, surprise, uh, the console is factory reset. Now, of course, we can check how much storage we have. We have 120, so nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and put a, put a game in, see if it works. Great. All right, sweet, so the game is working here, obviously. Now, of course, this console will be listed for sale on my website, which will be linked down below. All right, next up, we're gonna test out a Wii, and this one is a bit beat up, got one flap, and let's go ahead and check if there's an SD card, and Ooh, let's go 512 megs, nice. Uh, let's go ahead and put that in. Hopefully there's something interesting on it. Let's go ahead and boot this thing up and see what we find. And what do you know? First of all, there's a free game inside. Is it Wii Sports? I'd say probably so, but let's let's check here. And hey, wow, another copy of Smash Bros. And it says Deaton. I guess that's the person's name. Uh, it's actually, oh, that's a really clean disc. Nice, let's go ahead and put that back in. Well, wait, hold on. What, what did this person do to this console? So they completely, they took all the channels off of here. We've got Netflix and the game channel. We got me channel, Wii Shop channel. All right, let's go ahead and see if there's anything on, on this SD card here. Ooh, we do have a couple games saved on the SD card. Nice, we got Zelda 2 and we got Secret of Mana. Um, let's test these out and see if they work. Okay, well, it did work. It did load up. It just said I need the Wii Classic controller, so it didn't boot all the way. But that is a good sign. It means that it was actually meant to be played on this console. Let's try it out with Zelda 2 as well now um, and see if that works. Hey, let's go. Zelda 2 is working here as well. And in case you guys didn't know, you actually, it wasn't a shoe in Just because you see the game on an SD card doesn't mean it's gonna work on the Wii. Uh, I know because I tried this on my friend's Wii back in, you know, two, 
2007 or whatever. Uh, basically, you can you can transfer a game from the home menu to an SD card and then take the SD card to another console. It'll show on the SD card, but it won't be able to boot on the console because that's not what the console is meant for. At least that's how I remember it. Um, let's go and check out this photo channel as well because there is an SD card in it, so there might be something here. Um, but my guess is it was it was probably just those games, which is uh, you know good enough. Those are uh, good games to get for free. And yep, yeah, nothing on the photo channel there. All right, here we are in January 2016, and we have some playtime. We've got Smash Bros. Brawl for 22 minutes, and that was it. They said no more. Got to get rid of this console. Goodbye. <laughs> and of course, clearly the game works here. Uh, like di disc actually looked pretty flawless. And we'll check one more thing here: uh, the Me Channel. Wow, two Me's. We got Frank. I was like a Frank and Emily. All right, well this console is good to go. It'll be listed for sale down below. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, we have a console that I've been saving for quite a while. We have an OG Xbox that is basically uh, mutilated. Like half the casing is just completely gone. I, so I don't have much hope that this thing works. Um, but looking at the other parts of it, it doesn't, doesn't look too bad. It's clearly never been opened. Uh, it's, you know, all the rubber feet are intact and um, the screws are intact, all that's good stuff. So let's go ahead, and, go ahead and plug it in and see if it does anything. All right, got the console plugged in. Let's go ahead and see what it does. Three, two, one. What was that noise? Okay, first of all, no disc inside. I don't know why it's flashing because I have the AV cord plugged in. It is booting though. Let's go. Yes. Yeah, baby. Okay. Okay. I, I definitely don't think a game's going to work because of the noise it was making, but it's the console's booting. Let's see if it boots all the way. Hey, let's go. All right. We got the clock here. Should be some save data here, actually, if people used it. And hard disk we got. Ooh, yeah. Blitz the League, Brothers in Arms, Crimson, Crimson Skies. EA Sports Fight Night 3, Fable, FIFA 06, man. That shows this age. Actually, that's fairly recent for an OG Xbox. I mean, 2006, we had the 360 out. Even have an online updater application. All right, what is going on? As I scroll through here, the, you guys see that? Like the screen is just like juddering. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but uh, there is some save data here. Let's go ahead and put a game in and just see what it does. Dude, no way. <laughs> There's no way this thing is actually reading the game. Dude, that is unbelievable. <laughs> this, just looking at the outside of this console, I, I would have thought the power supply was destroyed. Uh, some sort of issue on the, we would have some sort of issue on the board that would cause it to not boot or at least not read games. But here we are booting up, reading games. The only issue I'm seeing is that the, the screen like judders sometimes. Um, I don't know if that's just my screen here or if it's, that's actually what's happening. So let me just watch it for a little bit and see if I can figure out that issue. Yeah, so it's still doing this weird thing. I think I said judder, but I mean, this, <laughs> I was combining the word shutter and jitter, I think. Uh, but it's like, it's just like shifting off screen very briefly. I did a quick Google search and the first thing that popped up is bad capacitors on the board, which makes sense. This, the Xbox is known for bad capacitors. So we'll open this thing up, check the inside. But first, I'm gonna swap out the AV cable and just make sure that's not the issue. So I swapped out the AV cable and it's still doing the same flickering screen thing. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's happening inside this console. Here's our console. Let's go ahead and take the disk drive and the hard drive valve so we can see the motherboard. Just at first glance, I actually don't see, uh, I see some, yeah, those capacitors are definitely bulging right there. Those two are bulging. Let, let me zoom in so you can see. And the other thing to note is obviously this thing is, uh, the board is very dusty. And yeah, so it's those three capacitors right below. You can kind of see they're bulging out a little bit. They're not actually leaking yet. Uh, so I'm, I would be a little bit surprised if that's what's causing the flickering issue, but supposedly it is, and it, it kind of makes sense, but I, I would think they'd be leaking on the board at this point. Um, now I gotta, I gotta find the clock capacitor. Let me figure out which version of motherboard this is. And, uh, where the clock capacitor is at. All right guys, so this right here is the clock capacitor and surprisingly, it's not leaking or bulging yet, but we do need to replace it because it is prone to leaking. Um, we also need to replace those three that are bulging over there as well, like you saw a little bit ago. But we'll do a future video where I replace these capacitors and some other 360 capacitors that I need to do as well. Um, so we'll save it for that. Next up, we have a Black Elite 360 with a 120 gigabyte hard drive. And I just checked the back and it is a Jasper. Good to see. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Ooh, I think there's a disc inside. I definitely hear a disc spinning up. We got Halo Reach, okay, and it's pretty, ooh, <laughs> dude, this console is so dusty that the disc inside of the console is also dusty. That is, that's wild stuff there. But the disc drive opened up without an issue, which is funny. This, this whole lot has been strange because the consoles I got at, at the beginning of the lot, like a lot of the disc drives did not open, but recently, most of them have been opening just, just fine. Now booting up, oh, wait, hold on, what is this guy? The first guy already logged in is my opinion. Mango is anyone? That's funny. Oh, how did he even make this face? What is going on there? Okay, that's that's cool though. Oh, okay, what is this bio? Oh, we done did it now. Caught in Halo, E's about to go down. <laughs> Gotta decide which one's a better game. One will take the crown while the other falls with shame. A decision like this can drive a man insane. It sparks with a, it starts with a spark and bursts into a flame. You have to decide which one you play. This guy's got some, uh, some, some, some rhythm here. That's impressive. All right, let's check out what kind of games you're playing. We got, uh, <laughs> it's funny to talk about Halo. 
You know, the last game he played was Halo Reach in 2014. Minecraft in 2014, Halo 4, FIFA, GTA 4, PC. Got a bunch of games on here. Uh, 56, let's see the first time he played. 2011, so this guy played from 2011 to 2014. Dude, that is an impressive bio right there, actually. Dude, got a ton of games on here. Most of them are demos, but there's a few, like, full games. Halo Waypoint, Hexic HD. Uh, yeah, still a ton of demos, though. Minecraft, eh? Cool, so game's definitely working. Let's go ahead and see if there's any other profiles in this console. Okay, so we got Digital Guns, Father, <laughs> Father Goblin 2, Guest, Mr. Pina 939, Nightshade 618, Oh, there's a lot of Xbox. Whoa, there's a lot of profiles on here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's check these out. Oh, Digital Guns has got 17,000 game score. Okay. Mo is here, smiley face. Pain is weakness, weakness leaving the body. Classic. It's a classic line there. Last played in 2014. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out the next profile. Farther Goblin 2 with the big fat zero. Nice. I'm on, I'm on Mr. Peanut. What is, oh, what is that? Wait, what does that say? Can't read the first two words, but it says scope style. Dude, that's, that's pretty cool. Let me check out, let me see if I can see it better from uh, this other page. Oh yeah, it just says quick scope. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> that's actually really funny. This guy played Halo Reach back in 2011, so it's been quite a while since this guy touched his console. Let's see, the first game he played was 2010, Madden NFL 10. I can have his cheeseburger. <laughs> Dude, that's legendary. Last played in 2011, Halo, COD. Dude, this guy's Xbox Live name is Scrape. He had to have bought that early. Like, I mean, there's no numbers, no symbols, just Scrape. All right, rar, rar, rar. <laughs> Fancy Pants Adventures, what is that? All right, and last but not least, we got Kid Capone with 865. His, uh, his message is, I don't know. COD versus Battlefield, the world may never know. And you last played COD, COD. So I guess he decided on a COD. Uh, first played in 2012, cool. So these are, the, these are the consoles I'd love to see. Um, just so much history of all these profiles, 11 different profiles. You know, who knows if this was like passed down between family or maybe it was in a, at a college, maybe it was in a high school. Like, Maybe kids play, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. But let's go ahead and uh, move on from this console, and this console, of course, will be listed down below for sale. So next up, we're gonna test out this yellow 360. Uh, it doesn't look great, it's missing the front plate, but it does look like the warranty seal is maybe intact. Now flip into the back, we can check what motherboard we have. We got a Jasper, actually, and it's manufactured in 2010. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works, even though it appears to have been in the house fire. Now, funny enough, this is not the first 360 I've ever seen that appeared to have been in a fire at some point, but let's go ahead and turn it on. Green light, all right, now does the disc drive open? It, ooh, baby, and we got a <laughs> Skate 2, let's go. Dude, jackpot, Skate 2 is like one of my favorite games for the 360, after Skate 3 and some other games, but disc looks pretty good. Uh, funny enough, the disc was upside down for whatever reason, but let's put it back in and see if it loads up. Oh, baby, man, this brings back some memories. Uh, 2009, that's a pretty good year for gaming. You got Skate 2, you got MW2. Uh, man, I, my love for the skate game started with Skate 2, because it was just like a, it's kind of like GTA, but skating kind of. Uh, and then Skate 3 just took it to like an another level. Um, now we do have some profiles here. Ooh, or one profile. Let's go ahead and sign in, see what we got here. Soren, okay. This appears to be somebody who's like rarely ever played, or if, if they ever played, let's go ahead and check out their profile here. Wow, Z <laughs> zero gamer score. Okay, so this person, they played Skate 2, but that's because I booted it up. And let's go ahead and just check out how much storage we have here. There is no hard drive, so it's probably. 512 or 256? Yeah, it appears to be 512, yeah, okay. Anyways, this console's good to go. It'll be for sale down below on my website, but let's move on to the next console. All right, next up we got a 360 Elite, and this one should be interesting because it says, has a big fat refurbished sticker on the side of it. And then looking at the back, it has manufacture date of 2009, and it appears to be a Jasper, so let's plug it in and see if it works. Got it turned on, definitely a game inside. Another Halo? Uh, oh, great, Madden 09, perfect. And, oh my gosh, that thing is destroyed. Doesn't great, and the disk drive is broken as well because it just pulled itself in on its own. Yeah, it is pretty dirty in there. Uh, dude, we're on the NXC, or maybe this, is this the Connect version? It doesn't matter, it's about the same thing. Oh, let's go, baby. Man, I haven't seen too many NXC in this, in this lot. Dang, dude, this is awesome. All right, let's go ahead and check out the dashboard version just to get a confirmation on what version we're on here. So 12, 6, 11. Yeah, it's definitely like, a, I think this is definitely the Connect version. Yeah, it's got a Connect settings in there. So this is like the Connect version of the NXC, which is essentially the same. Uh, I mean, it has like the same vibe, but it's like slightly different. Now, this console appears to have no profiles or anything. Oh, no storage devices found. I guess that happens. Yeah, so this is an Elite console. Usually the Elite consoles came with 120. And if you don't have your 120 attached, that means it's not going to have any storage. So that makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and put a game in, though, and see if it works. We'll, we'll put in the... Madden 09 that is scratched up like crazy. 
I doubt it'll work, but it's worth a try. Yeah, so definitely not working. Let's try out Halo Reach from the other console. So the game read up and worked without an issue. Um, uh, one more thing I want to do is just kind of scroll through here because it's just so interesting to see the history here. Like scrolling through and seeing the avatars, like, is that what they call them? I think so. Uh, just advertise front and center with the, what is that game they advertise? I can't read it from here. Uh, but then we got like Bomberman Live, Peggle and stuff on the game marketplace. We got Zune, that just tells you how old this is. So of course this console will be listed down below on my website. And guys, this is unfortunately the last console of the Texas Load. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this series. I've enjoyed making it and gone through just so many different interesting consoles and seeing so many interesting things. Um, let me know down below what you want, guys want to see next, what you want to see in a series. Uh, we have some cool stuff planned coming in December. Um, so keep on the lookout for that. And uh, of course, we'll have our profit numbers on the screen for the entire series. Just keep in mind, those numbers don't include labor or anything. It's basically just how much I sold a console for minus how much I bought it for and just, uh, just to keep things simple. So guys, hope you enjoyed the series and I'll, I'll see you next time. So next up, we have this box we that really piqued my interest. Let's go ahead and slide all the contents out and see what's inside. All right, top layer here, we have power supply, nunchuck. We've got manual, <laughs> oh baby. We got Wii, what a bait swish. I got the Wii Sports manual and case here, but no game. All right, maybe maybe it's inside the console. Honestly, it probably is. Let's go ahead and see what's in this bottom layer now, if there's even a console in here. And there, there is, and there's, ooh, two controllers. Hey, that's nice. All right, now inside of this console, no SD card. And oh man, this thing is, I legitimately think a kid took like a knife or a pencil or something to this console and just went like, like that. It just looks awful. But let's go ahead, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, console plugged in. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on, and yep, definitely a game in there. Probably Wii Sports. And, all right, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, I'll take that. It's actually, oh, no. first of all, yeah, it's actually a lower value game than Wii Sports, surprisingly. Um, but what are the chances this works? I mean, like, wow, there are some deep scratches. Like, same thing as the console, whereas somebody, probably a kid, took a knife or something. I don't know why a kid would have a knife, but they took something and just got really gouged both the disc and the console. And yep, unsurprisingly, the game does not read. Let's go ahead and try out another game and see if it works. All right, yeah, well, Mario Kart Wii is booting up. Um, I'm not actually gonna boot it up right now, but it is showing up, and so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and check out the last time this Wii was played. All right, so May 2011, we have a message here. Playtime, Super Mario Galaxy for a couple hours, or an hour and a half. And I was thinking we might have some more recent data that has Super Smash Bros. Brawl on it, but now that I think about it, like this thing is so beat up that they honestly probably put the game in, it didn't read, and they gave the Wii away. Uh, that's my guess. But uh, let's go ahead and check out the Mii situation. All right, so we got a handful of Mii's. They all look pretty normal. But let's go ahead and turn this console off and move on to the next one. Next up, we have a 360 Slim. It is a matte one that actually is, looks pretty bad for being matte. And let's go ahead and check and see if we have a hard drive here. We do not, but we probably have four gigs built in. We'll of course check here in a second. And it looks like the warranty seal is still intact, so that's good to see. But let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it does. All right, two, one, power, disc, let's go. NBA 2K17, I haven't played this in six years. <laughs> I actually probably have this exact game for the 360. Actually, 2017, no, I had it for the PS4, Never mind. Actually, that's surprising. I didn't know they were making 2K games for the 360 uh, back in 2017. Let's go ahead and check out what else is on this console. So the profile logged us into is Sugarist Rose 23. And let's go ahead and check out what they've got going on here. It looks like it's Brook. Okay, Brooke was playing, a sugarist rose. NBA 2K17, of course, Destiny. Uh, looks like Madden NFL 16 was the last game played online, which is 2017. And the very first game ever played online was 2013, so about a four year span. Black Ops 2 Connect Adventures, so a little bit of a mix of sports games and then like Gears of War, that sort of thing. Of course, the storage, we got four gigs and no demos, any games and apps. Let's go ahead and, yeah, there's some games and apps. Let's go ahead and check out that game section over here. And yeah, just the standard stuff, Kingdom for Keflings, Hexic HD, Peggle, Pinball FX, the games that are like on literally almost every 360. Uh, let's go ahead and boot up the game and make sure it works. All right, yeah, so it's definitely working. Um, yeah, this console is good to go. And of course, like most Slims I've found these days, it's actually super quiet. I mean, the disk drive is pretty loud, but the fan, super quiet, very efficient consoles. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. All right, next up we got a 360 Slim. There is no hard drive inside and the warranty seal is still intact. So let's go ahead and turn it on and just see what it does. We got life here. I think I hear a game inside. Another free game? I mean, <laughs> dude, what is going on? I've got Red Dead Redemption Game of the Year Edition. That's actually, that's solid. Like this is a great disc right here. Uh, <laughs> dude, look at all those fingerprints. There's no scratches on it, but tons of fingerprints. Let's go ahead and put that back in, make sure it works. Uh, okay, never mind. This is a console that apparently probably came with a, uh, a hard drive. So there's just no storage at all, but we did get the game. Uh, so let's make sure that works. <laughs> All right, guys, I forgot how long this game takes to load on the 360. Just, I said it for like three minutes, but I did play this back in the day when it came out, back in like 2010 probably. But I ran into a game-breaking glitch, so I never actually finished. But uh, yeah, still hold, like the graphics still hold up. Looks great. Game is working. Console's good to go. 
Uh, of course, no, no hard drive or anything, but let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we got a white GameCube compatible Wii with, of course, one flat missing. No SD card. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it does. See if we... <laughs> Seriously, another free game? <sighs> Wii Sports Resort? This is... This is wild. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Another free game, Wii Sports Resort, worth like 20, 25 bucks. Uh, again, these games I'm getting here are worth as much as a console or at least pretty close to it. Crazy stuff. Ooh, and this person, hey, they got a lot of channels. They got the Check Me Out channel, Wii Fit Plus, all that good stuff. Let's scroll to the end. No no secret channels. Let's go ahead and check out the, the Wii Fit Plus channel because I, I love checking this out. A dog? Wait, hold on. I did not know you could put a dog in Wii Fit Plus. That's awesome. We got Tink here. <laughs> oh, wow. The dog was playing at 1.45 a.m. at some point, okay. All right, so Kelsey is the owner of the dog, I guess. So apparently before I can do anything with the dog, I have to weigh myself, or, or Kelsey has to weigh herself. I don't obviously don't have Wii Fit board with me, so I can't do that. Let's go ahead and see how far back I can scroll here. So it actually lets me go back to 2013, but I can't see how big the dog is. There's no re recorded data, that sucks. All right, next up we got Wii Sports Resort, which did clearly load up, as you can see. Let's go back to the main menu, and we'll check the last time this thing was played. All right, here we are, February 2010. We've got some play data. On Wii Sports, where's Wii Sports Resort? Oh, there we go, all right. 210, we got Wii Fit Plus, oh, okay. Well, I couldn't find the last time they played Wii Sports Resort, which is obviously the game that was left in here, so I don't know if they actually played it before they gave the console away, or maybe it was later and I just didn't see it. I don't know, uh, but let's go ahead and check out the, the Mii channel, and we'll see what's on there. What? Dude, I, I swear I saw multiple Mii's on like the, the history channel, like where I was looking at the times people played. I swear I saw more, more Mii's than just one. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Console works. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next up, I have yet another Wii. It looks pretty normal, except for missing flaps. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if we get another free game. Wow, first one. Finally, no free game inside. You can hear the disk drive spinning up, and it sounded pretty loud, so we'll see if it even works. And the channels look pretty standard. We do have a Wii Fit channel here. I'm not going to check that this time. Let's go ahead and put a game in and see if it works. Gosh. <laughs> Wait a second, what? I forgot they made you do this. <laughs> I'm booting up Wii, for Wii Sports Resort for the first time on this console, I guess. And it's making me watch a three minute video on how to use Wii Sports, Wii, Wii Motion Plus. That's a hard pass. No, uh, uh that's a hard pass. I'm not gonna do that. It, obviously the game's working if it pulled that up, but I, I'm definitely not gonna spend three minutes watching that. Dude, I'm looking through the save data. We have save data for Wii Cheer 2. What? Oh man, there were so many random games the, on the Wii. I love it. And again, another lame on the Wii channel, on the Me channel. Not much here. I got another Emily. Let's go back to the main menu and check out the last time this thing was played. All right, well, I scrolled through the entire history of this Wii and could find no messages at all, so, oh well. This console is working. It was a little bit slow to pull games into the disk drive, but other than that, the console's good to go. It'll be listed for sale down below on my website. Let's go on, go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, we have a non-GameCube compatible Wii that I just accidentally turned on, and there's no free game inside. Any SD card? Nope. Um, let's go ahead and turn it all the way on, see if it works. All right, so this Wii was actually played somewhat recently. It's got all the streaming apps and stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and put a game in, make sure it works. Cool, so Resports Resort is loading up here. I'm not gonna boot it up all the, all the way up right now. Uh, we'll do that later. Uh, but let's go ahead and check the last time this console was played. Wow, we're in April 2020. Wow, Wii Sports Resort. Well, Mario Super Sluggers. <laughs> a lot of gameplay into here back in 2020, three years ago. That's, a, that's, that's super recent for a Wii. Let's go ahead and check out the Miis now because we got some, definitely got some Miis saved on here. Ooh, oh, here we go, okay. We got a few Miis. We've got this little, little ball guy, Hoppy. <laughs> None of these are too crazy, I don't see any that dude, <laughs> another dad me that looks exactly like, all, I swear all the dad me's look just like this. It's just like, it just has to be like that. And you got Steve, Nathan, uh, pretty typical, typical me's here. Nothing too crazy, no Garfield or anything. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out, I also wanna check out the game uh, data as well to see what kind of games are played. So we got a decent bit of save data here. Of course, the standard Netflix, Wii Sports Resort, uh, Madagascar Carts kind of stuff. Um, we actually got Mario Super Sluggers, which is a fun game. Harley, I did not know there was a Harley Davidson game. What the, that's funny. Uh, even a Cars made her national. Uh, tons of games here. Instead of like, oh, football, oh, not, not, not even know they made that game for the Wii. Uh, but yeah, this console is good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, we have the rare Wii that actually has both GameCube flaps intact. Uh, no SD card. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. Ooh, definitely got a free game. Wait, the eject button is broken. Oh, it worked. Okay. Uh, we got Star Wars Force Unleashed 2. Hey, that's cool. That's a game I haven't seen in a Wii before. It's probably like a $3 game, but better than nothing. I got stopped by the nunchuck message, but the game is working. Let's go back to the main menu. And is it just me or is this like the whole screen seems brighter than it should? Let me let me check the settings real quick. Usually the Wii is not that bright. What is, what's going on? Hmm. Yeah, I couldn't find anything in settings. I mean, it's not like awful, but it just looks whiter and brighter than it should. I'm, I don't know, maybe it's just my eyes for this 
five minute period, but let's check out the me channel, then we'll see the last time this thing was played. Nice, three me's. So we got G J H G five five four D. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, so for some reason, another another week console where I scroll through the entire history and find no messages at all, which is just strange. Let me go ahead and see what kind of save data is on here. And we got a handful of save data, so there should be some there should be some messages on here, especially from Mario Kart weeks that just send you tons of messages while you're playing. Anyways, console works. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have a Matt 360 Slim. I already checked. There's no hard drive, and the warranty seal I believe is intact. I think I heard a game in there. Nope, just kidding. This is actually <laughs> this might be the first 360 of the day that didn't have a free game, which is amazing. Uh, but let's see if there's any kind of save data on here. Oh, this one is on an old dashboard too. It's not too old, but it's like very early Metro, I believe. Let's check the system number. Okay, it's 15574. Yeah, definitely early, early Metro. And we have some stuff on here. We got Player One, <laughs> classic name. Uh, no bio or anything. We've got some achievements. Connect Adventures, Connect uh, Sports, FIFA 12. Definitely a big Connect player. Uh, Sean White Skate. Cool. Let's go ahead and see if the game works. All right, so Halo Reach did load up, and I checked these other profiles as well. And uh, <laughs> not much on them. Uh, clearly, a, a console is used like a little bit for Connect Adventures and stuff like that, but that's about it. Um, this console is good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, guys. So next up, we have a Wii console. This is a GameCube compatible Wii and <laughs> the rare Wii that has both flaps and in, intact. In we also do not have an SD card. And guys, this is the last console of the Texas Load. Sad time. But let's go ahead and turn it on. Hopefully, it works. And hopefully, we get a free game. But oh, no, that's so disappointing. Last console of the Texas load and there's no free game inside. But guys, we've had a nice run. 120 consoles, wild stuff. Actually, a ton of them worked. Had free games, which is just amazing. Um, and I, I appreciate the support of people watching this, this whole series. I'll probably have a compilation video soon uh, in the next few weeks that has basically the entire series together. It'll be like a, I don't know, a 10 hour video or something ridiculous like that. Um, but there, don't, don't worry. There's some more series coming that I think you guys will like. But first of all, let's just make sure this console works. All right, cool. So we are booted up. Standard channels, no secret channels over here. Now let's just go ahead and start by seeing the last time this game was played. All right, December 2011, 12 years ago. Got a Nintendo message. Oh, here's some play data. All right, on 12-17. Netflix. That's lame. All right, let's put a game in. See if it works. <laughs> oh, great. Another Wii Motion Plus video. Uh, well, the game works, so I'm just going to skip that video and not do it. Um, but let's go ahead and check out how many Mies we have in this thing. Ooh, we got a few Mies here. Gernt. Vlog, uh, what's going on vlog? <laughs> I think you got something something going on there. Um, all right, some very interesting me's there, but at least we got some, that's, that's cool to see. And last but not least, I'm gonna do something weird, which is I'm gonna check the console nickname here, which I don't usually do, but weenus. <laughs> oh, what a what a way to end the Texas load. All right, guys, that is the, I'll leave you with that. The console nickname here is weenus, and uh, this console does work, so it'll be listed down below for sale. And guys, this is the end of the Texas load. Um, again, there will be more to come, just not Texas Load style. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the whole series. I'll throw the pop profit number on the screen for this video, plus the profit number for the entire series. And remember, these profit numbers don't take into account labor. And myself and Danny spent, have spent many countless hours on repairing these consoles, cleaning these consoles up and stuff. So uh, the profit numbers were, it, it was very nice load. Uh, <laughs> It was a very nice lot of consoles, but don't take these profit numbers as if we, you know, made out like a bandit. It was very good for the videos, but uh, just purely for flipping consoles like this, not the best business endeavor, but it made for great videos, very interesting consoles. So definitely look, be on the lookout for some more interesting series like these. So guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.